I can't believe this has happened. People, people are greedy and stupid and stuff like this happens, I guess, all the time, unfortunately. Please note that this content is for adults only, viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Welcome back to another live stream with me, Gizzle K. This is Grizzly True Crime, and we are going to watch day 10 of the Jesse Kurshevsky trial together today. So, of course, um, we are on a one day delay in this trial on purpose so that we can defluff uh, all the paper flapping and breaks, you know, tea breaks, lunch breaks, sidebars, which are silent anyway, and then coughing, paper flapping, and all of that kind of stuff, as I say. So that's why we're watching day 10 today. If you are new here, uh, I hope that you will consider subscribing and becoming part of this wonderful community of Grizzlies, which I'm so proud of. If you guys watched the True Crime Daily episode that I was on, that was actually recorded on Friday, um, but was only released today, then you'll know. <laughs> I speak so highly of you guys. I'm always so proud of this community. So thank you so much for being part of it. Welcome to all my Moderators, thank you so much for everything you do. Welcome to my patrons and members and OGs and all the new subscribers and even the lurkers. Some people just lurk, they just sit back, okay, they watch. If you're lurking, just know you can subscribe so you don't miss out on notifications and no one will even know. <laughs> uh, you'll just get all the notifications. So, uh, <laughs> look at the judge, so friendly today. She's like, okay, welcome back, everyone. And this was, of course, yesterday, uh, which was Monday. She's looking well rested and we're ready for another day. Now, let me warn you that uh, it, it's a it's a bit of a, we need to buckle up. It's one of those days because Jessie Kurshevsky, we're going to watch some more of her police interviews and her stories change all the time. And I was actually lurking today on day 11, you know, while I was getting ready now, <laughs> beautifying myself for you guys. <laughs> I was getting ready. And so I saw her there. Ooh, the cross-examination yesterday was so frustrating that we're going to, we're going to like full throttle teleport through most of it. I'm just letting you know. But the full version will be pinned in the comments for you. And by full version, I mean the full defluffed version without the breaks, without the lunch. It's just if you want to go and watch that entire cross-examination, it was very painful. Okay, very, very painful. So, but it will be available to you. You won't be missing out. We're just not going to watch all of it here together. I'm not going to put you through that. <laughs> um, so... What was I saying? Oh, I heard today that Jesse had the audacity, that's the defendant, right? To write a letter pretending to be Lynn, is what it's alleged, right? Saying that Lynn admitted to poisoning her own mother with Visine. I nearly, I nearly, I don't know, I nearly dropped my tea. I don't know. When I heard that, I'm like, what? Oh my goodness, that was just so <laughs> unbelievably frustrating. So I hope that you do know a little bit about this case. Uh, let me quickly see if I've got the right presentation here for you guys, just to quickly show you this, uh, just for anyone who doesn't know. Quick recap, this happened in Pewaukee, Waukesha County, Wisconsin. The victim is Lynn Hernan, 62. She died on October 3rd, 2018 of tetrahydrosoline poisoning, which is the main ingredient in eye drops. The defendant on trial um, is Jesse Kurshevsky. She's now 39 years old. She was 34 years old at the time. She was Lynn's caretaker. <laughs> And she knew Lynn because her, her mom was friends with Lynn. Also, to 
I don't want to botch your name now. I know you've got justice in your name. <laughs> uh, well, there's a couple of grizzlies that actually went to the courtroom yesterday. One of them, I had the comment pinned earlier, one of them actually spoke to Anthony Poser, who was another one. He's another one of Lynn's best friend. Her be one of her best friends is Corrine Poser. It's her son, Anthony, that used to visit Lynn a lot. And he saw a lot of red flags with Jesse's behavior after Lynn died. And he told the investigators there's more to this. And she's got fraud and forgery charges from her past. So maybe just look into this a little bit. Now, apparently, the grizzly that was in the courtroom said that uh, he says hi to all of us. He loves the channel. And um, they actually got to meet him, which I think is so cool. So hello to Anthony. Um, thank you so much for sending greetings to all of us. We just want you to know we have your back. Also, um, I got an email, as I, I told you guys last week, I think it was on Friday, I did get an email from a family member of Lynn's, so I'm just going to quickly read it to you without putting on the screen. Uh, she said, Gizla and the Grizzlies, thank you so much for your kind email, because I had emailed back to the initial email. I definitely appreciate it, um, due to all the attention this trial has received. We as a family have chosen not to put a lot of info about Lynn out there, as we didn't want... Uh, any judgment on her, of course, right? So we know that your channel's a safe place, and so here's some experiences. We grew up together in Madison, Wisconsin. As a family, we got together quite often, having cookouts, and always uh, gathering for holidays and birthdays and such. Lynn was always so much fun and always up for doing anything. We spent a lot of time in the water, and in the winter, we were playing in the snow. She loved music, she loved movies, and she especially loved uh, to laugh and make people happy. It also sounds like what her friends on the stand have said, right? She loved doing our makeup and hair and playing dress up. Unfortunately, as Lynn got older, the relationship in particular with her parents became very stressed, which caused Lynn to move away at a young age. So unfortunately, we started seeing less and less of her. She'd come out every now and then, mainly for holidays. And then uh, this lady's family moved out of state, and so they just kept in contact over the phone and didn't see each other as much. They said... When we were informed of her passing, we were all very shocked. We can't believe that somebody would do this to her. We were never even given the opportunity to take her cats for her, which we would have taken them because Lynn loved them dearly. We are appalled. They were put down. Oh my goodness, it's just heartbreaking. They said, we are so grateful for the judge that has been assigned to her case and the prosecution has been wonderful, keeping us informed as things go. We are thankful uh, for all of you for keeping her memory out there. So thank you, Grizzlies, for always being so kind and representing us wherever we go. All right. So I hope that now you're a little bit up to speed. If you're only popping in for the first time today, then I hope you'll read the description box. There's case, a case background there for you. I'd recommend checking out day one and day two of the trial. It's time stamped for you because there's presentations in the beginning of day one and the beginning of day two. There's also a video on the playlist where I read through the entire probable cause affidavit which is also very informative if you've never heard of the case. Okay, so are we ready? Okay, here we go. Uh, starting off with uh, direct examination, starting with day 10. Let me play this for you. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good morning. Good morning. Detective Hoppy, if you would stay standing. All right, then, just for... The record for Madam Reporter, state your name, please. Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, Hoppy, H-O-P-P-E. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. You may continue with your examination of Detective Hoppy. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, Detective. Good morning. Um, before we jump in for the day, I want to ask you, uh, do you recall last week when we went through some text messages in Exhibit 186 that were from May of 2018? Yes. And do you recall that uh, you even circled a page of those and we entered that as 186A as an exhibit? Yes. Do you remember what word you circled on that? It was, the, it was May of 2018. Right. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> um, the only reason I'm asking is because I think we forgot to add something to our, um, to our timeline there. So on 228... So I'm warning you guys again, you better buckle up because we've got to get ready for a lot of <laughs> Jessie's voice today and all her ever-changing stories. Um, Back the Blue says, so proud of Gizla watching you on Sidebar. I think it was, yes, it's True Crime Daily Sidebar. I just quickly want to say, if you want to hear about cases that I've deep-dived here, 
um, my commentary from 15 minutes on, I would say you would be familiar with because it's about the Delphi case and Caitlin Armstrong's uh, trial as well. So if you do watch that episode, it's on the community tab. I've also shared it on Patreon. Uh, it's on True Crime Daily. You can look under the video section or you can look on uh, under their podcast section. Sidebar with Joshua Ritter. And thank you so much. Okay. So I'm going to play this at 1.1 speed so that we can get to the part where they're going to show us the uh, jail interview exhibits. Uh, exhibit before you, there's a spot for May at the top of the exhibit. Is that true? Yes. And um, if I showed you exhibit 186, it's definitely the longest set of messages that we went through last week. Um, does that refresh your recollection about what? Yes, it does. What you circled on that exhibit? Yes. And what was that? I believe that is when Ms. Krzyzewski tells Mr. Craig that Ms. Hernan is in a coma. Okay. So could you, do you have a marker in front of you still? I do. Could yes. you please add 2018 next to May and then just put the word coma? Thank you. <clears throat> Detective, when we left off on Friday, we were uh, in the middle of exhibit 204, which is the interview from July 11th, 2019. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. And uh, up to the point where we ended for the weekend, um, do you recall in any of the interviews that we've heard whether Ms. Kraszewski ever told you that Lynn Hernan was drinking Visine on the day she died, on October 3rd of 18? No. You don't remember or she did not? She did not. Okay. So now I'd like to uh, publish Exhibit 204 again. I believe that we're on slide six at this time. And we did test the audio, so hopefully we'll be ready to go. And uh, Mary says the prosecution is so good. And when you say DA, it doesn't mean district attorney, because mostly a district attorney would be the DA. But you mean defense attorney, right? The defense attorney's cross is appalling. I won't spoil it for anyone. Don't worry, you won't be spoiling anything, because we're not going to be looking at it much. <laughs> I'm going to show you a couple of minutes of it and be like, it's horrifying. Okay, <laughs> and then we're going to move on with our day because ugh, it's just so gross how they keep on victim blaming. I can't believe that they want to discuss a letter where Lynn wrote that she poisoned her own mother with Visine. What in the actual hell? Oh, no, no. That's too far. It's too much. There we go. Thank you, Pernille. The journey to justice. I didn't want to say it wrong. The journey to justice was in the courtroom yesterday representing the Grizzlies and meeting Anthony Poser, which is just so cool to know that you're there showing uh, Lynn and her family so much love and support and representing the Grizzlies. So thank you so much. Before we start, Detective Hoppy, can you just remind the jury why this interview occurred? What prompted it? Uh, Ms. Krasuski uh, requested to meet with investigators. Okay. Uh, so this is, again, a continuation of the interview on July 11th of 19? That's correct. Okay. And for the record, this clip starts at 10.06.29. How about this? And, and, and again, just be... Okay, buckle up. Now we're going to play it at normal speed again because we're back to the jail interview. So this was now on the 11th of July. Remember, she was arrested on the 9th of July. So we saw an interview already from the 9th and from the 10th, and now she's back on the 11th. Here we go. Have you, did you ever use any of Lynn's credit cards or did you ever apply for a credit card or a loan or anything else after Lynn's death? After she died? Yes. No. Never used her credit card? I might have used her Speedway card like a day or two after because I always had it and that all of a sudden like it dawned on me. But other than that, no. Okay. So she lets you use her Speedway oh, card? Oh yeah, all the time. Thing? Yeah. She had me keep it on me because when I would go back and forth or anything, she always had me use it. Always. So just the Speedway card, no other credit card? I didn't apply for anything after she died. Everything I did was while she was alive and with her. What about using the card, so, I mean, what? I think just the Speedway, I'm almost positive. Okay. Because she cut up a lot of her credit cards before, like the two weeks before. So I'm almost, I don't remember any other ones left. I mean, I'm not saying they weren't. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking wholeheartedly. I do remember I used the Speedway card. I'm almost positive because I screwed up. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I knew, like, this isn't going to be good. Okay. It's time for you to be an honest person. You need to show Scott, the woman he's been with for three and a half years, who watches his kids if the lies are done. Yeah. Because my patience is getting done with this. I think 
Now think, I know. He knows you're involved. Here she is. Look at, look at her. You loved her. Yeah. Right? Well, don't you see? Visine bottles. And she needs a lot of Visine, more than one bottle, to get where the Visine in her body. Zero. Luckily, we can't see much. Um, otherwise, I'd zoom out majorly. But she's like, oh, okay, let me have a look. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Oh, we're... <laughs> she's actually looking and they're like, yeah, where's the Visine? So <laughs> they initially thought this was a OD, but then realized, you know, with all the pills and stuff that were scattered all over her body, but then realized later after the autopsy, oh my word, she was poisoned with tetrahydrazoline. So where are the Visine bottles? Ooh, that's a good question. But there's the water bottle. Yeah, I get it. I'll show you the picture of the trash. There's no Visine in the trash. Jesse, you either cleaned up the scene. No, I threw it out three days before. She I know I definitely yeah. threw out all the bottles. It was three days before. Right, and you said you didn't buy any more since then. Yeah. So 100, 160 parts of Visine, which is like four to five bottles of Visine, get in her system. Explain it to me. In her water? Without a lie. She drank one bottle of water over three days? No. Then how? Then I gave her water every day. So then where would the Visine have come from? Her waters. So she pre-dosed all the waters? That's what you're going no, with? No, not all of them, No. I didn't say all of them. I said, but she put it, she kept it in her bottle of vodka. She had three bottles of vodka. I didn't touch her drink. I would like to believe you, but all the lies you've said in this case, and prior to us even getting, talking to you, all, all the stuff, all the lies you told Scott, I to your mom, and you know what it looks like? That you're guilty. I didn't. And the jury's going to find you guilty. I did. Oh, it's just I, that simple. I understand that. But would you say, oh, we did all this research on my phone? And they really play such good cop, bad cop, because later... Um, de this detective, which I think this one is Aaron Hoppy, he says things that we might be like, what? Why would you say that? Why would you say that, you know, she was helping Lynn, she had a big heart, all that stuff again, but they just, they just working her, you know, they're trying to get information out of her and it actually works because she, over time, changes her story so much, you know, she digs herself a hole, basically. And stop, you know what it looks like? Was it like you're doing the research. You're buying the gun. I understand that. You know? But I wasn't. I know. But she's not here to tell us what happened. So we have to go on the evidence. But I'm the evidence saying, is full of searches. I told and you. And evidence is full of records showing where you're at. And evidence is, is there's no Visine here. There's supposed to be Visine bottles around here. There's supposed to be Visine bottles in the trash. She didn't drink Visine from the bottle except the first time. So you're she, she pre-dosed all these bottles of water in the kitchen. Not all of them. No. She did it with a few that bottles. That sounds ridiculous. No, it isn't, though. I'm telling you the truth and because she had all these bottles. She had 15 ounces of vodka the day before. She was a zero zero when she was found. 0.0, 0 ethanol. Okay, that was the day before. Though. I get you. I, I, I know what she drank. I saw it plain as day. I poured it. You poured the vodka. Yeah, no, the, the vodka. Drink. You poured it in the water or the vodka. You poured it in the... You gave it to her that morning. I did not. You helped her out again. She wanted to die. She was real sick. This is not the person she was. I get that, because she was a hairdresser. Yeah. She cared about what she looks like. She looks like a crap here. Yeah, she and no one looks good then, but she, this, this person, as a whole person, isn't who she wanted to be, and you helped her. And she helped you out over the last two years with a lot of money. She did. And it was coming to an end. The money was coming down, and it was time for Lynn to move on to a happier place where she wouldn't be miserable. And you helped her. It's that I simple. Bought the you bought it. it. And you gave it to her. I didn't give it to, I mean, I gave it to her, like, handed it to her, but I didn't give it to her. So you knew she was putting it in there the day up? I didn't know that. You were there that morning for four hours. I didn't know she put it in there the day The body metabolizes it real quickly. I understand so that. So you're there from eight until noon. She's taking it at that time. Well, I told you, she was in and out while I was there. Well, she drink, she's constantly keep dosing. She needs to keep drinking to get this in. She didn't drink four bottles in one no, shot. she didn't. You know, and not only that, oh, but all these other times, when you drink Visine at the level she's drinking it, ingesting it, she's going to have massive diarrhea. She's going to be throwing up. There's no puke on her. No. So she doesn't no, have diarrhea. There, there's little puke. pills in her mouth. There's pills all over. There's no pills in her tummy. She doesn't have Someone any diarrhea. Stage that. I didn't stage that. I can tell you, you right did. now, I did not stage that. Did your mom? No. 
Honestly, my opinion is, is I think she drank that water. I don't know what was in it, but I think she drank the water, and I think she went to do the pills next, and I don't think she got very far. That was my honest to God truth. I did not give her Visine purposely that day for any reason. <laughs> that day. Except you probably did. I mean, in my opinion, she did. <laughs> But she's like, on that day, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't have it with me, and I didn't give it to her. What do you mean purposely? Well, because you guys are thinking, I purposely gave her visine. I didn't do it on purpose. I, I only know, gave her visine. You could have unintentionally. Well, I mean, you gave it to her I her bought it twice. for her. So, I mean, I look at it like the, right there, and that's bad. I bought it. <laughs> okay. So, okay. <laughs> Jesse, wow. Uh, Liza says, does anyone know how long it's going to be today? I missed the beginning. So, um, we are nine minutes in to the shortened defleft footage, okay, that I have for you. It's five hours and three minutes, but we're not going to watch a lot of the cross-examination from the defense. It's really painful to watch, okay? If you want to watch it, or if you have watched it, you'll understand. I saw on, you know, where the, the streams already happened, people complaining so much of like, that was so painful, and it continues on today. In real time, you know, um, right now the trial is happening in real time. We're watching day 10 and still the cross-examination is taking place. And still the judge has to discipline the defense to not bring up slanderous things about the victim. It's horrible. So we're not going to watch a lot of that. Um, I'm going to save you that pain. So we'll be here for it's three hours or so of footage. So we might be here for four hours because, of course... <laughs> I, I I make commentary in between and I address some of your questions and things like that. Tanya, thank you so much. Now I can't see your message, but thank you so much for the czar, the 28 uh, ZAR. Really, really appreciate it. Bought it for her. And you know what she was going to do with it? Because she has stuff for her eyes. She she stuff, doing it, and then she has to drink her stuff. For, like I told him, she's been doing this for a while. I didn't. She didn't die from it any other time. So I didn't think it would happen anytime soon. I thought she was just having fun off of it for a while. Thought, okay, it's making her sick. She likes the feeling, or it's. You <laughs> see, we have to pause and react together because what? She was just having fun with it for a while. Okay, she was very, very sick since 2016 with symptoms that sound like visine poisoning symptoms. Sounds like it. Doctors couldn't figure out quite what is wrong with her. Okay, but Jesse's like, I thought she was just having some fun with it. <laughs> Goodness me. Sleep. But you knew that she looked it up and you knew that she told you she could die from it. Yes. So what do you mean you thought it was just for fun? Because it wasn't ever happened. She wasn't dying from it. So I didn't believe that she would. I thought she was going to go on to her next scenario. Whatever that may be, I don't know. Like all the other ones she come up with for a little bit. She had a boatload of visine in her. A boatload. And you told me to just throw the bottles away three yeah. days prior. You didn't buy her any no. prior to that. So where'd it come from? Where are the bottles? Those where, where bottles, bottles, though, she emptied into things. That's what she always did so when I mean, wasn't there. So did, if you're in a jury and someone yeah. says, this person, she pre-dosed all these bottles of water and then resealed them, and then she'd tell you, Jesse, take some from the left or take some from the right, that sounds ridiculous. I don't know what you want me to say because that's the truth, though. She always, every time I bring up, Scott would she buy that. But would buy them? Would, would think Scott would buy that story? Do you think he'd tell you you're lying again? I'm not lying, though. I told you, I've been honest with you since yesterday when I saw you guys. Everything I've been telling you, I've been coming out with everything. Well, it's time to finish 100% truth. No more lying. I'm right. not. Because I, no I, I know, I know, I know that. And I've been saying that from day one. I know what she was putting in things. I don't know how much because she didn't do it when I was there. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, Stefan says her next scenario. She's like, I'm being honest with you since yesterday. <laughs> okay, this is like interview number four by now. And she's like, since yesterday, coming out with all of it. But yet today, she's going to tell the biggest load of BS, <laughs> bull spit, as we say over here. Such nonsense about burying a box out there and all kinds of stuff, sending the police on a goose chase for this box, which they never found. I mean, the audacity of this defendant is quite something. She drank that vodka, and she told me after she drank about half of it what she did. 
Yeah, I didn't know. And it metabolizes in eight hours. So if you left at 10 o'clock, worst case yeah. scenario, by 6 a.m., all that glycine's out of her system. I understand that. And you get there, and she's coherent. Yeah. And she's talking to you. She says, goodbye, see you later, yeah. darling, or whatever yeah. she said. Right? Yep. Yeah. So but she also I, had a bottle, two bottles on her when I left that night. Usually I would give her two. And then that morning I gave her another bottle. Both those other two bottles were gone when I got there. And then she had, the, I didn't thought it was two, but there was the one sitting there. Usually she got one or two for me, depending on. Okay. We don't see our vice. I under. I get what you're saying. I can't tell you anything differently because there is no visine there. I understand that. I don't see it either. She wasn't drinking visine from the bottle, though. I, I don't know how else to explain that because she wasn't doing it. She did it one time. If that's what she was doing, I would tell you. I would have left it sitting there if I took something away. I didn't. I didn't touch anything around her. Nothing. I didn't even want all the pills laying around her that she shouldn't have had, and I didn't touch those because I didn't want to take anything away because I knew exactly what it was. In general, it's a dead person. You don't touch shit. I did not give her any advising that day. None. I didn't put it in anything. I didn't give it to her. I put visine in her drink one time that I told her. Wow. I, I can see you all eye-rolling with me. Um, so Daniel says, so what's the point of drinking Visine? I'm confused. Why would anyone drink it? No one would drink it. It's got no effect on, you know, you, you're not going to get a high from it or something. It's not fun. It's going to give you some major stomach problems. It's very toxic in the body. So she's just, she's just making this up as if <laughs> Lynn took it just for fun. But yet she claims to have poisoned herself with it in January, months after Lynn had died, and said she just wanted to, you know, feel what it felt like. And then the police officer said, okay, so how did it feel? She's like, I felt like absolute crap. Okay. Did you get a high from it? And no, 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 there was no high from it. She felt like absolute crap, but that's also, I just don't even believe her story. But even there, she's caught in her own lies. She lies a lot, this one, from what we can see. <laughs> little, little Pepper says, totally rolling my eyes right out of my head. <laughs> it's impossible not to write as I was like, oh man, <laughs> I'm so glad we can watch this together. <laughs> One time, and that was in front of her and she got mad because I only put two drops in it. So she grabbed it from me. She put the visine in what she wanted when <laughs> I wasn't around for a reason. Because she knew I did not. And I got that, but that people don't dispose of bottles. I told you what I did with the bottles. I'm not lying. Three so days before. she knows three days prior she has this plan set up? I don't. Maybe she didn't have all the bottles, or maybe she put them in certain bottles. I don't know. Okay. So, But, there, but there's not a, a lot of water bottles around her. There's one. Yeah, I get that. She put four bottles of Visine into one water bottle? Is that um, she's done it. She has done it. What? Yeah. What? Numerous times. Four full bottles yes. of Visine. I told you, I bought her 8 to 12. <coughs> Why'd you see her do that? I didn't physically see her do it, but I'd come back and they'd all be empty. <coughs> she wasn't putting them into 20 different bottles. There's no way. You're, it doesn't match the science. How does it? I don't know what more to tell. I told you, I'd come in and she'd have all the bottles sitting <coughs> all together. She's not taking one bottle at a time and drinking it. Morning. No. Three days before is when I emptied out the trash, and that's where all her bottles are. <coughs> I mean, that might actually be true. Maybe she put a whole bunch of visine in that water bottle, left it in the house, and maybe took out the trash three days before. That part might actually be true. I think there's a little bit of truth in, in many of her lies, and they're quite telling, aren't they? I know that's where they were. I didn't take anything away. I swear to God on that. I did That was the last time I removed you any vitamin from the house. To us, to yourself, fuck us. Scott, you all heard the truth. I, Amen. Yes. You all heard the truth. Jesse. I'm telling you the truth. But how do we know that? Because for three days now, <coughs> you've been telling us lies. And then you've been telling Scott what, lies. What do you want me to lies. tell you or do you? I want to know really what happened that day. I, you know what? I'm actually starting to think that maybe Chris is right. That you knew she was trying to harm herself, and you were doing a half-assed job of trying to stop her from doing it. I think part of you maybe actually 
felt bad and knew that she was sick and wanted it. Maybe that was it. Because I don't think you're a stone cold I killer. Don't. I don't think you're cold blooded. I, I don't know. But what I do know is Chris is 100% right when he says the science and the facts aren't adding up. That bottle of water right there had in six, six vitamins. How do, you know? How do you know that? Because that's what she put in it. When? She told me. The three days before I threw it out. And she asked for it that morning. Did you, you, gave it to her. you gave it to her? Yeah. So this is the hot shot bottle. Well, I did. <laughs> what do you think of that? It's just like, yeah, okay, okay. She's cornered now, so... That bottle had six bottles of Visine in it. And they're like, how do you know that? Because I put it in there. Okay, well, then you're admitting that you put the Visine in that water. That's probably true. What's the lie then? In my opinion, would be she wanted it that day. Yeah, right. I gave it to her because she said I wanted it. I didn't realize, per se, I knew she told me, okay, I have this one, I have this one, and I have my vodka. And she said, it's the one bottle I have left on the right. Can you please give me that before you leave? And so you... I honestly thought, though, like the other times, it wasn't going to kill her. I thought it was going to put her to sleep for a little bit. If you thought this is the big bottle, the one that she... Is that... The one she, she, was always, she was always putting in four to six in each of them. So I didn't think anything. There's no way possible. Yes. Yeah. I swear to God, I never no way. A, She is 106... But she swears to God. And then we know that that's when she's telling the truth, right? <laughs> Whenever she's like, I swear to God, it's just like blatant lie. 60 parts, 160. I don't know what that means. I'll tell you what it means. 60 parts kills you. So she had two and a half times the amount she needed, and there's still liquid in this thing. Okay, well, the last time I threw out the bottles, there was nine bottles that I threw out. She told me she put six in one, and she put the rest in her vodka. So that day you leave, she says, give me the bottle with the, with yeah. the drops. She had two who more put, water who bottles. Put the, who put the Visine in the water? I didn't. I swear on that. I didn't. How do you know there's six bottles? That's what she told me. She said... I didn't she just say like two minutes ago that she put the Visine in the bottle? Now she's like, I don't know. I swear to God, I didn't put it in there. She did it. And then she told me she did. Because that's what she wanted... Yes, that's how she liked to drink her vodka. It's what she liked to add to her water, right? Like, who on earth is going to believe that? Yes, Trinity says, they got her cornered. They really do. And the stories are really getting more and more bizarre, aren't they? Put six in there, and the other three. thought it was a good idea to give it to her. Is that what you're going with? No, I didn't think it was a good well, idea. Why'd you give it to her? Because I fought with her did about it for an now? hour before I left, and I didn't want to keep arguing with her. She was screaming at me before I left. It tells after you're 40, so you're watching souls. We were. And when I went to leave, she said, I want that bottle. And I said, you don't need it. I figured it would put her to sleep because she was putting in very large doses from what she told me. She told me numerous times. I, every time she had her visine, she would take about three bottles. And she was putting it in to two waters usually and her vodka. So she was putting in a good three to five, six bottles in each one of them. Why? Why would she do that? Sure. <laughs> yeah, Evie says, not quite at Latisha level, but oh my word. <laughs> I know, right? Latisha with Eduardo and all of those stories. That was, that was very hectic. But this one, she's pretty close huh, to the amount of lies she can tell. It was no different than any other time in my mind. That's what she was doing. I, I'm telling you the guys are true. I didn't ever put it in there. Ever. She did that behind me. I don't her. believe it and Scott's not gonna leave and just say it out. He's not gonna leave you. He's gonna think you're a murderer. I didn't murder her. Detective in this clip that we just watched, um, was that the first time that you had heard Anything about six bottles of Visine in a water bottle? Yes. There's two pieces of paper on the table. What are those? I believe those are scene photos. Okay. Is, do you recall from the scene photos, is there a bottle of water in them? Or a water bottle in the 
photos? Yes, there is. Okay. So when Ms. Kraszewski said that bottle of water had six Visine in it, do you know what she was referencing? Yes. What was that? The bottle that was next to Ms. Herndon and that at the time it had it contained at least six, bo or six bottles of Visine that she knew was in there. <clears throat> was this the first time that you had ever been told Ms. Kraszewski and Ms. Hernan fought for an hour and a half before Ms. Kraszewski left that day? That was the first time, yes. Moving to slide seven, please. This is about another 15 minute clip. She's always the personal representative for those today, right? Here you go. Here's your signature on April 20th. That's not for the estate, though. That's for her living will and lockbox. You didn't submit all that paperwork at the same time, so I have more pictures. Yeah, I don't know about the, the personal representative, or the, um, that the will was left to me. I did not know that, no. How did you not know that when you signed it, though? I didn't. So who signed this, then? I signed that. That's not for her will. This is for power living will. will. That's for the hospital. Okay. That's what that means. That I'm access to medical at the hospital and her lockbox. That's all that is. I know because she had me type that up and they went to sign it at BMO Harris. And there it is. She had me type that up. Yeah, yeah, we know you typed up a couple of copies of those. <laughs> Living will and testament, even from jail. She even provided the police with a new living will and testament from Lynn when she was already arrested. So like a year later. Wow. That's not her will. Living will is for medical decisions. That's what a living will is. I did not know if she changed her physical will. No, I did not. My mom didn't even know that. That's for medical. That's right. for the hospital and the lockbox. I did not know anything about she the will. All, my mom. Accounts, all that kind of stuff. If you don't yeah. know that you're the personal representative. No, I did not know that. Okay. We thought my mom was. So who does my mom? Okay. I didn't kill her for any financial gain. Our, our, boss, did I kill our her? boss is done with this. He wants us to be done. So this is your opportunity to I'm say, telling you 100%. say what you guys say to make it best for you. You helped her. I helped her. I bought the shit. I didn't put it in. I, I gave her the bottle of water. I did help her. That's as far as I She can, can barely move. How can she do this herself? How can she put those six bottles of She water? was doing that. She physically the was day, doing that. that. The day before. No, though. they did not happen. It happened two days before. The two days before. Yeah. And how many bottles did you buy? Um, she had a total of like 11. How many did you buy two days before? Three days before. Three days before. Well, I didn't buy them that day, though. I bought them maybe that day. I don't know. I bought them the, around the week. Yeah. How many? Um, 11. Yeah. And where'd you and get? Two were the I ones. I don't know for sure. Where do you think you got them? I, I always went all different. It's just wherever I was going for something. So I, it, wasn't, it wasn't like I just went out for eye drops. Did you break them up? Did you buy some, some here, some there, some here? No. Did the court think it was funny when you're buying 11 bottles of eye drops? I mean, did they ever say anything? <laughs> nope. Never. I, I would think it's weird. But I do too. Because my brain is fucked up, twisted, you know? No. Nope. No, never, nobody ever said anything. And I didn't break them up and go to you, places. When you break the 11 bottles, the yep. two ones for her eyes, yep. and then the nine for her to her yep. chest, do you give them to her? Do you put them on the counter? What do you do with them? Um, the two for her eyes, I usually put in the bathroom unless she needs one out. That's why I still don't know why there isn't one, because she normally had one out. I don't know if it was on the kitchen or in the bathroom. She usually had one out. And I know that for sure. And I didn't hide it or put it anywhere. Um, and then the other ones, when I left that day, they were sitting on the sink, on the kitchen sink is where I always, the counter, whatever you call it. Okay. And then the morning of her death, you come and obviously no bottles of Visine around her. No, I got rid of them the day, two days before. Two days prior. Two, yeah. And you asked her, what did you do with the nine I bottles? No, no I know? asked her the day that I took them. Yeah. What because you? when she had the garbage, like I always take down her bottles. And you asked her. Yep. Was you with nine bottles of Visine? That's what I said. I said, did, did you say? take nine bottles of Visine? That's what I said to her first. Did so, you take all nine said. bottles? And she said, no. I put some in my vodka and I put some in the water. And I said, wait a minute. You did what and how much? I asked her. Oh, Jesse, the hero. The caretaker was like, what? You put how much now in your vodka and your water? Why would you do such a thing? It's, I just can't even believe 
I mean, in many cases, I know that Jesse is innocent or proven guilty. This trial is set to last for about 15 court days. So this would be day 10. So I don't know if they're going to wrap this trial up by Friday. You know, they could, unless and maybe it'll go over a little bit more to next week and then the jury will deliberate. But in many cases, you see criminals victim blaming so much. Like, it's really bizarre to me that the, the way that they do this and jesse so far is no different i mean the words she's putting in lynn's mouth the things she's blaming lynn for it's it's quite sickening huh the plain as day because i wanted to know because i always asked her i wanted to know how much she put where and so she put some in the vodka and some in the water yeah but she don't know which water it was the one water on the side Right side. And you know that because she marked it? She pointed it to you? No, I, you can tell by looking at it. The top of it. Okay. And that, she had the open watch. bottles and the regular bottles. The chat, and she's reasonably happy, and you watch her soaps. And then no, she, says, she was moody and in a bad mood and tired. Because now she said before you said you were watching soaps. We were watching soaps. But she's crappy. Yeah. And tired. And she says to you, Go get me the bottle on the left, the right. No, the she didn't say anything until I went to leave. Okay. I said, do you need anything before I leave? Like, I always ask. Because you said, you're, I'm going to run some errands. Yep. She said, that's fine. Yep. <coughs> and then she says. Um, well, and that's when she said, make sure you take my card because we haven't used it this month, her state whatever thing. And um, she said, can you get me some bottles of water? And I said, yeah, I'll get you some water. That's why I don't think she really thought either because... I always got her water. Why did she ask me to get her water? I don't think she planned on it or thought that was going to happen right away. I'm telling you, she's done it before, so we didn't really see this being any different. Okay. So she... This is hard to watch, right? It makes me like so angry hearing all this stuff. Um, I couldn't do it without you, so thank you all for being here. Uh, Amy Short, thank you so much. You said, been a lurker for about a year, finally joined. Thank you, Grizzlies and G, for being so amazing. Hashtag justice for Lynn. Thank you so much, Amy. Really appreciate it. Okay. Let's get your water. Yep. And um, then what? Oh, actually, I grabbed two regular bottles of water from just the regular, and I brought them to her, and she said, no, I want my other bottle. Which is the one you know has six bottles of ice yep. in it. Because she told you. And you give it to her. Well, we argued about it. Like, eventually. What about the argument? Um, I said, I don't think you need to take this right now, and I'm not going to be here, because normally she would try at least to have it while I was there in case something did happen. I prefer it. She didn't always listen to me. I'm not going to tell you she did. And um, she said, no, I want that ball. Remember, Jesse had errands to run. She had to go and open accounts, you know, at JC Penney's and in Lynn's name and just go on a shopping spree. So she was like, I'm going to leave now. You be careful. This is the story she wants us to believe. I'm going to leave now. Lynn, in her story, is apparently yelling at her, like, just give me the bottle of Visine. You're yeah, right. She's like, I've got to run some errands. I've got to go and spend some more of your money. <laughs> oh, water. It'll put me to sleep. I want to go to sleep. We argued about it for a good five, ten minutes. And I said, no, you don't need to take it. I said, you already had some last night when you had your vodka. And that is exactly how it went. And then you gave in. Yep. And you gave it to her. I always gave in on what she wanted because it's her choice and what she wanted. She wanted... It is her choice. She wanted this, I let her have this. She wanted that, I let her have it. I pretty much did what she wanted. She was a really great caretaker, huh? Yes. I mean, whatever she wants. Buy a zine all day in her vodka? Sure. Because I'm taking care of her. Yeah, right. Did you just see her drink the water? She drank a little bit before I left, like two steps. And then you left? Yep. Were you worried? Oh, extremely. But I also thought, too, she's done it before. I didn't really know. So you know she's putting six bottles <laughs> in a bottle. Why she's done that before? Six bottles? Yes. How many times? I can't say for sure. Certain, maybe. Three or four. She started off with smaller amounts and went to bigger. Did you ever have to kind of revive her? No. Sternum rub? Um, uh, two times I 
hit her face, you know, and like smacked her awake. One time I, I was, thought I had to call an ambulance, but I didn't have to. A lot of times she fell asleep and she'd wake up, talk to you for a little bit, fall asleep, wake up. That was pretty much the normal. Are you carrying guilt for what you did? I have a ton of guilt. I also am thinking in my head right now, this is exactly what she said from day one. She always wanted help and she always was worried that it was going to backfire. Because you could have, you could have prevented this. What do you do when somebody you love is done? What do you do? Yes, flip the script. She's like, what do you do when someone you love is done? What do you do? Oh, wow. Mr. Grizzly says, hi, everyone. And he brought me, you know, this is my favorite. <laughs> brought me a boba tea. So thank you to everyone who bought coffees because going towards this, <laughs> I love boba tea. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Take a deep breath. Buckle up, everyone. Things get worse from here. Jesse makes up even more stories. Let's hear it. How many times do you say no? How many times do you not do what they want? What I, I'm just being honest. What do you do? How can you look at somebody every day that doesn't want to be here and fights with you about every little thing? And I'm being 100% real with it. What do you do? There's only so much. I, I took her to the hospital. I took her to the hospital. I tried. I'm the one who got her to go. I thought for sure they would help her. They would see something. They would know something. They would do something. I mean, I told them so much without telling them everything. But you didn't tell them about the vaccine. I did. I told them. You should have told them. Jesse. I told them. She was. She was. She was sick. I told them as much as I could without. You could have told them everything. Prepare for the crocodile tears. It's pretty sickening. Are you ready? She now claims to have told told people, even, you know, the hospital, whoever, anyone they ask about, yes, yes, she told them about Lynn's what? A visine addiction? Is that what you're trying to say? I mean, <laughs> as if. I know, I know. When my dad died, I tell him everything. He's not eating. He's, I did. I told, told him this, all told this. this. He's doing this. I kept right. telling him to check her toxicology. I told him over and over again. When, when you say that to a nurse, she says, why should we check her toxicology? They just don't say, okay, we'll check it. No, I kept saying, take it, check it, because I said, she's doing a lot with her pills. That's what I said. And, but, but, you, but, but, but I would have thought that said, what came off. I what, you said was, what you said was, was before I, was exactly what you needed to. Was, I, <laughs> what, what do you do when someone you love wants to? I didn't do it to her, though. I didn't. Well, J Jesse. I would never look at, look at, look at every, harm anybody or do I, I, anything. She wanted this. I know. I can't help her. I can't. She I, knew what happened. I didn't even charge with murder for something I didn't do. I'm not even so good at what's that hurt. I didn't do it, though. Jesse, what do you mean, Jesse? What do you, what do you think? was going to happen when you gave her a bottle of water with six bottles of Izzy. I didn't think she was going to die because she's done it before and I'm telling you that. I know. I know. All she would do was fall asleep and she'd get up a few hours but later. But you were worried about it. I was worried. always worried. But did you call her? Yeah, I did call her. Did you check my record? Did you call her that day? I did. How many did you call her? I don't know. Maybe once or twice. I was did she talking. answer? No. Why didn't you go back then? I did go back. If I, I didn't thought, go back right away, but I figured she was sleeping. She was always sleeping when I called. She never answered the phone. You were worried. You were worried enough that something was going to happen, so you were gone for five hours. No, well, you said I was only gone for like four. Four and a half. Yeah, I said about 12.30. And when I got back, I, do you know how many times I've walked to her house thinking I'd find her done? How many times? This happened a lot, but it wasn't just one time. I didn't think it was going to happen. I wasn't trying to make it happen. I'm, I'm just serious. I know you guys, you guys totally are so away from what I was. Well, what, 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 and I told, what did I tell you before when Chris was out of the room? I told you before, how are we supposed to do it when every I time it's been piecemeal? It's been lies, truths, lies, truths. Because no matter what I say, I feel like it's no. done. How would you? You know how this all could have been avoided was, to tell you was telling that those deputies that but, day. So Lynn was suicidal. Lynn wanted to end her life. And I was supposed to say I gave her a Visine bottle of water this morning. Or you say she was drinking Visine. Be, it gives some kind of explanation. Because now here we are, 
I get it. I get what you're saying, but you know, it's, I don't know how to explain it because I've never went through this with anybody. How are you supposed to sit there and watch somebody you love want to do this to themselves? How, how do you feel about that? Do you know how messed up I was in the head with did all you, this? Did you want Linda Ty, though? No. Then why didn't you talk to somebody? Why didn't you tell somebody? Why didn't you tell a health care provider? Why I didn't tried you tell when I took her to the hospital. Why didn't Scott and say, this is fucking me up, Scott? Because he, he loves you, for he Christ's sake. Me. He loves me. He should know that I was drinking a ton because I didn't know he, what to think. He, he would have helped you. But I got her to the hospital for He would have helped you. You know he would have. Probably. You're trying to you're trying to say, oh, I was casually trying to tell the doctor I wasn't, the doctors what I don't to look for. Why didn't you tell them? Take them aside. Say, look, I love her. I think she's. I think she wants to harm herself. I think she wants that's to what, end her life. That's why they put a camera in the room because I did say she was suicidal. I said that. Okay. I just there's only I didn't know how much to say. Or, I didn't want to get in trouble either. You have to remember from day one when she always said, "Can you help me? Can you do this? Can you?" She, she, you know what she wanted? She wanted me to pull the trigger. Do you think I could do that? Do you think I could honestly no, I do that? No, I can't. I can't. She could have been dead three months ago if I would have helped her. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't physically do that. I get it. I'm a piece of shit and you guys think whatever. But this is somebody that I cared a shit deal about. And nothing to do with fucking money. She was poor when I met her and we were still friends. Okay, but you met her when you were a kid, and then around 2015, Lynn got an inheritance of $250,000 that I'm sure you, being in her life, heard about. Amazing how then all these symptoms started, hey? I mean, according to Jesse, so when did Lynn start putting Visine in her vodka just for funsies? She'll probably be like, hmm, yeah, three years. She actually said three years in some of the other interviews. Interesting timing, isn't that? She's like, I swear to God, it's not about money. It sounds a lot like it's about money. And of course, this uh, she's facing first degree murder charges and two uh, counts of felony theft. And they've already gone over a lot of financial records and things. So we know she was spending Lynn's money at the same time as Lynn was experiencing worse and worse and worse symptoms. Stomach problems. I mean, she already was battling thyroid cancer. And had major back problems, back pain, and was taking medication for that. But uh, stomach problems started around 2015 or so. Sure. She has, she has no pain now. I can't. I can't. You don't. I watched my aunt go through pain for 14 years when she was sick. And I couldn't physically, I wasn't with her daily. And to be with Lynn daily, and the way she would talk, you don't even understand. <laughs> Did you stay? Did you put those pills there, Jesse? I, I swear to God, I didn't put them there. I put them there whole. Before I left, I put them there whole. Where? They were on the plate. <laughs> on here, on the plate. And those were the pills she was supposed to take. For yes, she's actually crying for herself in the courtroom as well as in the jail interview. <laughs> Present Jesse and past Jesse crying for herself, in my opinion. It's probably here as well when she <laughs> she realizes again. Oh crap! This looks bad. Mm -hmm. For the day, that's exactly what I did. I crushed him for her before I did not crush him that day. And I'm honest. I crushed him when she said she wanted to crush him. She put him in the pudding. I did not crush him. They were on that plate hole when I left because she was supposed to take him. And that I I, I know for a hundred percent fact. I didn't move her body at all except to touch her breathing when I came back. Detective, I want to ask you a few questions about this clip. We'll kind of go um, in reverse order. There was another discussion about there being a camera installed at the hospital. Do you recall that? Yes. And last week, do you remember when we went through Exhibit 207 with the jury, which was a portion of the medical record? Yes. And can you summarize what that record said about the camera for the jury? Uh, there was a camera placed in the room uh, due to Lynn not Miss Hernan not following instructions regarding getting out of bed and not using the call light appropriately. 
in any of the medical records you reviewed, was there notations that this friend, Jesse Krzyzewski, indicated Lynn Hernan was suicidal? <clears throat> None whatsoever. There was a discussion, and if we refer back to Exhibit 228, what remind the jury what date Ms. Hernan got out of the hospital? September 28th, 2018. So that's six days until the date of death, right? Yes. And um, in this clip, there was a lot of discussion about Ms. Hernan having dosed different things with Visine. Remember that? Yes. And in terms of how many times Ms. Hernan drank a water bottle like that, what did Ms. Krzyzewski say? I'm sorry, what's the question? Sure, when there was discussion about dosing different things like vodka and water bottles, right? Yes. Did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you that the first day Lynn Hernan ever drank a bottle with Visine in it was October 3rd? No. What did she say about that? She said she had been doing that um, for a while. She had been dosing uh, the water and vodka. But in reality, only six days had elapsed since Ms. Hernan was in the hospital. Correct. Okay. When that discussion was going on, do you recall Ms. Krzyzewski saying she usually tried to drink it when I was there? Sustained. Did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you when Ms. Hernan usually tried to drink her dosed during, items? During that portion of the interview, Ms. Krzyzewski stated that um, Ms. Hernan had tried to drink her dosed water or vodka when Ms. Krzyzewski was present. Did she say why? To make sure she was okay. Was that consistent with what Ms. Krzyzewski was telling you about Ms. Hernan wanting to die? No, that would not be consistent. Gonna pause for a second. We are 35 minutes into the footage. It's a five hour uh, footage that day that I've got here for you, but we're not going to be watching a lot of the last bit there, the cross examination today, although I will make it available for you in the pinned comments. Of course, the full DFLAF version. Maurice <laughs> says, starting my birthday with my favorite person uh, on YouTube, G and my Grizzly fam, thank you for all you do for us and happy birthday to you. I hope that you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for being here with us. Do you recall in the clip that the jury just watched the time period of the argument between these two individuals changing? Yes. And how did it change from the previous clip to this clip? Obviously there was an, initially there was no discussion of any argument. Um, during the initial portion of this clip, it was um, we argued for, Ms. Krzyzewski stated that her and Ms. Hernan argued for over an hour about the one bottle of water with the six bottles of Visine in it to it was a very short argument and just got it for. And finally, during the clip the jury just watched, was there more discussion regarding Ms. Hernan's will? Yes. What did Ms. Krzyzewski say about her knowledge of the will? During that initial portion, she stated that she believed it was just for medical decisions and I believe the lockbox at BMO Harris. Okay, so there is a clip where a piece of paper was shown to Ms. Krzyzewski, right? Correct. Do you remember what that was? Uh, I believe that was the living will and testament. Okay. And fair to say that's different than uh, than the will filed in probate? Yes. Okay. So during this clip, what did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you about her understanding of the actual will in this case? That she was not uh, the representative for that. Do you, We talked about this last week. Do you recall when we um, showed the jury Exhibit 83? And if I could publish that, please. It's already in evidence. We're all set, Detective, do you remember when we talked about this last week? Yes, I do. 
And there's some markings at the top of the paper. Does that indicate this was actually filed? That's correct, yes. And if we go to page two. And page three. Can you remind the jury of the signing date on this document? Ms. Krzyzewski signed it on July 29th, 2018. And when was the interview that we just listened to? <clears throat> July 11th, 2019. And who is the beneficiary of, of Exhibit 83? Ms. Krzyzewski. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. No, nothing. I'm going to be charged. We just teleported a little bit there when you see that effect, you know, saving ourselves a bunch of time. Okay, buckle up for the next round of the police interview. Here we go. I'll zoom in for you a little bit again. Not that we really want to see her zoomed in, do we? But we're gonna, so that we can see everything that happens here. Okay, here we go. We don't make that decision on our case call. together. We dropped down to the DA's office. You guys have done this for years. What are, what are you thinking here? I need to know what I'm realistically looking at. Well, I guess it's going to be up to the district attorney's office whether or not they believe that you... I would guess you have some culpability of her death, if it's assisted suicide or, or conspiracy to, to cause death. We don't make that. That's illegal stuff. Our, our job is to find the truth. And what do you guys actually think at this point with everything I've said? I think, I, I'll tell you right from, from day one. I think she wanted to die and you helped her. That's what I think happened. The money was just collateral damage. She, we don't make that it's decision. Not, not we put goal. a case together. We dropped down to the DA's office. You guys have done this for years. What, what are you thinking here? I need to know what I'm realistically looking at. Well, I guess it's going to be up to the district attorney's office whether or not they believe that you... I would guess you have some culpability of her death. If it's assisted suicide... Or, or a conspiracy to, to cause death. We don't make that. That's illegal. <laughs> she looks... That's a whore at 39, right? She's the same age as me. But she she looks like she's had no sleep. The weekend was rough for her, okay? This is from yesterday. This is how she started Monday off. Sure. Stop. Our, our job is to find the truth. And what do you guys actually think at this point? With everything I've said? I think, I, I'll tell you right from, from day one, I think she wanted to die and you helped her. That's what I think happened. The money was just collateral damage. She, you, you, were, you were the one taking care of her. You were the one wiping her, so she, she was taking care of you. And I get that. Because that's hard work. You, you, and she's not one. She, I know she's like family, but it's not your mother. It's not your sister. So she appreciated someone like you being there, sitting watching soaps, chatting with her, We'll see to her problems. And and again, that she wore you down. She wore you down and you you, you broke. And you didn't want to lie to Scott. I did. Because you love him and he's a good guy. And but she wore you down. You didn't want to lie to your mother. And you were carrying too much load, more more than your shoulders could carry. That's what happened. And that day, she decided this was it. That's why the, the, the stuff's pulled out, where the little, little kind of say, hey, I'm going to sort of take this, sort of take that. Lynn had made a decision, and you helped her facilitate it. That's what happened. Amen, that's the truth. And you know it. And it doesn't make you a bad person. It does. <laughs> it doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you something to care about her and love her. And you got out of control. Right? You got out of control. And looking back at it, you feel so bad. Because you know, you know that's not who you are. I know that I'm going to probably go to prison for the rest of my life for helping with she I know she... <laughs> probably, yes. <laughs> probably not for helping her with what she wanted. Just what you wanted. Probably that minor tweak, in my opinion, I'd make there. <laughs> But I just, the way she's leaning into this, they're like, you know what I think? This is what I think. You helped her. And they're selling her this whole story, and she now now the waterworks are there. She wanted it in your house. 
She made a mistake, but she wore you down. She has some culpability because she pressured and pressured and pressured every day for months. I watched my daddy die. Tell me, Christopher, just let me go. What do you say to your father? I get it. She's not a mother to you. Ask She's taking so care of you. Because I went through all this with you guys for days, and I finally, I know it took time, but I finally told you guys. And finally, slide nine. No. Good question. You asked, and Chris answered your question. I didn't. I know I made my, my, my point really clear yesterday. You think they killed her for money? I, I, I am now venturing that this was just what Chris says it was. But I also think that we're 95% of the truth, that we're still missing that 5%. And it's tough because we are getting it bit by bit by bit. We are getting there, but we're still not there. We know 95%. We're still missing. There's still some things that aren't adding up. So I'm going to tell you, this is your last opportunity because if to start later on, you decide you want to talk, you want to, you want to tell us the last 5%, this is the chance because, again, we, talk, we talked about appearances and how it looks later on when it's this and it's that and it's changed. This is it. This is the time to talk about that last 5% that we need to know because later on, again, it's going to look different. Okay. So is there anything else that you want to tell us? Is there anything else about that scene, about that morning? I can honestly say I did not crush those pills that day for her. I left with the plate of pills that she was supposed to take. That I can say. You I knew did that not... morning when this was her plan. She knew her talk about it. So I don't want to say I knew it was her plan because it's been her plan. Mm -hmm. So I'm being 100% I honest, gotcha. I, I did not think I was going to come to find her like this. She was she pulling stuff out like this for a reason, and you knew it. She's been pulling that out, though, because when we went to the hospital, she had that with us, because that was for the hospital. I mean, there are other stuff that she pulled yep. out, did you know? She always did. She always said, this is where okay. this is, this is where this is. That is a huge red flag. She's like, you know that will and testament are typed up for her? We had that at the hospital. And remember she told Scott, her boyfriend at the time, now ex-boyfriend, and his ex-wife, that she she was mad. And she said Lynn was mad that they resuscitated her. I really think that, that was the first attempt at murdering her. <laughs> because she, she took all the paperwork with her. She was ready. Make sure, she told me that for the last six months. Where all her stuff is to know and have ready. And, My boss um, was going to knock on the door here real quick. Because we had two, two dead bodies in two or three days. He wants this done a half hour yeah. ago. You gotta lay it out. Yeah. That morning you talked, you knew what your plan was. Yeah. I've known it for months. And when you gave her that bottle, you were sick inside. I was sick inside, but I didn't that think I'd this, find her. This, this was kind of gonna because I. She it was a good her. possibility this was gonna happen. Yes. Because she was done. Yep. And you knew that. But I, I can honestly say I did not know I was. And I was killed because the, the personal you representative around the that way. afternoon. You was still spinning in your head. That you thought, I'm going to go back there, she might be dead. And you couldn't tell him, because no. he's too good of a person. But, no. And you feel horrible. But, you feel horrible about all this. Her last will at the house had the Anthony and my mom on it. The last will that was at the house, just so you guys know, because you probably found it. Mm -hmm. It was there. I yeah, yeah. That last one at the house with my mom's name and Anthony's on, that one is at the house. But there's this other one, the new one I typed up for her. Yeah, I had that with us when we went to the hospital. Like, okay. Yes, Jesse, keep talking. Keep talking. Sarah D, 1987, thank you for being a member for 18 months. You said it feels like only five minutes ago when I first found your streams of videos. Looking forward to many more months and years of membership. Oh, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I, I did not know that. I want that. No, my mom knew it too. One, that so. you, were, you tried to help her. She, she was done. She was in such pain, in such misery, and you did what you thought was right. It's that simple. You did what you thought was right. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you feel horrible about it. I don't even want to say it was right. I said what she wanted because she wanted it. But she resisted a bunch of times oh, before, and then she wore you down, and this time this was it. If she I would have thought this was right, I wouldn't have pulled the trigger and just shot her. You can't do that. Do You're that. not that person. You're not that person. 
Detective, shortly after, um, is this interview then concluded? Yes, it is. Is that the last time that you spoke with Ms. Kroszewski? No, it is not. Okay. Um, I want to ask you, I want to go back and ask a couple questions about interrogation techniques. Uh, have you received training specific to interrogation techniques? Yes, I have. And we can take down the publish, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, Attorney Nikolai, did you turn your lapel mic back on? Yes. Okay. But, so Nom Fix says, if Jesse had power of attorney, could she have been the one that told the doctors put a do not resuscitate on Lynn? I don't think there was a do not resuscitate order because otherwise the hospital would have honored that. And I think from, they said from when Lynn was in the hospital for 13 days, already within the first day, all her levels were showing improvements, which seems to me like, oh, if I had to just think, you know, and say an opinion here for a second, I'd be like, oh, so the poisoning stopped and then you were in the hospital recovering. But Jesse was ready for whatever happened, it seems. And I mean, Lynn left the hospital on September 28th and she died on October 3rd. So she must have been given more of Icene. Just checking. Could you give the jury an example of some different types of techniques that are taught to investigators for interrogation purposes, just generally? There's several different techniques um, about gaining rapport uh, with someone you're trying to interview. Um, obviously, you want a second person in there uh, to in with the interview, and sometimes you are you're you are taught, and it's. A common factor that sometimes you use techniques. Every every investigator uses different techniques, but there are trained ones where you uh, provide information. Again, maybe uh, not misleading, but not correct information. It's uh, hard to say. It's it's an absolute out, outright lie. But um, you know, there is different techniques that are used during interrogations. And when you said building rapport, would that sometimes include? sympathizing or empathizing with a suspect very much so does that is that a technique you sometimes use my preferred yes you obviously want to gain a rapport with anybody you're talking to um, especially when you're doing an interrogation does that mean that sometimes you're sympathizing with someone and and you don't actually feel that way Yes, sometimes you agree to things that you may actually be disagreeing with. And when I talked about that earlier, that's where, again, you're not trying to mislead or lie, but, um, again, agreeing with them at the time is gaining that rapport or gaining that trust, uh, unfortunately. Yes, now camera, pan to her face, because we want to see. <laughs> I want to see what she looks like. Yeah, you were played. What was she thinking? Oh, my word. Uh, also, happy birthday to Jojo Rising. So it's your birthday today and Maurice as well. Happy birthday to both of you. Now, you said that you actually spoke with Ms. Kroszewski again. Yes. Was that the next day on the 12th of July? I believe so, yes. So just so that the jury is recalling what we've done so far last week, we began with Exhibit 202, and was that July 9th of 2019? Correct. And so that first interview, was that the same day as the search warrants? Yes, it was. Okay. Exhibit 203, um, what date was that? July 10th. And then Exhibit 204 that we just watched, what day was that? July 11th. So, so far we've been consecutive days. Correct. Okay. Uh, I'd like to show just the witness exhibit 205. And detective, let me know when that's on your screen. It is on my screen. And in terms of the title page, does that look familiar to you? Yes, it is. <laughs> and looking at the slides briefly, do you believe you recognize those still images? Yes. What is Exhibit 205? Portions of the interview conducted with uh, Ms. Krzyzewski on July 12th, 2019. Okay. Why did this interview occur? I believe, again, we were requested to speak with uh, Ms. Krzyzewski. 
And did you honor that request? Yes, we did. <clears throat> Have you seen all the clips before? Yes, I have. Are they fair and accurate clips of the interview that you participated in? Now. Yes, it is. I'd move Exhibit 205 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 205 is received, permission to publish is granted. And detective, similarly to the other video exhibits we've had, does this title page indicate the date of the interview? Yes, it does. Okay. A video that she recorded and phone conversations, or not phone conversations, um, talking conversations and papers that she had signed that when she was first like going through some stuff, I also do have some bottles of Visine with dates on them. And I do have that partial gun. I don't have any bullets, I don't have the bomb that fires it. And this is all a safekeeping that Lynn actually held on to and I added to in case something ever happened. I didn't want to tell you guys until I talked to an attorney because that's my biggest thing is I want to talk to somebody um, because I don't know what to do going forward. And my mom goes, well, didn't they find it? I said, no, it's not at the house. My mom doesn't know where it is. She doesn't know anything. Okay, so with that being said, mm -hmm. you, you just made a comment. You yep. said you wanted, you wanted an attorney. Uh, let's, I, I let's, let's, still talk. Uh, okay, I, was like, I, I need to clarify. Yeah. Remember, Jesse, yeah. at any time you, yeah. you decide you, yeah. you don't want to talk to us any further and you want an attorney, you yeah. can end this, okay? So I with, I, right, you still I, understand I, your yeah. rights and you still want to I, keep I, I, talking yeah. to us, okay? Is that, is yes. that true? Correct. Okay, remember. My, no, I, that's why I'm letting you know. Um, I have put it off um, because I was hoping she would have been here, sir. I kind of, my, where I'm at right now, and this is why I want to talk to you guys because I don't know how to handle it or without being able to talk to her, don't know if you guys can interfere. She's super cheerful now, isn't she? The 12th, so this is the next day now. From what we just saw before with the crocodile tears, this is now the next day. You're talked, but I don't know how it works. Basically, this is where I'm at, is I know that something's going to happen, obviously. I know you guys are still looking into stuff. Um, I know. And slide three, please. He <clears throat> says, but I, I feel like I have been very, yes, I went back and forth with you guys, but I feel like now you guys know the most. I feel like I still don't know. You guys are still digging into stuff and I don't know what, I don't really know why. Um, because, you know, you guys said, well, the medical examiner said this. And something Detective Cole said to me yesterday caught me wrong at the end of the interview. And he kept saying, oh, I think you did it for this. And at the end of the interview, he made me feel like he was saying, you're a murderer. That's honestly how I felt. So I went, I'm getting two different sides here. I don't know if you guys are playing, like, the good cop, bad cop. I always watch cop shows and see too much. I'm telling you, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we can love to. He's laughing. He's like, oh, man. It's like, are you guys playing good cop, bad cop? What's going on here? Because you're making me feel like a murderer. Okay. <laughs> Ironically, that's what you have been charged with. Ironically, Lynn's death was a homicide. Her autopsy showed it. So, interesting. Brian W., thank you so much for your $10 super chat. Really, really appreciate it. And for being a member as well. Yes, yeah, steel guitar. Uh, Jesse... <laughs> She can cry one minute, she can laugh the next. Although this is the next day, but we've seen that before, yes. <laughs> KG Constrictor says, hey, Jesse, yes, you're going to prison forever. <laughs> we shall see what the jury comes back with, but it seems it seems pretty bad, right? <laughs> yeah, and Gio, do I say coupe or coupe? You said she thinks, she still thinks she can schmooze the interrogator. <laughs> and the interrogator's just like, okay then. She's like, yeah, watch a lot of cop shows. Maybe you should watch. Don't, don't. We, let's not give her tips. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. Over the three, I, I, over the three I, interviews, I, I don't think we were either. I, I mean, yeah, he. he, he I got don't a little, know what to feel about any of this right now. We, and weren't, playing, we weren't, weren't playing that though, Jesse. I mean, I don't, what, were we? I, mean, well, I, I know he got a little, he got a little animated <laughs> yesterday, but I mean, for I the most part, we weren't dicks to you, were we? No, I'm not saying that. I just don't know at this point where to feel like things are. I don't know. I don't know what to think next because. I'm not getting anywhere. Do you know what I mean? No, like, I, I don't. So I don't. I used to work for a law firm. It's an interesting way of. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's such a weird little accent suddenly coming out of nowhere, and just like I just, I just feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Ah, your manipulation tactics are not working. You feel like you're not getting the results you want.
People are not buying all your ever-changing stories. So you want to know, what do they know? <laughs> Where are we at? So I'm not saying I'm done talking. I just don't know when's enough to be like, okay, I need to talk to somebody because I'm facing some serious charges. You know, that's where I'm at. I don't know because I'm getting it both ways. I'm getting, well, I see it looking like this. Well, obviously you guys don't know what the DA is going to do. Mm -hmm. But then you guys are like, well, we're still looking into this. So I don't know what I'm supposed to Well, we're to still looking into the entire investigation, Jesse. I mean, it's not just... This isn't, you know, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, or wife. She pissed me off, and I, she, you know, she, she, she told me she was cooking dinner. She didn't, and I shot her. It's, it's not cut, cut and dry like that. There is so many different components to this. And, you know, yesterday, I think, I, I think we're 90, 95%. I think we're all on the same page as far as, you know, what, what happened. I still think there's some loose ends that we have to tie up and okay. it would be nice to tie up but now you're coming forward you're saying I have this this and that that might help me yeah. and that's the part where it boggles the mind of Ooh. if something's going to help you yeah. Jesse why aren't we looking at this why aren't you giving this because the reality is you knew you were giving Lynn I mean something that had mm -hmm. six bottles of Visine in it but I also wasn't giving it to her without her knowing that either. That's where I think I feel like now you guys are going, did she know? But, did here's, she know? but here's the part. So you want us, because we can't ask Lynn that question anymore. And you want us to trust you and believe yeah. that you're telling us that and yeah. saying, hey, detective, I swear to you, Lynn knew she was getting that. Yeah. But what are we supposed to think? when Tuesday's a different story, Wednesday's a different story, Thursday's a different story, and now come Friday, I have stuff that can help me, but I don't want to. That's where I'm telling you the perception of what are we supposed to think when it hasn't been as... All right, guys. Okay, so <laughs> I can see you guys are lurking <laughs> on the current day and on what we're watching, okay? So might as well break it to you that, yes, the state has rested their case. So now it would be the defense's turn to present their case and I'm eager to see if they're even going to do that. Are they going to bring Jesse's ex-boyfriend back on the stand because he's the only witness they wouldn't release from his subpoena? Or are they also just going to say they don't... Or is Jesse going to take the stand? Ooh. Either way, that's the bridge we'll cross tomorrow. I'll keep an eye on it though. And for those of you in the courtroom, thank you so much. Um, we don't really want spoilers right now because we're watching this together and we want to focus and, you know, honor this day here. But if there's anything big that happens, like, okay, the defense is, they've also rested their case and now the jury has gone off to deliberate, you let me know. Because then maybe we'll just jump right into day 11 and, and see verdict watch. But I think the defense will probably present the case, in my opinion. I'm not sure. We'll have a look. Mama Bear says, this is bothering me as a certified caregiver. You can't force a client to do anything, but you can prevent any form of self-harm. Love you, G. Thank you so much, Mama Bear, and you're so right. <laughs> yeah, this would be the opposite of caregiving, right? Especially while spending all her money at the same time. Okay, so we're continuing on. We're about an hour into about three hours of footage that we're going to be watching together today. Here's what happened. We're not getting that. So help me... <laughs> believe me when you're telling me that, Jesse, and that's why I'm telling you. Would it be easy enough? Okay, Jesse said she gave her six uh, a bottle of water with six visines, and here you go, Judge, District Attorney, let's charge her a first degree homicide. You would have been in intake court yeah. today. Your face would have been all over the news, yeah. but we're not doing that. Yeah. Here we are. We're sitting. We're still trying to talk. We're still trying to figure yeah. it out. So, you know, I mean, help, help me out here, Jesse. I, I, help me. Trust me. I. I... And slide four. When did she drink the vodka? The night before. The night before. So and the night was, before she died. And you know, I thought of this because I don't think I clarified it very well. She had two, it was roughly, I'm going to say somewhere between like three and five. I don't know my exact time I was there. I saw my saw mom's. I'm not good with times. You can check on my phone. I'm not lying. I was there. I just don't know for sure. Is it early afternoon wise? And she drinks, they're like about this tall and about, I don't know, like that. 
That's, that was very straight from vodka. But it wasn't straight vodka. I want to clarify that because I don't think I said that. And he's like, well, she couldn't have drank that much that quick. She never drank straight vodka. It was always vodka water. My mom knows that too. Um, but I want to clarify that because I don't think I said that. And I wanted to make that sure that was said. So vodka water, Vice? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so when she put it in the, when she put it, you're saying still saying she yeah. put it in? I'm still saying she put it okay. in. I was not there when she did that. I was not there. I came back and the bottles were empty. These were two, three days prior when okay. I came back and the bottles were empty and I asked her where they were. She's back to, <laughs> uh, by the way, in the poll I've just made, I wish I had five options. I wish it could have been, what do you think the jury's verdict will be? Of course, now the defense still has to present their case. So we're not at verdict watch yet, but not guilty or hung jury or guilty on all counts, guilty of murder and not uh, the theft is what I mean, or guilty of felony theft and not murder. That's what I can put on for options for now. So cast your votes. Would she have, do you think she would have put it in a bottle of vodka? I mean, was it the big Fleischmann's bottle? It's or was a it big bottle, bottle, but there was only about, I want to say, uh, not a lot. Okay. So would yeah. she have put it in there or would she have put it in her glass? Of no, vodka? she would have put it in the bottle. Yeah, Usually she put the stuff in the bottles. Yeah. Okay. So the water. Are you there when she puts it in the no. water? No. I was not there when she put it in either or. I have before, but not this time. Okay. And I know when she puts it in the water, I usually could tell because of the top. Usually. But she got used to me throwing those ones out on her. And when you when you say that, can you describe how, what do you well, mean by you that? Well, because you know when you on cap, uh, I don't know. When you on cap, you can generally know yeah. this. Okay. Because after she passed, my mom went to grab water out of the fridge, too, and like days later, and I said, don't grab anything, because I just don't trust the bottles anymore. I got to the point where I threw out everything, so. And the one thing my mom did ask. You got to the point where you threw out all the bottles because you just don't trust them anymore, but yet, ta-da, on the day, there's a bottle that you pointed to. That doesn't make any sense. By the way, uh, before you guys vote, some of you already have, but just remember she's facing three charges. First degree murder and two counts of felony theft. It's two counts because they vary. One is, I think, from zero to ten thousand dollars and the other one is from like ten to a hundred thousand. We've looked at those before. So when I say guilty on all counts, I mean first degree murder and the two felony theft charges for the money she stole from Lynn or just guilty of murder or guilty of just the felony theft, not the murder. That's what's on the poll they put out. Out of curiosity, Regardless of how she looked, how come that water bottle and the stuff around her, her blanket and things like that, how come that wasn't taken? Because at the time, it didn't, there was nothing suspicious. Okay. You know, we didn't think. I was just curious myself because I was like, even the blanket, I'm like, I remember that was there. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'll, hey, Jesse, when we get a call from medical examiner yeah. saying that there's a problem because it's not what it looks like yeah. that day, trust me, it threw everybody for a loop. Yeah. And when you talk about time of the investigation, that's why it took so long yeah. because clearly... You know, sometimes we, we sometimes we tend to do that as cops. You know, yeah. we go to a scene, and sometimes we go overkill. But we do when we do it, we do it for that reason because you can never go back. And this is one of those ones where you well, wish you had that time yeah, machine and you go back. Yeah. yeah. So um, we we didn't, and you know, yeah. unfortunately, we were kind of starting from behind the eight ball on this one. Um, I do want to clarify something else too, but if you want to keep going, then no, go ahead and clarify. Um, as far as the that paper, mm -hmm. I did again. I brought that up today because it was bothering me. That is a living will. That is not her. And I really want to clarify that because I know I was with her when we signed that, and that was purposely for medical purposes and for her lockbox. And that really bothered me because I went, I really didn't. And my mom and the attorney actually. Have you guys talked to the attorney at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, the attorney can attest to that because we called her together. And said Lynn passed away, whatever, so forth, because we had, Lynn gave us everything. This is what you do, this is what, I mean, she was good about that. It's just like those papers that were all, she was always had everything ready. But um, I did not know she changed her will. And I really don't. I didn't know I was a personal rep, and I wasn't even on the will before. It was my mom. You created the will, don't even lie. <laughs> you said you typed that one up there, that one, I typed that, I helped her type that up. What about the others? Also, thank you, Jinxie. Really appreciate it. And Maxine says she's questioning the cop. 
Yeah, she's like, so, about your investigation. It seems flawed. Why didn't you take the blanket and the bottle that day? She's literally questioning the cop now. She changed... Detective, in that clip, Ms. Krzyzewski asked you why certain things weren't collected from the scene. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, on October 3rd, 2018... If Ms. Krzyzewski would have said to anyone from law enforcement that water bottle was full of Izine, would it have been collected? Yes, very much so. Hold on, there's been an objection. Object to speculation as to what other people would have done. Sustained. Uh, Jerry will disregard the answer he attempted to provide. Look at his face. And slide five, please. But I did not, and I, that really bothered me because the financial aspect, I know you guys keep going back to that, but if you talk to the attorney, she knows too, because that was one thing I wanted to do too if I got out, was ask her when that was changed, and she can verify that I didn't know either because of when I called. My mom actually said, I'm calling, blah, 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 and she was actually, I need to talk to Jesse, not you. So. Who we'll let the proceeds from the house sale? The they were split. Between who? Me and Anthony. I mean, the majority went to creditors, so. Okay. I didn't know if you guys had talked to the attorney or dealt with any of that or. No, I mean, yeah, that's all to do in the future here. <laughs> um, first things first was trying to clarify. Everything. Well, no, because we have a claim hitting probate, coming back to probate right now, and everything's been settled. So I thought maybe you guys were into that too, so I didn't know. Okay. No, I mean, we know you were at the probate, yeah. Yeah. But. Um, and honestly, after all the credit cards, between me and Anthony, it was 1300 or 13000 Sorry, I said that wrong. 13000 yeah. yeah. Profit. Yes. After the creditors. And now we have more creditors still coming in. It was closed, but they're reopening. And that's just because we couldn't keep up with everything that there was. They had their time frame. I had what we were getting forwarded as far as mail and stuff. I knew of majority, but I didn't obviously know every single thing. I mean, she had multiple credit cards from the same company that I wasn't even aware of. Like, I think she had like four, four to, no, seven all from the same company, but some were. That was you. <laughs> that was all Jessie. She took out all those credit cards in Lynn's name. She just lies about Lynn so much. Under different names, like Capital One lies. So, I mean, she had insane, I've never seen somebody with that many credit cards, I'll be honest. I mean, never. Never. <laughs> Even the attorney said that. <laughs> and I do want to clarify, too, because I know you guys are looking at financial. I did not open anything after she passed away. Nothing. So I don't know. Another blatant lie. Nothing. Don't open a damn thing. Oh, you just continue to use her Gmail account and we heard the calls. Yes, you did. If you can lie like that about the money stuff that we've seen the evidence of, Sure, this one can really lie with a straight face and then also <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Where that's coming from, but I know that for a fact. I did not touch anything. We never keep it okay after she died. No. Oh, that's what I thought you guys said yesterday. And I was like, I did not. Anything I did was with her while she was alive. I didn't do anything without her. All right. Can you uh, give me two minutes of water? By Dean Korea. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Bad joke. I'm a, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> the snark tank is filling up. <laughs> He's like, by Dean Korea, of course. She's like, Ooh, of course, please. Oh, she can joke about it quite well, huh? Someone. She supposedly loved and took care of died from visine poisoning, but when they joke about visine water. Sure. Detective, the end of that clip had a comment from you in it. Yes. Why did you say that? I wanted to see her rea I wanted to see Miss Krzyzewski's reaction. To me, I was questioning how serious she was taking this, and I, wa I was gauging, wanted to see what she would do. What did she do? Laughed. <clears throat> Moving to slide six, please. <clears throat> I 
let's get back yeah. to this whole thing. So let's go over some. I know yeah. Chris told you sit there and said, this guy thinks that he murdered, you murdered her for money. Okay, we talked about yesterday, all right? Um, now you're saying that you have evidence that can validate your claim that Lynn was trying to hurt herself yes. and that she basically was enlisting your help oh. to do that. Yes. Now you're saying that you have evidence of that. Explain to me why that you're whole that you're so against showing us. I'm that. not against it. Um, I just am not ready yet. That's what it is. I'm not against it. I'm really not. Um, I <laughs> I'm not against it. I'm really not. I'm just not ready right now. <laughs> um, yeah, Denny Dawn said, I don't think that her mom's going to be called during the defense. I wonder. <laughs> Pistol Emmy says, your sarcastic impression of her awful laugh. <laughs> oh man, I don't know how she thinks she's gonna manipulate the cops that way. And really, they're just playing her. They're like, let's see if I make this joke, what she'll do. And she's like, ah, ha, ha, no, no, no vaccine for me. Oh wow. Okay then. Joanne Hendricks, uh, you say all your hard work is so appreciated. You are amazing. This case is so sad and appalling. Love to all affected. Yes. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I just don't know. I guess I don't, I'm not ready yet. And it was something I thought the other day, and it's just because I realistically, that's the point where I want to talk to somebody, and I want to have a better idea of my options with them, because I don't know where things stand right now. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's not that I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to just hang on to it forever. Or I'm not, I'm not, that's not my plan at all, obviously. But I just, at this point, I don't know where I stand as far as the legal process or how things work. I don't know enough knowledge, I guess. Is there anything that I can help clarify with you where you're at? Detective, at the beginning of this interview, the first clip kind of cuts in and, and Ms. Krzyzewski is already talking and listing some things. Do you remember that? Yes. Like gun parts and Visine bottles. Do you remember Correct. that? Yes, I do. And in this clip, you just reference something that that Ms. Krzyzewski has. Can you clarify to the jury what you're discussing? Uh, the same items uh, that she discussed, including, I believe it was some tapes as well, and uh, writings, and trying to see if uh, she'd be willing to present those for us, which would indicate that Ms. Hernan, Ms. Krzyzewski alleged that these would indicate that Ms. Hernan, Hernan was suicidal. In any portion the jury hasn't viewed, does Ms. Krzyzewski tell you where those items are? Okay, not at this point? Not at this point, no. Okay. <clears throat> Moving to slide seven. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, is there, do you have a dead body in a storage shed? Is there something, is there, some, no. is there a body in there? It, for me, it's that the legality of things right now is I, I've been able to talk to you guys, mm -hmm. but I haven't been able to talk to anybody else. That's hard for me is I need, you guys are doing your side of the job. Mm -hmm. I need somebody on the other side, like an attorney, not saying for questioning, but I need to know. Again, so, guess, you're, again, you're, again, so yes, you're, you're not talking. invoking your no, rights, correct? No, no, okay. Not. Every time you say I know, that, and I'm that's why I don't want to keep saying it in I, that sense. But because that's it's, why. the case is important to yeah. me, Jesse. But in the same aspect, I understand your rights. I respect yeah. the fact that people have their rights. So if again, and at that's any why time, I'm still talking. You, okay, at I any mean, time I, you feel that you're in, you're in too deep or this or that, you let me know, okay? Because I'm not going to. I don't want you to do that. And I guess that's my biggest thing. I don't want to. I guess waste your time talking on that right now because that's what's holding me back right now is not being able to talk to an attorney about it. Anything else, I have no problem answering questions or doing, but I just... But you do have, you do have the ability to contact one. I mean, I in, the jail, in the jail, you can make a phone call. Yeah, but I don't have anybody, like, in my... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like... I mean, my mom's looking. She just started today. You know, but it's... I don't want to say it's thrown out the window. Why would, if, you don't want, if you don't want us to see this, if you don't want us to talk about it, if you don't yeah. want us, then, then why even bring it up, Jesse? Why, why say that there's this stuff hanging? Because well, and that's why I you, 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 said, you, said the, you said the payment's overdue, right? You said the payment's yeah. coming up due. Yeah. You know those places don't wait long. They're going to get rid of your shit. They're going to get rid of it in a hurry. They're going to get rid of it. So why risk losing something that could help you? 
At this the, point, the, the at reality point, is, Jesse, yeah. you're, you know yeah. that this is a serious investigation. Yeah, I do. And I think I just need a few days on it. That's where I'm at with that. I'm willing to answer and do anything because that's what I want to do right now. But this I'm just sitting on right now. And it's just something that I just feel I want to. I, I don't have the best answer except that I want to talk to somebody else about it. That's the only thing I can honestly say because it's true. So you just want to ask somebody about the storage issue? Yeah. Okay. So I want to talk to you about the phone stuff a yes. little bit more, okay? I was going to ask you that too. Everything you guys did take, mm -hmm. eventually do we get that back? Or I don't even know what you all took. I'm just, I know the phones, obviously. Does that ever anything about any anything that holds evidentiary value? We're going to keep. Okay. Okay. So I'm assuming you guys took my laptop, right? Yes. I mean, it's brand new, so there's nothing yeah. on there, so yeah. I'm not worried. But no, we, just ask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, all electronics okay. we took. Your cell phone. Yes. <laughs> she just said, "I'm assuming you took my laptop. I mean, it's brand new. There's nothing on there, so I'm not worried. But you took that, right? I mean." Great statement to make in a police interview when you're now on day, this is like a fourth interview. She got arrested on the ninth. We were able to recover a lot of deleted stuff. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it is good. It is good, <laughs> Because I knew there was a lot deleted, so that's what yeah. I was hoping that. <laughs> so, what, what was... <laughs> no, you weren't. Because when they show what she deleted, it's her looking up household poisons and all sorts of crap. So her laughing and saying, it's good. It's really good that you discovered those deleted things because I knew you would. So it's great. I'm happy about that. No, you're not happy about that. Julie S. Welcome to Grizzly Supporter. For everyone joining membership today, I hope that you will check out the members only playlist. You could also find the member streams on the community tab. Check them out and uh, we'll have another one soon. Some of why would you have been re researching certain poisons? I wasn't. That was her. That's what I said she was doing. She was looking at any options. And I said that. She looked at the pill. She looked at, I mean, I know some of it. I don't remember all of it. But she looked at different options. She looked at a lot of different options. Okay. But there were some recent searches. Recent? Yeah, like in June of 2019. For what? Some recent poison. I don't know on that one. Oh. It wasn't poison that she had used, or was it? I don't think so. Then I don't know. <laughs> I really don't on that one. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd be honest, I don't on that one. Why would I have looked for it recent? All right, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> you tell me. I mean, I'll be honest. We do. I told you, we watch a lot of, um, like, the live PD and stuff, so we look up a lot of, like, random things off of there that we see, but I don't see me looking up a poison. That's why I'm like, I don't know on that one. And in June, that's even more odd, so. Mm, how odd that that there was a PDF document looking up poisons. I mean, she also, I think she thought she was a bit smart putting it on like a PDF. <laughs> anyway, but looking up poisons, household poisons, cyanide, all sorts, you know. All kinds of weird searches that they're going to show us in June. And she's like, that's a bit odd. Yeah, that was all then. I mean, she had a flip phone, didn't like tech. But you know what she did? She used my phone. That's Jessie's story. She used her phone on her data to do those searches. Yes, when her caretaker was there, she'd be like, hey, can I use your phone? Thanks. And then just start typing up PDFs of household poisons. Because that makes sense, right? Yeah. A little concerning. I mean, I'm not trying to poison myself, if that's what you think. No, no, I, I don't think you're going to poison yourself. I mean, you had that opportunity long ago, right? Yeah, plenty of times. Okay. So what do you think about the whole situation, Jesse? Let me ask you. I think it's a mess. I think it's all a big mess. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I knew things I know now differently than then, or I wish I would have reached out or gone a lot different, I guess, is where I'm at. Like what? <laughs> Gotten more help, asked for more help, <clears throat> not helped her. I mean, a lot of things. <laughs> if I could go back in history, I wouldn't be sitting here, I'll tell you that. That's not the truth.
<laughs> we, we believe you. You would have chosen one of the other methods that you researched, isn't it? Sounds about right. Now, you've heard me talk, I've kind of beaten it to death here, um, about the perception issue. Yeah. You know, that's why we talk, we stress the importance of talk, telling the truth the, the yeah. first time, from the get-go, or even the second time, okay? <laughs> well, telling the first time is better. The first time is better, <laughs> but the second time is a, is, is a key one, because now that third time and now today, you know, so it's like, nope, never saw the Visine. Oh, nope, yes, there was Visine. Never drank it, never, never saw it. Yeah, I put some in there one time, um, you know, but then nope, didn't know about this, or there was no way because it was in there. They, oh, yeah, okay, and then there were six bottles in there. So, and now we hear the storage shed stuff, and it, it just, Jesse, whether you believe it or not, I don't want to sit here and I don't want to jack you up on these charges. I don't want to sit here and charge you with something that, you know, doesn't fit. Yeah. So I, I can't stress enough that if there's something that says, because helping out, some, helping somebody... is a lot different than actually doing that yourself. Correct. Yeah. 100%. So... That's what, that's what... I thought of this today, too, and I thought, you guys didn't take her phone either. Her cell phone. No. And I thought of that after the fact, too, and I'm like, I don't know if there would have been anything because she couldn't internet search on there. But she used that phone numerous times when she called people prior, like when she was first getting her pills and things of that nature, when she was looking at other options that I didn't have access to. Um, but I did think of that, too. I thought, I was just trying to think of any. Honestly, why I've been sitting here, I've been racking my brain with everything possible. So that's kind of where I'm at. There was a lot of things that she said and done over such a big time frame that I just wish I had. I don't know, more information. So I wish I had more information, Jesse. I really do. Did your mom know that she was drinking the Visine again? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Drinking the Visine? Yeah. Or no. She knew about the gun. No, she didn't know anything. She's like, oh, no, 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 no. Drinking the Visine or what was the or going to be? Or what? Drinking was the first word. Drinking the Visine or the? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, wait, she didn't know that. She didn't know that. She knew about the gun. And I worry about what she was going to say there. About the Visine. She knew about the gun. She knew about the pills. Um, and she knew she was suicidal, but she didn't know to what extent. Because my mom, because that was the person she said to, did you tell them about the gun? I said, yes, I did. So I said, I'm sure they'll ask you or they'll want to know something, but I said, you actually knew of that, so. Because she was very frustrated with me with that one. Your mom was? Yeah. And that's because my mom looks out. She loves Lynn, but she's going to look out for me, obviously, before Lynn, because, you know, only makes sense, obviously. Well, at this point, everybody should be looking out for themselves. I mean, you know, you should be worrying about number one for you, and that's you, and that's your future. Um, you know, nothing is set in stone right now, but unfortunately, Jesse, you're kind of in a little bit of a quicksand situation here, and I'm trying to offer you a branch here to say, prove to me and Chris and to Mandy well, and, and everyone else yeah. that you're, you're saying you, help, you are trying to help her do this, and you have evidence that's there, Jesse. I, the thing is, is I don't know what extent is there. That's what it is. I don't know how much is there or what is said or what was. I know she always said, you know, that was her biggest thing. I'll be very honest. She said it all the time. When she when she first started her downhill spiral and said, I'm just, I give up. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be sick anymore. When she first started that, she said, one day out of the blue, she said, if I ever ask you for help, would you help me? And I said, what do you mean by that? And she, after, ever since that day, she kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it. And I said, Lynn, that's a lie. <coughs> Detective, in this clip the jury just saw, um, the, the phrase storage shed was utilized a few times. Do you know why? 
Yes. Why is that? By now, we, uh, Ms. Krzyzewski had already stated to us that the items she was referring to earlier <coughs> regarding tapes, visine bottles, and parts of the gun uh, were being held in a storage shed. Did you know where? No, we did not. <clears throat> there was also some discussion about some things that were recovered from Exhibit 168, which is the defendant's cell phone download. Do you recall those questions? Yes, I do. And that some of the items recovered had been deleted? Yes. What did what did Ms. Krzyzewski say about that, that you recovered deleted items? She was glad that we recovered deleted items. Okay. Did she appear to know things had been deleted? Yes, she did. I'd like to please show the witness exhibits 191 through 197. And detective, let me know when you can see those. I can see them. Oh, okay. Do you recognize those documents? Yes, I do. What are they? Uh, they are documents or a file document that was located on the cell phone download for Ms. Krzyzewski. Did you flag these different pages of the download? Yes, I did. Why? I believe based on the titles of the documents that they would be uh, they would have evidentiary value for the case. Okay. Do they look like I'll play it a little bit faster in a moment. Vanessa O says, who do you think the defense will call as witnesses? Gee, I think her ex, but don't know who else. Yes, I also think they're going to call uh, her ex-boyfriend back on the stand. Maybe even, no, they released Anthony Poser, right? So, ex-boyfriend, they might call somebody who will say that Visine is not well documented and hasn't killed many people or something like that, even though they are murder cases, you know, that prove otherwise. Maybe that... And maybe Jessie herself. <laughs> maybe that's the best shot they have to put her on the stand. I'm not sure about that. Let me know in the comments if you are here in the live chat, especially here with us. You can also leave a comment below if you're watching the replay, although you might be watching from the future and then you would know who they called. <laughs> but so if you're in the live chat here with me, who do you think the defense will call as witnesses? Because the state has rested their case, not on this day that we're watching together, it's on day 11, so we'll cross that bridge when we get there tomorrow, um, depending on how it goes as well with the defense. But this trial is said to last about 15 days, so I think we're going to cross the bridge tomorrow. But who will they bring on as witnesses is the question. Do you think? Fair and accurate depictions of pages from the download in this case? Yes. I 1 through 197 into evidence. No objection. Exhibits 191 through 197 are received. Did you ask for permission to publish? Yes, I would ask for permission to publish. And permission to publish granted. Well, will you be going through these now? It is about 10 o'clock, and I'd like to take a break soon. So if, if it takes oh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, then we'll take the break after okay. that. And, Detective, I'm not going to ask you to go line by line through all of these, but if we scroll to the bottom, do you see the exhibit sticker 191? Yes, I do. And if we could please zoom in at line 34, which is the last line on this page. Um, you indicated that these are documents on the phone? Yeah, file, file documents, yes. Okay. In fact, some of them, well, all of them look like they've got a file extension, like a computer file would have? Correct. Okay, what's the... Just look at it. Book matter. Criminal poisoning. Great searches in July. Of 2018 and again beyond Lynn's death it looks like here modified access deleted yep interesting Lynn died on October 3rd of 2018 line 34 2007 book matter criminal poison poisoning PDF and that right farthest right column with the red yes in it do you know what that column is for Yes. And what is that? It shows the file's been deleted. Can you tell when it was deleted? February 19th, 2019. 
And can you tell when it was accessed? July 30th, 2018. Moving to 192, please. If we could please zoom in on line 53. Detective, again, is this another page from Ms. Krotowski's cell phone download? Yes, it is. And could you please read the document in line 53? Acute cyanide poisoning from Jewelry Cleaning Solutions, PDF. Was that a document that had been deleted? Yes, it is. When? June 15th of 2019. Can you tell when the document was accessed? June 15th, 2019 as well. Okay, moving to exhibit 193, if we could please zoom in, lines 85 through 87. Detective, can you please read the document names in lines 85, 86, and 87? Uh, 85 is cyanide.pdf, 86 is cyanide 11303 final PDF, 87 is cyanide background PDF. Were those three items deleted? Yes, they were. And remind the jury how you can tell that? On the right-hand side is the column where it says yes in uh, red lettering. That would uh, be the deleted column. And when was line 85 deleted? February 19th of 2019. Can you tell when it was accessed? July 26, 2018. That's before Lynn died. See, Jenny says, are these her searches? These are PDFs that she downloaded or PDFs that she created. So I think maybe she thought she was smart. Maybe she thought, huh, I can delete the, I don't know, the Google searches, but have these PDFs handy for information. But you could see that what she was looking up on her phone, and she claims that Lynn used her phone to look this stuff up. And, um, so this is what she apparently looked up on her phone and you can see when she deleted it as well. These are all the dates where you can see created, modified, accessed, and deleted. Some were created before Lynn died, many. And then in 2019, right before, about a month before Jesse was arrested, then many of these were deleted. What about line 86? When was that deleted? February 19th, 2019. And when was it accessed? July 26, 2018. And line 87, was that also deleted? Yes, it was. When was that? June 15th, 2019. Is that the same date as when it was accessed? That's correct. Okay. Going to exhibit 194, please, if we could um, zoom in on the top line, 115. Detective, can you read that document name, please? Have an exit strategy for students, 14 chemical suicides, PDF. Was that document deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. Can you tell when it was accessed? July 30th, 2018. What about line 116? What's that document? Hazmat suicide, PDF. Was that also deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? July 29th, 2018. If we could please scroll down and zoom in on lines 120 and 121. Detective, can you please read line 120? Household poisons, PDF. Was that document deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? July 30th, 2018. Could you please read the document in line 121? <clears throat> HPA, sodium, potassium, cyanide, general information, V1, PDF. Was that deleted? Yes, it was. When? June 15th, 2019. When was it accessed? June 15th, 2019. Thank you. And going to exhibit 190. Which is a mic drop. Janet Murphy says, dang, mic drop, because in that police interview, Jesse is implying that Lynn used her phone to make these searches. Then why is it getting accessed? Why are these documents being accessed after Lynn's death? And why are they being deleted a month before she was arrested? That 
that guilty conscience was eating her up huh? <laughs> because she was obviously still looking into these. She was pretending that she got poisoned with Visine. Remember that whole thing in January of 2019? She got arrested on July 9th of 2019. So she deleted this about a month before. Very interesting. Five, if we could please zoom in on line 165. Detective, could you read the document in line 165, please? NRT WMD Chem CHEM Cyanide Salts QRG Final 2017 0217 PDF. Was that PDF deleted? Yes, it was. When? June 15th, 2019. And when was it accessed? June 12th, 2019. Thank you. Moving to Exhibit 196, please, if we could zoom in toward line 192. Detective, could you read that document for the jury, please? Response to Chemical Suicides Webinar. Was that document deleted? Yes, it was. When? June 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? July 30th, 2018. And uh, finally, Exhibit 197, please. Detective, if we could uh, look at line 214, if you could please read that to the jury. Therapeutic effect of arsenic trioxide AS203 on cervical cancer in vitro and in vivo through, oh boy, uh, atopo, atopatosis induction.pdf. Was that item deleted? Yes, it was. When? February 19th, 2019. When was it accessed? August 10th, 2018. Okay, thank you. I'm finished with exhibits 191 through 197. All right, why don't we take our mid-morning break then. I'll rise for the jury. Attorney Nikolai, when you're ready. And we teleport it right through that break. Remember, guys, we are watching day 10. No spoilers, please, from tomorrow, which is I know is live today. If you want to be here for the defluffed version, that's what we're doing. We are skipping through, as you just saw, all the tea breaks, all the lunch breaks, all the paper flapping as much as possible, the long pauses. We're skipping right through that. We're also not going to watch the entire cross-examination today, which is at the end of this footage. It was just really painful. And if you have watched it already, you'll know what I mean. And if you are going to watch what I pin in the comments for you, which is the full defluffed version of this trial day, you'll see what I mean too. It's really, really painful to watch. So I'm not going to put you through that. Um, here and there, this is the beauty of doing a, de a day delay is that we can do that. Sometimes it's just like, man, we're not going to put ourselves through that. So this is day 10 of the trial. I know that currently live right now is day 11 elsewhere. We're doing day 10. We're focusing on this. They're sharing a lot of, in my opinion, evidence today. A lot of things are starting to stack up now really quickly against Jesse. I mean, these searches are very incriminating, and especially with when she deleted them, when she created them, and when she deleted them. So even if she says, I know Lynn, Lynn made those searches, Lynn wasn't tech savvy. She wasn't making PDFs of cyanide searches. Come on. So <laughs> Stefan reminds us there are no <laughs> comfort breaks here. We just teleport right through those. And then we're going to put the full throttle on later as well. So we've watched one hour and 25 minutes of trial footage from day 10 so far today. Remember, it takes me many hours to make this for you. And so I'd really like to focus on day 10 for today, if possible. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to continue to look. They're showing more of these uh, searches. They're showing text messages. They're going to show more of that police interview. And as I said on Friday... Saturday. We saw day, the last day on Saturday, day nine. I just love how the prosecution is, how the state is presenting everything the way they do. A little bit of jail interview and then evidence to show what a lie that is. A little bit more jail interview, more evidence. It's really brilliantly done. They put it together so well and it must have, sure, the hard work that they put into this is amazing. I mean, she's looking really, really tired and defeated. Look at her. Hasn't had a wink of sleep. Wow. Okay, so continuing on. You can, can continue. Thank you, Judge. Detective Happy, before the break, we went over some documents that were in the phone download, right? Correct. When the search warrants in this case were conducted, were there multiple electronics collected? Yes, there were. Uh, including items from Scott Craig's residence? Yes. Was one of those items a laptop? Yes. 
Was that mentioned by Ms. Prochesky in the last clip that we watched of Exhibit 205? Yes, it was. And did you, was there anything significant to you about that laptop in this case? Uh, not, the lap, not the laptop itself, no. Okay, why not? Uh, there was no information uh, relevant to the investigation. Okay. Is that... And Jesse seemed pretty confident about that. She's like, oh yeah, I'm not worried. You got my laptop? I'm not worried. It's new. There's nothing on there. Like, okay, strange things to say. Something that Ms. Krzyzewski relayed to you? Ms. Krzyzewski made a comment during the interview, yes. Okay. Was that significant to you? The comment was significant, yes. Why? Uh, we were talking about the property being returned, and when the laptop came up, uh, her comment was, the laptop's brand new. There's nothing on there. I'm not worried about that. Okay. Why was that significant to you? I didn't, we hadn't asked her anything about the laptop and to make the comment, uh, I'm not, there's nothing on there. I'm not worried about that. That seemed very odd. It is very odd. Yes. I'm not worried. And concerning to me. Okay. Uh, now going back into exhibit 205, I believe we were on slide eight. Madam Clerk, if we could please publish. And for the record, this clip starts at 17, 29, 28 here because I did help her and I should go. Hey, I know that now, obviously. It, for me, it was very hard. How can you watch somebody over and over and over go through this and go through this? And you're there with them. You're helping them. You're trying. I mean, my last poll, I thought for sure when she went to the hospital, we'd finally get somewhere. I really thought. And we did for a little bit. I mean, a few days. And that was the other thing. You guys said the walking. I thought that last thing. She literally... She walked into the hospital. They don't know how. But when we got home, she walked from my car. Now, you've seen my car. You know my car. She And she was used to her car. She couldn't get that high. But my car was lower for her. She got out of my vehicle and walked by herself. She, she did this to stop quite a few times. But walked. You saw her place. It's, you got to go all the way around. There's a step, but she never did the step. And she walked and made it in. That's why when she fell or second or third night. I'm getting, there's just so many days and so much trying to remember back. But when she fell and June helped me, she was coming back from the bathroom and she was going to sit and recline it. That's when she had the bathroom, but she was still getting up because she was trying to walk around as much as she could. And she was bending down and she missed the recliner. So she fell literally right in front of the recliner. Like she just missed it, you know, obviously it wasn't there. So but that's what she said she did. And you could see it. She was sitting in front of the recliner. She just couldn't. She didn't have enough strength to get herself up. So, I mean, she did walk around. I don't want to make it seem like she never did. That was the other thing that I kept thinking is you guys seem like she was completely mobile. She wasn't. She had her good days and her bad days. But she did walk around. And every day she pushed herself, usually to go to the bathroom at least once if she could, because she knew she had to keep moving. Okay. But then it comes back to what we said. It's... It can be explained one way, and when those deputies asked you, you said no for if she was suicidal. I said yes and no. You said yes and no, but then all you said was she really loved her cats, but you didn't say she's asked me to do this. She yeah. did this. She had a gun to her head. Um, you know, looking into investigation then, as compared to how it has now, is two totally yeah. different things. I mean, I think it was a lot harder for me that day to realize that it actually had happened. I think that I'll be very honest. I, I didn't expect it. I did and I didn't. It was one of those things every day you never knew what was going to happen when you came back or when she didn't answer the phone. Was she alive or dead? I don't know how many times I flew out there when she didn't answer the phone thinking, I'm going to find her. I'm going to find her. But you left that day and you, you said you were concerned when you left. I was always concerned, to be honest. It wasn't just that day. It was had, a lot of days. Had she started drinking the water by the time you were getting ready to leave? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Okay. Did you see any effects taking place? No. But she was on and off all morning as it was. No, there was no effects before I left, none whatsoever. I mean, she was a little bit drowsy, but that was always. That wasn't just from that. That was all the time. And she, I would say... Man, she says a lot of incriminating things, huh? Yeah, she was just drowsy that morning. Previously, she said Lynn was fast asleep when she got there. Then they got up, talked a bit. Then Jesse left. Another version was that Lynn 
hurried her out. Another version was that Lynn shouted at her to get out after they fought over the visine bottle. Ooh. By the time I left, she had a few sips of it. I mean, it wasn't anything extreme, but that's usually how she was. Like, even when she drank regular, she would have a few sips, she'd take a break, and then she'd be like, oh, I need to get water on me. So she'd chug some, and she'd sip some, chug some. So, I mean, before I left, she only had a very little bit. How full was it? It was a full one. It was yeah. completely full? Yeah. Okay. So she would have poured out the water, and you said she mm -hmm. did that two days prior? Was that it? I threw out the stuff three days prior, so I had it three days before. So, he, so you before. were there when she put it in? No, I was not. So what do you mean you threw the stuff I I came back the next day when I came back. So the, she had to do this actually four days, because three days before is when I came back and emptied everything out. And I, that's when I said to her, I said, where are all, where did these all go? And then she had a bunch of waters and stuff, and I always took out the garbage. So that was just part of my routine with the cat litter or the garbage. And I said, where did they all go? And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, she always did, because she didn't want me knowing. And I knew she put them in her water a lot. Vodka she did on occasion. Not, not extreme, but on occasion. And she liked it more, she said, with the vodka. I don't know why. She said it was a different feeling. Um, other than that, I don't know. But What did you put it in? What did I put it in? Yeah, well, the yours. one time I no, did no, it? No, no, no. Oh, mine? You did it to I didn't put it in anything. I thought you said you did. No. You just drank it straight out yeah. of the bottle? No. What did it taste like? Kind of oily. It was? It, it smelled like, I guess, and I don't even have context. I just know because I've been around people that do. Like, the context solution. That's what it smelled like. Okay. But I should say, it was just kind of like a slimer. It was different than water. You could, I could know what's the difference. You said it before that there was uh, that you got rid of all those bottles, right? You threw them away in the trash. Yep. Okay. So in the storage shed, there's visine bottles. Why would there be visine bottles in the storage shed? I have some with certain dates on them that she had taken them. Okay. Why would there be dates on them? She dated them. She dated them. Mm -hmm. Why would she date them? She did certain things where if something happened, there would be a way to come back and show she was taking a prior or so forth. What dates would be on these? They would be dates from the last, I'd say, month and a half, two months. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, my release is oily. It's water-based. I'm not going to check, though. Yeah, please don't check. No one try Visine. It's very toxic. Very. Okay. You'll see some comments here and they'll be like, hmm, I'm going to, don't test it, don't check it out. Look after your health as best you can, always. Okay, so, Jesse is saying that Lynn dated the Visine bottles so that if she, if something happened and then she came back, then she could tell people that she'd been taking it before. Yeah, right. How many bottles? Roughly, maybe about 20, or give or take. I know she had, um, she had set them aside and then they were just gone because she had like a pile of stuff. Um, she had pills in there and those ended up gone. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I could swear there was something. Oh, the gun. I took the gun, but it's not, I took it apart. It's just two pieces. It's not, there's no bullets. You can't use it for anything where, where it's how it's sitting. But I wanted something, when she started making her pile of stuff, I wanted something so I could come back and say, okay, it's not just me that has a pile of stuff. She had a pile of things and I want something to show. She really did order this. I have the receipts of that. And I have, um, receipt is something else. And it has like all her shipping information, all her everything. Was it her credit card you guys used about yep. it? Yeah, because she even talked to the lady. Because it had to be shipped to the same address that matched because it's a certain product. I don't know how to word it. Like, they don't consider it a firearm because it's not a together. But she said something, I remember playing this day, and I can't remember the wording, but she said, well, it has to go, and she's like, well, that's fine, it's coming to my house anyway. But 
that was like one of the things the lady I remember the question I really can't stand her impressions of Lynn it's very disrespectful uh, Karen Kennedy says Jesse sounds so angry and frustrated talking about Lynn not dying all the symptoms she faced and not dying seems so right I mean <laughs> It's quite telling how she says it. And you say, Jesse was thinking, hurry up and die already. I mean, it almost comes across that way. Talking with her. So, you know, I, I know basics about yeah. that stuff, but just, I guess I... I never know I, 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 I didn't know you could buy, like, part. I would have figured that they would have done some kind of background check either way. So, they're, so yeah. what, they, they can get away with it because it's not put because together, it's so not, it's not yep. technically a functioning firearm? Yep. So no and background, she you literally order. researched this and found two companies, and she wanted one that did like next day or three day or something, and they ship it immediately. Detective, did you do follow up on the story about these two firearms? Yes, we did. Did did you have some assistance from other people on the investigative team? Yes. Uh, were there specific detectives at that time working on all the financial? <clears throat> yes, there was. Okay. Detective, do you see that on the screen before you? Yes, I do. And go to slide two, please. Do you see that as well? Yes, I do. Have you seen that before? Yes, I have. What is it? It is a uh, city card uh, bank, or a, I'm sorry, a city card doc, uh, statement. Now, when Detective Plinis was on the stand, do you recall um, those Citibank records being entered into evidence as Exhibit 103? Yes. Is the Exhibit 225 before you the entirety of those records? Not the entirety. Okay. In fact, it's just two slides long. Is that fair? Leading. Overruled. It's foundational. Exhibit 225 is two slides. Is that true? That's correct. Okay. Does Exhibit 225 appear to be a fair and accurate copy of a portion of those Citibank records? Yes. I move Exhibit 225 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. Any objection? I, I object because uh, this is not the officer that was involved in gathering those records. Um, overruled. Uh, exhibit 225 is received, permission to publish is granted. And getting cross-examination like every other cross-examination when the defense is asking the witness questions, they're asking the wrong person the questions. <laughs> they're objecting, saying, no, 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 this is not the officer that worked on this, what you're about to show. But then you proceed to ask him questions for two hours that he has no business answering, you know what I mean, trying to catch him out. <laughs> We've done it with almost every witness. Anyway, it's ironic. So, starting with Slide one, detective, can you please tell the jury what information is depicted here? It shows that this is a Citibank card ending in uh, 2932, and it indicates specifically a purchase made for uh, Brownells Inc., and it's a purchase made on August 20th of 2018 in the amount of $229.89. Do you know whose credit card the Citibank 2932 was? Yes. Whose was that? Lynn Hernitz. Okay. Uh, going to slide two of Exhibit 225, please. Um, Detective, is Ms. Hernan's name on this slide? Yes, it is. Where? In the upper left-hand corner. It's under citycards.com. Lynn A. Hernan. Okay. Do you recall when this transaction was identified by the investigative team? I'm not asking um, for a date. Yeah, okay. it, it was uh, specifically in 2019 we learned about this. Okay. Was <clears throat> this purchase significant to you? Yes, it was. Why? Uh, obviously, this is information we had um, regarding Ms. Kruszewski's um, allegation that there was a uh, gun that was purchased. And when we saw the company listed on the statement, we did some background and learned that uh, Brownells Inc. is a company that sells unmanufactured weapons. Did you follow up with the company? <clears throat> yes, we did. Did you, by way of a subpoena? Yes. And what were you asking for? Records related to that purchase. Okay. Did you receive records? Yes, we did. 
I'd like to show just the witness, please, Exhibit 199. And, Detective, is this a 10-page document? Yes, it is. Have you seen it before? Yes, I have. Detective, what is Exhibit 199? It is the records that were received at the from Brownells, Inc. in regards to the subpoena that was served to them. Did you receive these records? Yes, I did. As you looked through Exhibit 199, are there several portions of it that are highlighted? Yes, there are. Um, for example, on page one, there's a phone number highlighted. Is that true? That is true, yes. What's that phone number? 262-421-5290. Has the jury heard about that phone number before? Yes, they have. Can you please remind us what that phone number is? This is a number uh, that Ms. Uh, Kurczewski used or stated uh, was her phone number during a call to the credit card companies, as well as I believe it was on an application for a loan. Okay. In your investigation, were you ever able to link that 5290 number with Lynn Hernan? No, we were not. Okay. Going to page two of Exhibit 199, <coughs> is there a highlight on this page, sir? Yes, there is. What is that? The email address. What is it? Lynn Hernan 1955 at gmail.com. Has the jury seen some records about that email address? Yes. Um, can you remind them what significance that email address has to you in this investigation? Uh, that was uh, an or email that was observed to be on the cell phone download of uh, Ms. Krzyzewski and basically utilized uh, via that phone. Mm -hmm. And if we could keep scrolling through, please. Next page. Next page. Next page. Next page. Next. Detective, is there a highlighted portion on page eight of this exhibit? Yes, there is. What is that? Shows the last four digits of the credit card that was used. What are they? 2932. And if we could keep going through. <coughs> Detective, is the information we've just talked about in Exhibit 199 consistent with other sources of information about this gun purchase? Yes. Specifically with the financial record in Exhibit 225? That's correct. I'd move Exhibit 199 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 199 is received. Permission to publish is granted. We'll start with page one, Detective. Um, in terms of Exhibit 199, were you able to determine whether this order was placed on the Internet or some other way? This was placed on the Internet. And the name of the company, is that on page one of Exhibit 199? Yes, it is. And what is that again? Brownells, Inc. And we've <clears throat> talked about this before, but what's highlighted on page one? Is the cell phone number, or a, a phone number. In terms of the name and address for this order, can you tell the jury what that appears to be? Lynn Hernan, and the address is North 16 West 26543 Metal Grass Circle. Was that Ms. Hernan's condominium? Yes, it was. Okay. Going to page two, please. And detective, again, we talked about this. Is that the email that you uh, identified as being used on Ms. Kraszewski's phone? Correct. Next page. And detective, what's highlighted on page three? Is a comment or a note in the customer service section of the document. What's the date of the note? August 21st, 2018. What time? 7.58 a.m. Is that a date and time that was significant to you when you worked with Detective Schrader in this case? Yes, it was. Why? I requested that Detective Schrader uh, map that time and find out where the cell phone belonging to Ms. Kurseski was and related to this investigation, specifically that date and time. Okay. Why did you do that? I wanted to know where Ms. Kurseski was at the time of this call. What are the comments about that call? Uh, it indicates that um, the caller wants the order held for pickup or it's obviously a pickup held at the FedEx facility uh, located at 1249 Capitol Drive in Pewaukee.
And I'm sorry, that was what date again? August 21st, 2018. If you could please go to our Exhibit 228 and just note that date for the jury. And perhaps just write <coughs> Brown Owl next to it. <coughs> it's Sharpie time. <laughs> Here and there in this trial, there's Sharpie time. They're adding it to this uh, visual timeline they're making there in the courtroom. <coughs> and going to page four, please. Detective, what is the order date for this transaction? August 20th, 2018. And that phone call was the day, the next day? Correct. Okay. Going to page five, please. And page six. What appears to have been purchased? An unassembled firearm. Okay. How much was it? The total was $229.89. Now, is that consistent with the transaction that we looked at in Exhibit 225? Correct. Okay. Next page, please. And again, now what's highlighted on this? Page 8, sir. The last four digits of the credit card utilized for the transaction. Again, does that match Exhibit 225? Yes, it does. And whose credit card was that? Lynn Hernan. All right. And if we can just scroll through the rest of the exhibit, please. Detective, when you received these records, did you make contact with that FedEx location? Yes, I did. Why? I know that there had been some time that passed, but I wanted to see if they would have any information or documentation regarding uh, the transaction or the pickup delivery, anything or even video related to that uh, pickup. When, were you, when did you ask them for that? Uh, shortly after we received uh, the notice or the invoice from uh, Brown Hills. Okay, and if we scroll back to page one of Exhibit 199, Detective, is there a date on the very top line in the middle of the screen? There is. Do you know what that date is? July 29th, 2021. That, but that's different from the purchase date, right? That's correct. What is that date? Object speculation. Um, Overruled. I believe that date would be the date that the documentation was provided. Okay. Does that seem consistent with your memory in terms of when you received this document? Yes. And ultimately, were you able to get any information that was significant to you from the FedEx store? No, nothing from the FedEx store. Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we learned that uh, the truth. Uh, sustained if the answer was going to be what someone told him, but he can... Why don't you rephrase? Is it fair to say that years elapsed between the transaction and you getting these records? Sustain. Detective, do you know why FedEx didn't have any video of who picked this firearm up? Yes. Why? Because of the time that it elapsed. Overruled, you may answer. Because the time that had elapsed, they did not have the video any longer. Okay. Now I'd like to go to Exhibit 173, which already has been entered into evidence, specifically slide eight. If we get unpublished, please, thank you. Sorry, what is it? 173, slide eight. And if we could please publish that. Detective, the jury saw this with Detective Schrader already. Is that true? Yes. Okay, what is it? It is um, a clip from a cell hawk animation on what date and time this would have been august 21st 2018 between 7 45 a.m and 8 a.m whose records were used to create this image miss kurseski's why did you ask for this uh, map to be created i wanted to see where uh, miss kurseski Presumably the cell phone was uh, during the time of the call that was made. It's like map time, everyone. <laughs>
regarding switching the shipping address to FedEx. And where was Ms. Krzyzewski's phone when that call occurred? Basically the city of West Dallas, um, 115th Street, north of uh, Greenfield Avenue. <laughs> Remind the jury what is in the very center of those segments on the screen? Um, it's a cell phone tower, um, an azimuth area. Okay. Can you tell based on slide eight how many different transactions are being mapped? Just uh, how many locations are being mapped? Sorry, what, how many calls or texts, how much data is being mapped on this screen? Just one right now. In the white box along the right side of the screen, do you know what those entries are for? Uh, the activity on that cell phone during that time frame. <clears throat> okay, so there's more than just one thing mapped? The, there's more than one activity that was utilized for the system during that time frame of 7.45 to 8 a.m., yes. Okay. Let's play our map time song just because we can, okay? Give us a second. Here we go. It's map time, everyone. <laughs> I mean, we can't see that well, but it's okay. It's map time. Okay, so that was a bit of <laughs> a map time song time. And someone asked here, Connie said, what do you think of the case so far? Can't wait to see justice for Lynn. Uh, 1-800-741-0015. And remind the jury of the significance of the call on August 21st of 2018. That was to change the shipping location from Lynn Hernan's address to a pickup order that was going to be shipped to the FedEx facility in uh, the village of Pewaukee on, or when it, it was delivered. Okay. And we can take those down. Thank you, Madam Clerk. In the interview clip that the jury just saw, how many firearms does Ms. Krzyzewski say were purchased? I believe there was a discussion of two. Okay. Did you try to follow up? to determine if there really were two purchased? Yes. And did you find another record of a firearm purchase? Later on, yes, we did. Okay, was that also at Brownell? No, it was not. Where was that purchase? Urban Arms Survival, LLC, I believe. Okay. I'd like to show just the witness exhibit 227, please. And detective, I'm gonna have Mr. Balconier scroll through these. Have you seen these records before? Yes, I have. On page one of Exhibit 227, what's being depicted? Uh, certification of uh, business records. Okay. If we go to page two, what records is contained in Exhibit 227? A BMO Harris uh, MasterCard. Belonging to who? Lynn Hernan. And what are the last four? 4075. Detective, is this pages two through five a statement from that account? Yes, it is. <clears throat> I'd move exhibit 227 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 227 is received permission to publish granted. Detective, if you recall when you were here during uh, Detective Plenis' testimony, was this 4075 account something that was presented to the jury in detail? Yes, it was. Are you sure? Not. I did miss a portion of that uh, testimony, so. Nonetheless, was this statement significant to you in your investigation? Yes, it was. Again, Lynn Hernan's name is on here? Yes, it is. Okay, if we could go to page three, please, and page four. Detective, is there anything significant to you on page four? Yes, there is. What's that? There was a purchase and a transaction made on September 27th of 2018 
to urban arms, I'm sorry, urban survival arms in the amount of $597. Which was a day before Lynn was checked out of the hospital after a 13 day stay and six days before she died. I mean, what was Jesse's plan here? Okay, and if we can take this down, it may be easier for the jury to see. I'd like to show the witness exhibit 226. Detective, do you recognize 226? Yes, I do. Is it a portion of Exhibit 227? That's correct. I move it into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Did you say no objection? That's right. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, exhibit 226 is received, permission to publish, granted. Detective, could you please circle the account holder's name on slide one? Sorry about that. Okay. Crossed out the name. And if we go to slide two, could you circle that transaction that you just testified about? <coughs> Detective, did you try to contact Urban Survival Arms? Yes, I did. What In what ways? Uh, I tried to contact them via phone, via email. What is Urban Survival Arms? It is uh, another uh, store that will sell um, unassembled firearms uh, over the internet. What's the total value of the purchase on this BMO statement? $597. Now, were you ever able to get any documentation from Urban Survival Arms about this order? No, I was not. Do you know why? Uh, they would not honor any request. They would not contact us. It was, uh, we were received no cooperation whatsoever from that business. Is that business like a brick and mortar store in the area? No, it is not. What is it? It is uh, a business based out of California, uh, mostly dealing in uh, web purchases. Nonetheless, um, well, I don't think I asked you, what's the date of the purchase, sir? September 27th, 2018. And did you ask Detective Schrader to help you map that day? Yes, I did. Why? Again, I wanted to see where uh, Ms. Krzyzewski or her cell phone were during the time or during the date of this transaction. In the interview that the jury saw, what did Ms. Krzyzewski say about who was ordering these firearms? She stated that Ms. Hernan was the individual ordering the firearms. Did she say how Ms. Hernan was able to do that? She alleged it was utilizing her cell phone. Whose cell phone? Ms. Krzyzewski's. Okay. I'd like to now go back to Exhibit 173. Marilee says, I'm thinking Lynn didn't order the gun from the hospital, right? Slide 11. Detective, have you, have you seen this before? Yes, I have. What is it? It is a snapshot of the Cellhawk animation for the location of Miss Kersesky's okay. cell phone on September 27th, 2018, between 1.58 p.m. and 2 p.m. When you tried to contact Urban Arms, what phone number did you use? 1-800-736-6598. Is that phone number depicted on slide 11 of Exhibit 173? Yes, it is. Could you please put an arrow near it? Does that, does the information for that number indicate whether it was? Okay, maybe I zoomed in too much for you guys. I can't see where you put the arrow, but anyway, we were listening. Was called or whether Ms. Krzyzewski received a call from it? That number was being called from Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone. Okay, and at the time of that call, where was Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone? Somewhere between the area of 
92nd in Oklahoma, all the way south to Edgerton Avenue, which would have been a little bit west. So, um, Milwaukee, Greenfield area. Is that near Lynn Hernan's house? No, it is not. If we could go back to slide eight for a moment, and we can clear the screen. Uh, similar question for you on this exhibit. Detective, is what's being depicted here near Lynn Hernan's house? No, it is not. Whose house is it by? It is uh, in close proximity to Ms. Grzeski and Mr. Craig's residence at the time. And I'm sorry, Mr. Vulcan, you're going back to slide 11 briefly. Detective, in terms of this uh, number that you've associated with Urban Arms, uh, remind the jury what date this phone call was made? September 27th, 2018. Where was Lynn Hernan on September 27th of 2018? In Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Is that depicted on Exhibit 228? No, it is not. The court board? The, I'm sorry, yes. That is <coughs> depicted on the court board, yes. Okay. Um, is the map depicted in slide 11 near Waukesha Memorial Hospital? No, that is not. Okay. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have on these exhibits. Now, Detective, where we left off with Exhibit 205, um, that was an interview from July 12th of 2019, is that right? Correct. And at that point, what did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you about those firearms that we just talked about? That she had taken them apart and they were supposed to be in this storage shed. Did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you whose storage shed they were in? Uh, just one that she was utilizing. Okay. Does that story change throughout the next interview? Yes, it does. All right, so moving ahead, I'd like to show the witness exhibit 206. Okay, so we're about two hours in now. We're actually going to probably watch two, about three and a half, maybe even four hours. We shall see. Um, Tracy says, can you imagine the level of, the horrifying level that it takes to slowly poison and make sick a person that loves you while simultaneously stealing every penny? She knew Lynn was an easy target. It's horrifying, isn't it? We'll just need one moment for that too. Detective, do you see exhibit 206 before you? Yes, I do. Do you recognize it? Yes. What is it? It's uh, clips of the interview conducted with Ms. Krzyzewski on two, July 16th, 2019. Is this a few days after the last interview that we saw in 205? Yes. Okay. Do you know why this interview on July 16th of 2019 was conducted? Uh, yes, I do. Why? We were attempting to uh, locate um, information or confirm information again through Ms. Krzyzewski after the request. Sorry, Detective. I skipped way ahead didn't I did we finish the July 12 2019 interview in exhibit 205 not completely no. okay so why don't we start there before we begin this one um, I believe we're on slide nine of buckle up everybody we're gonna listen to some more of Jesse in a police interview exhibit 205 my apologies <laughs> all right detective please remind the jury of the date of this interview uh, we are back to July 12th, 2019. All right. And for the record, this begins at 173831. <laughs> she also got up in the mornings and went and did her errands because she didn't like to see people. She stayed in her house a lot. Like, if you talk to her neighbors, she didn't, she wasn't out. Before that, she was the party of the whole block. But after things changed, like three years ago, I want to say, is when she first developed stomach issues and they just never but that's the thing that, that that's curious yeah she was that is curious in, in isn't it three years ago so hmm lynn developed these stomach issues three years ago three years before lynn died before lynn was murdered her death was ruled a homicide 
Lynn got 250,000 in inheritance. Interesting, isn't it? Never diagnosed with any... Nothing. So why would she want to kill herself? Because they couldn't figure out what it was and she was tired of being sick. She didn't eat for months, months. And if she did, she got sick. It was either diarrhea or throwing up. She was to the point, I mean, this came from somebody who was healthy and did everything, went everywhere, to complete isolation, locked everyone out, locked everything out. Her whole appearance changed. I mean, it was still her, but it wasn't her. She's literally saying it. You know what I mean? It's in plain sight. Lynn was isolated. Now, if I were to fill in some blanks, I'd be like, okay, somebody isolated her and took full advantage of her. Um, she was so bloated. That was her biggest thing. And they always wanted her to do the one test she refused to do. Um, something with your butt, and that's sounds yeah, weird. But uh, because they couldn't find anything, and they kept saying, maybe it's like the other end. And she refused. She didn't want to do it. And we're like, do you want to know why you're sick? And they're not finding it. Go somewhere else or have something else checked or do it. I remember in the hospital, they tried again. I think they partially were able to do it, or she just said, no, I can't remember. But she was, I mean, anybody who knew her, her neighbor told her, before I got her to go to the hospital, her neighbor said, you look like you're dead. You look like you're dead. And she just said, I wish I was. But that was how she was. She just didn't care. She was done fighting. She was done. I think they just, she was mad because they weren't giving her answers. And to me, that didn't make sense because eventually somebody's going to find out something's wrong. I feel like, or they should have. But sure. I think a lot, I don't know how... Right. Blame everyone else, right? They should have checked and they should have done this and they... Um, maybe you should not have put Visine in her drinks or the pudding or soup or probably everything. How much you guys know about her medical records or have you had yeah, got any... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know the last couple times they would never admit her. They used to think she was psychotic. She had um, something on her chart because she screamed about this. Um, they were saying something that she, something about her being psychotic and seeing somebody, and she wasn't ever. She never saw anybody that she recalls. So I don't know where that came from. And you would take her to the doctor. You were the yep. one taking yep. her to the doctor and. I mean, once in a while, I think Jean might have taken her, like, once or twice, or Judy, I mean, prior. You know, I wasn't always taking her at the beginning, because I couldn't always. And then she'd take herself sometimes, too. But I know some of them, like, she needed a ride, or she'd call, or whatever. Because I did talk to the doctors quite a bit, because she'd tell them, oh, I'm eating, I'm doing this, and I'm like, no, she's not. I don't know why she's telling you that, but she's not. Or she thought she wasn't drinking. I'm like, yeah, she is. What did uh, you said that really bothered you about what Chris said yesterday? At the end, because he made, he said, you owe this to her. I feel like I don't owe this to her. She owes it to come out and say that I didn't do this. Or how that she, I helped she, her. She, she can't. Can. I know she can't. But it made me feel like he. I, I felt I got a really bad read from him when he said that. Like I just didn't like the way that portrayed me. Because then I thought, well, now you're making me feel like I murdered her, and I didn't. I, I have a very strong conviction about that. I did not murder. <laughs> very strong conviction about that. She also didn't like the way it was making her look. We heard it. Murder her, and I couldn't murder her. Um, she said she didn't like the way it was portraying her. I understand. I helped. I bought it. But in my mind, I she knew what she was drinking. She took it. I didn't force her to take it. I didn't pour it down her mouth. I didn't, none of that. And that's where I have a hard time. What I want you to think about real quick, so I step yes. up for a second. Yep. I want you to think about something. You said that Lynn can't do that. Can't do it. Can't tell us. Can't no. talk to us. Oh, I know. Actually... You're telling us she can. You're telling us that you have. Oh, you're telling us that you have proof that she did say that. So you actually have it in your hands, Jesse, that you can prove that to us. Just think about that for yeah. a minute, okay?
Moving to slide 10. Okay. And what did you think about this? I, I get what you're saying. I get it a lot. Right. Still, still status quo? Yeah. Still don't want to offer this proof that could help vindicate you? Not yet. Or at least prove that you were trying to help her and that you were doing what she wished? Not yet. You know, I understand how this looks, right, kid? I do. All right, Jesse. Can I, I ask you? What, um, so you were able to recover stuff from my phone. Did you find anything about that gun or any of the other companies? We're working on, I, we haven't had a chance to go through everything. I mean, you know, like Chris you said. You got me wondering about the June thing. I'm like, really, like. Yeah, oh no, there, there's, there's, there's definitely poison searches in June of 2019. Yeah, I know. Which was there for a particular poison? That's what I'm wondering. Well, how about any poison? I well, no, because I, I don't. She's like, did you find anything on my phone? And was it for a specific poison? Anything there about tetrahydrosoline, Rosaline, cyanide maybe? Did you find any evidence of the guns that I was purchasing? Like, the question she's asking, they're so ridiculous. I don't know, like, was it like a child, like, eating something? No, or, no, no, no. So that's why I'm trying to, like, check, you know, I'm like, I don't no. understand that. So I'm trying to think what it was. Okay. All right. Um, then I guess we're kind of done. I mean, I, 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 I'm oh, stressed. I well, I could sit here all night and talk to you, Jesse. I really could. I, I know. I, can we just do this like every day? It gets me I, off for a little bit. <laughs> but I, I mean, we're we're kind of going round and round at this point. I mean, I, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt that that is what happened, but the, we need to figure something out and. Right now, you're basically saying you have evidence. And of she out. didn't have any paperwork there besides, I mean, obviously, you guys showed me the one thing. But there was nothing laid around for anything. No. That's what I was curious and hoping maybe no. about. Sure, a suicide note would have been interesting. Yeah. No, no, no suicide note. No, I do not So, that's it. We don't want to, you, you're still standing firm with this, huh? I mean, it's, it's not that I'm not going to give it up. A, it's just, I just don't know right now. I just, well, Jesse, I guess, it's hard. I know it's hard, but in the same aspect, I mean, your ass is on the line. Yeah. You, your future, this is your life. Yeah. Um, Slide 11, please. The only thing, she wrote down what I know what she had. She wrote down um, information on... Um, when she first started getting sick, wrote down how she was suicidal, and she was asking for help, things like that. She wrote down something of that nature. I didn't read it, so I don't know the full extent she talked about it with me, because she said, I'm doing this as like a liability, whatever. And then there was something about, um, she had something from, this was a while back, it was like a ledger um, that she had like to like show stuff about money in case it was ever an issue. Um, those are the two things that I know she had, um, that she had done on her own, like, and that she put in a certain spot that has stayed there. The, um, gun and the drops was something I did separately because I just felt, you know, if it ever came down to it, I have something that shows her handprints on something, obviously, and she was alive, you know, that was my thing. As far as what more, I don't know to an extent. Um, I know she had always talked about a tape. I don't know because I never saw it, so I don't know. Um, and then, I feel like I'm missing something. I just don't know what it is right this second. <laughs> she's like, she's like, hmm, I feel like I'm missing something. Don't know what it is. Just wait a second. She's still thinking up stuff. Periwinkle Pepperoni. What a cool name. Periwinkle Pepperoni. Thank you so much for your $5 super sticker. Really, really appreciated. And if you guys saw what I just typed in the chat there, I just want to thank everyone that's sending me PayPal gifts and treats for the Cat's Fire PayPal because, of course, that's direct. There's no middleman or tax man, especially if you send it as a gift. So I can literally take those gifts that I give you sent for Willow and Fury. Here's $10 for snacks. That's literally $10 that I can assign two snacks for them. So thank you so much. Okay. Sometimes we've got to take a little break. Just a deep breath and be like, okay. 
Oh, I can't imagine. Ooh, the stamina of these detectives. Whoa. Oh, I have some receipts. That's what I have. What receipts? They were from when she purchased the gun. And I had other ones, and I don't know what exactly they were offhand. I don't know if I saved them from the Visine or something else. I don't know offhand, to be honest. But I know I had more than one thing. It wasn't just... But, no, but, the, the, what could... Are you... Is there something in that you think could lead to new charges? No, not at all. Then, then at absolutely... All. Why in the world don't you want to say, here, help... This can help me. Show it to us. Show us that... Do you want to know my biggest reason I'm saving it? I, I would love to, because I'm really curious right because now. Because I'd like it to give me out. Okay. That's what I'd like. Okay. Checker B. Miss Harris. Her BMO, BMO Harris Bank. Okay. She has a black box. I thought you said this was a storage check. That's where she put her items. No. And this is a BMO Harris black box now. Correct. I didn't give any specifics for a reason. You said a storage check. I said it's not in my name. So in a lock box, there is a... She thinks this is like a, is this like a murder mystery game or what to her? She was like, no, no, no. I said it's, and with her cuffs on, by the way. I said it's not in my name. Okay. Now what we're going to do now is talk about some random storage box and then she buries the box and then she's high, all kinds of crap. My word. If you thought you haven't heard it all yet, here we go. <laughs> I felt like that uh, defense attorney there for a second in Caitlin Armstrong's trial with the opening statements. He was like rolling his eyes so much. <laughs> wow. A gun. No. There is. Where's the gun? I said she has her stuff and I have my stuff. Okay. So I here's didn't the thing. Okay. Not? All right. So let's, let's, let's clarify. I don't want to put everything out there because uh, I Jesse, don't. Jesse. You need to put it out I know, there now. Now is your time because your I, ass is on the line. You, your ass is it. on the line. This is your... Slide 12, please. The only... I get it, stuff. but I wanted to talk to somebody about it. That's why I didn't want to give too much information because I feel like the more I give, the easier it is for you guys to figure it out. But it's not a game. So it's, I'm this telling is, you right this now. This isn't a game of I scratch your back, no, you scratch mine. No, this I'm is, not saying that. But it, it, you are a little bit because this is stuff that you're saying can help you. Yeah. It's time to bring it out. And yeah. it's not a matter of us calling Julie saying, hey, do this. I'm telling so you right now, Jesse. The black box is the one that I'm most concerned about. The other one, I'm not too concerned, but you guys wouldn't find it without me. What do you mean you wouldn't find it without you? It's hidden. Done. Hidden. I thought you said it was a storage thing. Jesse. I, I never gave you specifics. You said, said it was a storage, storage shed. You said something. a storage shed. You said a storage shed, not in my Why name. Because I didn't want to give you all the information. Why? I, I told you I was holding it for a reason. That's why I'm... What a load of bullcock. Oh, man. Tracy W., good luck for your doctor's appointment and know that we will be saving your seat so that you can come back. Maybe you could take your AirPods and keep listening in. <laughs> take us with you. <laughs> so if, if you guys ever feel like, oh, man, I quickly got to run an errand or do something, that's okay. Your seat is always saved here with us at Grizzly True Crime. Whew. Holding it. It's the one thing I got. This isn't a game. You I know that, right? That's why this I'm isn't a game. This, right is, this is life. This is I'm real life. Right now. So go check both those. Go check the, the lock box? Yep. And what spot? It's her lock box in her name. And what about oh, the shit that you Demo need? Harris is, it's the one on, um, I don't know if it's Waukesha or Pewaukee because I'm not real good with the, that's the one I'm most concerned with um, because we lost her key. We lost that a while ago. Um, it is on fucking the street. I can see it, but I'm not silver. No, that's one by your house. If you're, do you know where EM Clinics is? I know it doesn't sound weird. I used to work there. That's why I can best describe it. What is it called? Parker and Blue Mound. Yeah. So if you take, I'm trying to like think of the right directions and not go directions. I go by parking things. So if you get off on Barker and Blue Mountain and you come up, what's that first main road at the lights right now? Big intersection. Barker and Blue Mountain. Yeah. I'm assuming it's Blue Mountain, but I don't know 100%. 
And if you take that to your left, all the way down, I think that turns into Pewaukee, doesn't it? There's a BMO Harris right there, across from like car dealerships. Do you know where I'm talking about? I'm looking at real quick. Yes, Wicked Sunflower says she's so far off the rails, she's about to send these detectives on a treasure hunt. And of course, any crap she says, they have to investigate so they can eliminate if that is true or not. She literally does that. There's um, another bank on the corner to SunTrust, or so I don't know offhand, I just know there's a bank. But it's right by, it's right where she bought her Jeep. There's a car dealership, like three of them right there, or two maybe, I don't know. That's where she always kept. So there's one over on Pewaukee Road? No, that's not it. I don't know for sure. I know, like, I'm just not good with. It's right across the street, and they just redid the intersection. I want to say you take Barker down, and it turns. Like, if you're on, or Blue Mound, I mean, sorry, I'm not good with directions, you guys, but I know exactly what I'm talking about. But Capital? What's around it, do you know? There's there's a the, that park that's right there in the in the car dealerships okay, there in Capitol and Parker. Is the car dealership like across the street? From the bank? Yeah. Because the bank's like this way, you turn in right, and there's a car dealership like two so, of them left. Okay, so there is there's Barker, there's Capitol Park, and then there's banks right there. I think so. I'm almost positive. And what city is that one? That's it. I didn't know if it was that sharp. <laughs> Stefan, always so polite, you say. I have to admit, Jessie is not a likable person, <laughs> right? Not She's not very likable, this one. Ooh, and that voice. The tone at which she's talking, the directions she's now giving with her cuffs on. So there's like a car dealership here, like a bank or two over there. <laughs> Go look for this lockbox. It's out there. It's got evidence. It's got things that'll prove I didn't do this. Yeah, okay. That, that's either going to be Pewaukee or technically Brookfield. Okay. Then that should be it because Brookfield is where I'm familiar because she's having me meet her there like twice um, from when I used to work off the Barker Blue Mountain. I, I know it's seen it, but I'm not good with streets. And what about the stuff you have, Jesse? Why, why wouldn't you want us to help you? I do want you to help me. I'm not. My thing is, is I, I want to get out. I need to talk to an attorney. But <laughs> that's and I. Now, I now I remember what you said, so I'm going to ask you again. No, no. Well, you you, you your word. You, me. I'm you, here. Okay, but remember I, what you just said, though. So are you invoking? I'm going to ask you. Are no, you invoking your rights? She said it the whole time. I need to get out of here because I need an attorney. But yet, when they say, "Do you?" Want an attorney? No, nope, nope, that's not what she wants because she knows it's going to make her look guilty. But the right thing to do is stop talking uh, five interviews ago and get an attorney. Just do that because this is so ridiculous. Uh, Yuli Jade says, Jesse needs a map time. <laughs> Thank you so much for your sticker. And you know what? I object. She will not get a map time from us. She will not. We deny <laughs> her that map time. Okay. You understand what you're saying? I know. And I don't, I I, I do not, I don't want to violate your rights, though, you're not. okay? All right. I'm so not you're saying, not invoking your rights. I'm not saying right the second. You want to speak to somebody about this yes. uh, this issue? Yes. About the, about this, this, yes. Uh, the stuff you're saying? Not only so much the stuff, it's just the whole case, but I felt like this is all I had to, like, to hang on to right now. That's, yeah, you know what to, I mean? Just to clarify, you're yeah. not invoking your no, rights right now. I'm not. So you don't want to tell us where you buried this stuff? No, I'll tell you. Where'd you bury it? <laughs> it's in Wendell Park. Mm, now she's going to talk about a box that she buried in a park, which doesn't, it's not even true. Oh, she's like, I feel like this is the last thing I have, you know, to hang on to. Yeah, that's also true. You just, this is the last lie that I can concoct for now is what she's saying, right? Shauna says, I sure hope Jesse doesn't get put in the same prison as Taylor Shea Business. If those two get together, they, their diabolical minds could be even more dangerous together. Can you imagine? I mean, yeah, Wisconsin, Taylor Shea Business. But imagine, for a moment, Letitia Stauch, this one, and Taylor Shea Business, in, <laughs> like even just in a room together, in a 
interview room like this, oh my goodness, we would not be able to keep up. Imagine those lies. Whitnall Park. That's where my bunny used to be buried. It's behind my mom's apartment. I know, I don't know, but I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, I didn't want to. Well, we got to do it to save ourselves from this. <laughs> we got to do it just to lighten our mood a bit. Because what? You know, the way she sits there so smug now. I'm like, yep. I'm telling you, there's a box buried there in a park behind my mom's apartment. <laughs> I mean, come on. Why? Do you, is this just to buy herself time? <laughs> Why'd she do this? I put it, I want actually, my original plan was a storage. That's why I said storage. <laughs> because that's what I wanted to do, but I didn't want to pay for a storage. <laughs> but uh, I thought, well, I should be able to find it if I ever need it. <laughs> Where in Whitnall Park, other than so, where your bunny is? It, so if you were to take, you know where my mom lives, obviously. Did you go over there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you keep going down, you know how that turns into Whitnall Park, and there's that hill goes down, and there's that um, where nature's are? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you here. Yep. Okay. And I mean, like, I could really... So there, there's Palm Tree Apartments, yep. right? There's your mom. Now there's Whitnall Park. Okay. So when you first hit, is this the beginning of Whitnall Park, the green? Yes. When you first hit that versus my mom's apartment, there's a hill and it goes down to um, the Weir Nature Center. It is literally 10 feet behind the apartments at the beginning of the park. And it is in about 30 feet. So there's the apartments, right? Yep. Right here. In 30 feet, buried a box in the same park where she buried her bunny well i feel very sorry for that bunny and any other animal that she encountered by the sounds of it yep right hey, there. there's a stop sign right there before you go down the hill i believe to, but it's to, literally to the park. yep it's 10 minutes or 10 like 10 feet into the park and 30 over to your right so if you're coming in from my mom's and going into the park that way. So we're not going to go fully into the park. We like, there's a stop sign right here. I think it's right there. It might be right before. I don't want to quote me. Okay. I, she just moved in these apartments. So basically, so basically, so basically the plunk It's apartment literally is like there. 10 feet into the park and 30 feet over on your right hand side. So it, you're pretty much in Whitnall back or in the apartment's backyard. Not hers, but those apartments. How deep is it buried? Um, I would say... Maybe five, four feet. Are there any markings? No. I had to put a stone on it, but I mean, nothing other than that. What do you mean you had her put a stone on it? I had put a stone oh. on it. <laughs> Is that her? Is it still she there? She wasn't with me. I haven't, I've never went back. I've never had a reason to go back until this. When I almost bunny? asked my mom today to do it, but I didn't. When did your bunny die? Oh my god, I was little. We lived in those apartments years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I picked that spot. Because <laughs> your mom just kind of moved back there recently, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We lived there when I was maybe four to six when she was remarried. Okay. And so, that's why I thought that spot, to be so, honest, because so, my money's buried, or was buried around there. So there's Highway 100. Yeah. You make that left on the college. You yep. pass your own apartments. So like right there is the You don't part. turn in her apartments. You just keep going yep. straight. But yep. so it would be on, it would be on the right hand side, Correct. right? So yep. we would get out and walk yep. to the right. Yep. Okay. And it's about. I mean, there's woods and stuff. It does get muddy and swampy certain times of the year. It wasn't when I went. Um, I did this literally before she even passed. So and it was all together in three Ziploc bags. Or is it in a box or anything? Nope. Or it's just three, three Ziploc three bags. Ziploc I just bags. kept Ziploc bagging it and then the freezer bags. And how far down? I would say about four to five feet. Four to five feet? Yep. Are you are you kidding me? Maybe four? I don't know. I guess four feet. Hold on. <laughs> I don't understand you. Just that. over four feet. Okay, like this. What is this? I'm not good Okay, with that. that made two? Okay, hold on. Four feet. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's like my It's hilarious, isn't it? She thinks this is hilarious. She's having the time of her life. Stop. If you give me more of like, my body in there or something. I'm one of those people sometimes, like, I'm better, like, I have the road. Like, I can tell you the road, but I can show you. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm fine. <laughs> I, I'm thinking digging wise, okay? If you were to, like. <laughs> okay. Then what's going to be in there, Jesse? What is going to be that in there? That is the two pieces of the gun. Okay. The rest of it was thrown in the garbage. Okay. There's some visine. 
Okay. And, and roughly, I'm going to say about 20 bottles. I would say with three different dates. I don't know the dates, though. Okay. Um, but I, I did it a few times. This was stuff I had collectively put together for time in a Ziploc bag in my trunk under the tire for a while. Or, like, under why would this why i don't even know i'm speechless <laughs> why are you gonna put gun parts and visine bottles in ziploc baggies <laughs> sounding like coburger right about now did you get the ziploc baggies at walmart or what and she's like okay buried it like four to five feet okay why and kept the baggies at the trunk area under a wheel. What did she just say? Oh, man, this is just... It is. This is, like, uh, feeling a lot like Letitia now, huh? With the Eduardo and the this and all the, all those stories. <laughs> I never thought we'd say Eduardo again. But here we are. It's reminding us <laughs> of that. Wow. Okay. I, I was debating on what to do with it or where to go with it. I didn't want to get rid of everything. Right. And then there's receipts. Oh, yep. And the last slide, 13, is about three minutes long. If we could play. <laughs> Did you hear the uh, the prosecutor here go? It was a lot. I just like, deep breaths, everyone. Deep breaths. Okay, we can do this. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Stefan. Does she have a shovel too? Or what? Five feet is quite deep. <laughs> Casey Zulu says no one would notice her digging a four foot hole in a park. It's totally normal, right? It's just totally normal. I mean, with Ziploc baggies and gun parts and Visine bottles that are all dated. What? I don't know how she thinks that will help her case at all. That, please. That's not as bad. Because that's a big damn park. Uh, but I know the park very well. Okay. Alright, so, so let's try to out there's the Plum Tree, okay. there's College. This is that road, right? Yep, College. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I'm gonna say it's like 10 feet in. Wait. Or is it 30 feet in or 10 Wait, feet? Wait, what did I say? Hold on. Wait, I gotta let me do it. No. These are the tops of the I know, videos. that's what's throwing me off right now. Oh, that's what's throwing you off? Not that this whole story is an utter lie? What's throwing her off is like, hmm, oh crap, I need to orientate myself on this map. She's trying to match up what she's just said <laughs> to the map. Find it in the memory. Find it in the memory. Wow. Can you believe how far she'll go? How far her lies will take her? I gotta look at this way even though I came from the other way. That's fine. I'm going to say, like, and I'm guessing, obviously, feet-wise. It's 10 feet from there, 30 feet from there. Guess okay. what? That's what I'm... All right, so, I mean, is it, like, directly in back of those, those, yes. second, those second like, apartment? Those yes, second like that, that, that there? building back there, that main one. So that first building right there. Be, yeah, okay. No, I'm right. I had to, like, now I'm looking at backwards, so I'm being thrown off. Yes. My money is probably over there somewhere. <laughs> is this the building you lived in? When no. you were little? No. No, actually, we lived way in the front, and my mom lives around here somewhere now. Okay. So I just grew up in this park. <laughs> so there's one, two, three different things over there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's in the first, not this building, but the first one there. The first okay. section yeah. or the second building. It's got to be, like, the first or in between the first and second, but yes. Okay. Because they're not, like, huge, like, patios. Like, well, they are, but, you know. All right, so we're going to go take a look at things, Jesse. Three, literally like one Ziploc, another Ziploc, another. Like all on top of each other in the same yes. Like, hole? Yes. No, no, no. Wait. You no, have I mean, hole. yeah, I'd say no, each bag is inside of each other. Oh. Like I'd put oh. it on, okay. do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, they're all in one, but I like triple bagged it. Okay. And then I wanted to tell you too about the people Harris account. So that page for you. Why did she triple bag it? No, she's sounding like Jeffrey Dahmer. But she's like, a triple bag that Vazine. Why? Why? Why are you... Where is this story taking her? Showing me the other day. Um, the one that was signed by Lynn and me at Bimo Harris. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's when she put in papers in her lockbox that said, if you ever need these, that same day. 
Okay. And that's where, when she put in her stuff. So I know that for a fact. Um, when she passed away, I went there once with my mother. And all we took was the roll tube that she told us to take. It was in her list of directions when she passed away. And then there was still more stuff that we didn't touch. And then we lost the key, so we never went back. So and fair. me, Mom, and Anthony are all on the lockbox. Okay. So, but I wanted to tell you that because you were out of the room and I was okay. thinking of everything, so I didn't forget anything. Didn't I tell you something? Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Okay. Um, what's that? Do you want me to take? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. I'll run her back up if you're gonna. Yeah. No, what's that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Detective, did investigators go to Whitnell Park after this interview? Yes, we did. To try to find this burial site? Yes. Did they locate it? No. What types of things were purportedly in this hole in the ground? Gun parts, visine bottles. What did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you about why she would bury bottles of visine? That they were dated, possibly, I believe this might have been the part where she said there would be prints on them. They were the used bottles. Earlier in Exhibit 205, in this interview, where did Ms. Krzyzewski tell you that those items were? In a storage shed. Later on in the interview, does the defendant acknowledge that wasn't true? Yes. Do you remember what her demeanor was like when she told you that she lied about the storage shed? Yes. I mean, what was Jack, that? We, we Jury can see her demeanor for themselves. Sustained. Oh man, sorry. I'm just laughing because he's just like <laughs> he's got. He's so expressive when the defense attorney objects, and he's like, "Oh man," and it's not even the worst part of his day yet because he's going to get cross-examined. That was the worst part of his day, and it continues on to the next day. Ultimately, did investigators find a lockbox at BMO Harris? Yes, we did. In fact, has the jury heard testimony about that already? Yes. How many lockboxes did Lynn Hernan have? One. Okay. The I'd like to show Exhibit 133, which has already been entered into evidence. If we could please go to slide nine. And if we could please publish. Detective, this is slide nine of exhibit 133. Have you seen that before? Yes. What is it? It is a safety deposit uh, access record for BMO Harris. In your review of these records, was this the last time anyone entered that box? No, I do not believe so. Okay. If we can um, start at page one, please. Sorry, slide one. Um, Detective, what are we looking at here in Exhibit 133? Uh, the certification of business records okay, from Daniel so, Harris. And then slide two? Uh, this is the safety deposit box authorization form. Now, when you, when investigators requested these materials from BMO Harris Bank, um, did it include all access records for the box? Yes. And are these the entirety of the records that the bank provided back? Yes. And going down to slide three and slide four. Detective, do you recall how many different people had access to this box? Yes. Is that kind of what the jury just saw on those slides? Yes. Okay. Next slide, please. And it, is this 
portion where the records change in in type? Yes. What are these records? Uh, this is just a. This would be beyond his personal knowledge. Speculation. This exhibit's previously been received under 90611. I think this is cumulative. You can ask him questions, but um, we aren't going to go through this again. Well, I'd like to go through all of these slides, please. So I just want you to can argue with the jury later, but if he knows, he can answer, but otherwise refresh his memory with it. Well, I can take the publish down. And Mr. Vulcanier, if you can please flip through these slides for Detective Hoppy. Detective, you've now seen Exhibit 133. Um, I'm going to ask you again, when is the last time that this box was entered? Again, object cumulative. He may answer this question. First of all, was your memory refreshed? Yes. All right, go ahead. You may answer. It was uh, last by anyone other than law enforcement, October 4th, 2018. And who was in there? Jesse Krasowski and Jennifer Flower. If we could please go to slide three. Detective, do you know whether this lockbox is still open today? No, it is not. Okay. Does that slide before you indicate when it was surrendered? Yes, it does. And when was that? I believe that's going to be April 11th, 2019. Whose signature is next to that surrender date? Uh, Ms. Krasowski. And remind the jury what the date of the interview was that we just watched? July 12th, 2019. Thank you. Those are all the questions I have on Exhibit 133. Detective, is that the last time that you spoke with Ms. Krzyzewski in this case? No, it was not. Did you speak with her again on July 16th of 2019? Yes, we did. Do you know whether the BMO lockbox was checked between the last two interviews in this case? Yes, I believe it was. And what was inside of it? Uh, nothing but a clear stone. I'd like to show this witness exhibit 206, please. Nothing but a clear stone. Okay. And detective, I asked you a few questions about this already, but do you recognize exhibit 206? Yes, I do. What is it? It is clips from the interview conducted with Ms. Krasowski on July 16th, 2019. Have you seen all the clips in Exhibit 206 before? Yes, I have. Are they fair and accurate copies of the interview that was conducted on the 16th? Yes, they are. <clears throat> I'd move Exhibit 206 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 206 is received, permission to publish is granted. How uh, many clips do you have, or at least the cumulative time? An hour and seven minutes. All right, we'll start, and then we'll break close to noon. At Buckle up, Grizzlies. There's going to be another hour and seven minutes of jail interview clips. <laughs> then there's, like, text messages in between and things like that. Stefan says, Pablo's back. <laughs> yes, Pablo is back. <laughs> the appropriate spot. Detective, the exhibit before you, is that the same exhibit 206 you just looked at? Yes, it is. And again, this is an interview from July 16th of 19? Yes. Okay. Uh, going down to slide two, please. Uh, do you recognize this still image? Yes, I do. It looks like a different room is being used in this interview. Yes. Do you know why that is? Uh, for technology purposes, we okay. switched to the uh, conference room. And what time of day is depicted in slide two? Uh, 13, 30 hours, which would be 1.30 p.m. Okay, I'd ask to play Exhibit 2, please. Go ahead. And you mean it's slide 2? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you forwarded your mail. Thank you. Uh, you, you would see it in the post office box. I forwarded my mail. Yeah, did you forward your mail to Scott's house? A while back, yeah. Yeah, but you still have stuff going to the post, post box. But not that. Okay. I'm talking about the BMO Harris box. Oh, the BMO, okay. Uh, BMO Harris, yeah, there's nothing in it. Nothing. Nothing. We had to get a warrant, and it took us, it was a debacle getting into that thing, but we got into it, and there was nothing in there. A little stone, some fake stone, I'm just I'm not saying fake, fake things, but just stone. 
So what do you think about that? Would they change the lockbox key yet? I don't know. We drilled the hole. They didn't, they didn't say anything about changing a key or anything. Did they tell you last time anybody was there? Uh, we're still waiting to find out, but nobody's been there for months. Yeah. Last time me and Mom went there was when she died. That was the, the day after. Okay. And nobody's been there since. That you know of? Yeah. And either you or your mom had the key? Uh, yeah. And I don't think Anthony has one, but he'd be the only other person on the lockbox, so okay. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a key. I'm most positive. So who had keys? Um, Lynn had a key, and then I had a key. And what did you do with Lynn's key? We couldn't. Oh, I don't know. We never found it. Okay. I never found mine afterwards. That's why I contacted them, because I said I have to have the lock changed because I can't access it. Okay. And the last time I went there, I wrote a check, and they said they'd be in touch, and never went any further. And that was I don't know March April maybe. So when you and Jennifer went there, mm -hmm. what was in there? What did you remember seeing again? We took out a roll. Um, that's what she had instructions of what we were supposed to take out, and it was a rolled up paper, and it just gave instructions what to do. And then she had more stuff in the back, and I knew from prior because she said that's what stays there if you ever need it. And what was it? I don't know exactly what it was. I know she had something marked down with stuff about money. She had some kind of statement she wrote when she first asked for help, stating if you ever got in trouble or if anything ever came out, it's there for you. And then she had, um, she said she had something on tape. I don't know. I never saw it, so I don't know. That's all I, I know. I don't know anything about a diamond or fake diamond. Or, I don't know anything about that. And this was the box in Lynn's name, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've never had a, a safety deposit box ever. Okay. My PO box, I've had that for a long time. And what about the park? We went there. Couldn't find it. It's a little bit bigger of an area than we thought. It's a little for me. We went there that night. A bunch of us went. <laughs> Give a better general description on where I mean I know you gave instant tears when they can't find the box that she made up and that she said she buried. Now she's crying. <laughs> give me your best uh job without I mean if I was there, I'd be able to help, but I know I can't go there, I'm not asking that. I just I need I need fucking that help. I don't have anything else. I think that's all I am. Where's the storage shed, Jessica? I know there's a storage shed. There isn't. I swear to God, there's not a storage shed. I, I put that in everything. I just said that because I thought by saying that that would help me get out. I swear to you on everything, there's no storage shed. I put my life on it. In nobody's name, not in mine. I've never had one except for a long time ago. Detective, at the beginning of this clip, there was discussion of a P.O. box. Do you remember that? Yes. Did you investigate whether there was a po post office box significant in this case? Yes, we did. Was there one? Yes, there was. Whose was that? Ms. Kurczewski's. Did investigators check that box? Yes. Was there anything in it? No. Where was that located? I believe that one was in Hales Corners. <clears throat> Moving to slide three, please. Oh, it's all I had was that two spots. And the one I didn't even have, that was hers. Now, what happened to your key for the deposit box? When me and mom went through that day, I don't know, we had so much stuff of Lynn's and it got, I don't know, we don't know, we never found it. Never found it. Even mom said the same thing. She kept asking me. I talked to the bank like four times and I said, I don't, I can't find it. They said, well, just hang on until you empty out her condo and keep looking. I've looked everywhere. We can never find it. I've never been back. I swear to you. I mean, they'll know that. You'll know that when you look at the records. I can't find it. What, what, and tell me again, what was in the bag that was buried? There was two pieces of the gun, not like full gun, just two pieces. There was some eye drops from 
I want to say like two, maybe three times, just a few bottles each from different dates. And there was a receipt. That was it. And what were the receipts again? The receipts were for the gun. And I don't even know. I think I might have had. It was for the gun. I know that. And I don't know what else. There was other receipts that I saved. I don't know if I ever saved anything from I don't know. I really don't know. I know for sure there was a receipt from the gun. I, I know I had these two spots, like the one Lynn had, and I did my own, and I always thought, I always have backup, I have something, I have something, and now you're telling me I have nothing, and that's all I have. Oh my goodness, cry me a river. That was like her plan, her plan, find the box, and now it's gone. The box that never existed is now gone. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't tell that I know. <laughs> Does your mom know about the stuff that was buried in the backyard or in the back in the woods right there? No. I told her briefly about it the other day, but I wouldn't tell her where or anything. I just told her it's at the bar. That's all I said because I didn't want to tell her so she didn't create a problem. So she didn't go digging it up herself? No, I know she didn't. No, I'm just saying you didn't want her to? Is that it? No, because I wanted you guys to buy it. She was mad because she said she wanted to go with you guys, but that was it. She doesn't have any idea where. No, why, why, why does she want to go with us? Because she just said, I feel comfortable if I'm with, so I can at least see what they find. Oh, it's not like we hide anything. I'm not saying you would. I, I didn't think that. That's why I didn't tell her. I didn't need more of a problem because she would create more of a problem. Like she always does with everything. What? What is she saying now? Um, Max Collins says, I'm weird. I love interrogation tapes. Well, if you wear it, then I'm weird. Then we're all weird because I think we all love it. But, you know, some of these uh, suspects are really quite unbearable to watch, but we still love it. We love being here together, watching it together. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. We are watching day 10 of the trial. Oh, Jesse has just turned on the waterworks again. Let me guess, she's going to be giggling any minute now again, because that's what she does, right? Uh, we'll do some more. We did a poll earlier. I'm not so... I don't like doing a poll after a poll after... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I like to just focus on what's happening. We can do a poll when there's something to do a poll about again. Um, like when it gets closer to jury deliberation. I wonder how long that'll be, right? I'm just waiting to hear this all weekend, I thought for sure. <laughs> was it, were the metal, the, the gun parts, were they metal? Um, I don't know, they were black. You order it from the company. Do you remember what company? I know, it's like you pulled out a computer and looked online. I was sure I could figure out one of them, but I don't know if I don't know. I mean, I would assume it's metal. It was black. I know that. I I don't think it'd be plastic. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I can picture it. I can see it, but I don't know what it was made of. I know she had to actually do some filing on it and some stuff to it, but I want to say part of it had to be metal. Okay. And you bought that, or she bought that with, uh, or using your phone? My phone. And her credit card. Correct. Do you remember how many cards were being used uh, while she was alive, Jesse? How many? Yeah. On hand, maybe 12 to 14. Okay. Now, were you an authorized user on most of those accounts? I think so. I don't know. Okay. She just I mean, she always gave me permission to use them. Okay. I don't know that she added it on all of them. I, don't, I honestly don't know. Okay. So when... When you would do stuff or when you go to the store where you buy her stuff, no. would she just give you the card? No. So you didn't have like a second card in her name? No. So you were just using no. the original card? She would give me whatever one she wanted me to use. And she just changed it up because, like I told you, she kept sticky notes and she liked like to switch things up. She didn't always use the same card for things. Oh, she, and she would have food stamps too? Yeah. Okay. Is that for the disability or was she, dis was she technically disabled? Shame. Every time the prosecution's like, 
Okay, we've just got a few more. <laughs> Slide four is 12 minutes long, so we could break or do one more. Let's watch one more. <laughs> we could say like a, a vlogger is doing, roll the tapes. <laughs> We're ready to roll another 12 minute clip. Are you ready? I told you guys at the be beginning of this day, buckle up. Buckle up, it's another quite a full day of listening to all of this. So when you walk in the park, do you know that when we're talking about that same area that there's like a little nature trail right yeah. there, right? Now if I'm on college, you know, and I'm, and I'm walking, you know, like this is, let's say your mom's building is right here, okay? Yeah. And that this starts, this starts the, the preserve. Yeah. There's a trail right here. Where you bury it, is it on this side or this side? Is it on the right side? Yeah, it'd be on the right side. Okay, on the right side. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is, I mean, we've, we've done as much as we could without making a total scene, but um, there were a lot of rocks, a lot of stuff that, you, you know, you said it was possible by a rock, yeah. but a lot of rocks. When I went there, there wasn't a lot of rocks. Okay. There was, like, bigger, bolder kind of rocks. And then there was obviously I like smaller that. landscaping kind of style rocks. Yeah. So are you are you talking about the bigger boulder no. style or like a small no, rock? A that smaller you rock I put on top. It was probably like maybe a, like my hand size. I mean, it wasn't huge. It was just. And then back there too, there's kind of like um, some decorative fencing areas mm -hmm. um, where the fences are just kind of like linked in lane. Is it by anything in specific? As Because we we did go off of the two yeah. buildings that you were telling us on, you know, that rough location yeah. on the map. Um, and, and there is, I mean, the whole area kind of looks the same. Yeah. There's I know, that's, that's what we did. It's been the same since I can remember. How far off that trail do you think it was? <laughs> Maybe a few feet? I mean, it wasn't anything extreme. So it was closer to the trail than it was to the apartments? I would say it had almost five feet off the trail. Yeah, I would think it would be closer to the trail than the apartments without looking. So the, those two buildings, I know when we talked on Friday, you were saying it would be like from the stop sign, you would go about 30 feet down and then maybe 10 feet yeah. back. So the two buildings that we were kind of working off of are significantly further right. than 30 feet in. Then it has to be the first building. I just know it was roughly about, I don't, I wasn't paying attention to the buildings. I was assuming looking at the map, but I know when I walked it, I know it was roughly, I would guess, 30 feet, no more. I mean, I didn't go huge in there, so I don't know if it was that first building then, the one that's off the map, I'm going by what I saw on the map. I know when I used to go in the park, I mean, I didn't pay attention to the buildings, I know the grass, you know, where the grass starts and where the, um, the mud starts. And I know, plain as day, I used to always go through the same area, always. I mean, I've done this since we know when she says swear to God or knows it plain as day. She oh, and I get it. I know that. It's just such a crazy story. I don't know how she thinks this will help her at all. As someone said in chat earlier, it's like she's buried a kill kit and you know she's upset they can't find it and she's saying she buried it while Lynn was in the hospital. I mean, it's just a huge red flag. She should be in a red outfit. And there, I mean, I, I give you my word on everything. There is no storage. There is none. I just said it because I thought by saying that 
that give me some lightweight. There is no storage. I'm not, there's nothing to joke around about. There is no storage. I'm telling you. I mean, I'm at, at, at this is all I have left. I'm willing to give you anything if I have it. I don't have anything else. And I was so sure you'd get something from the box. I was sure of it. I don't have anything else. I've run out of lies. <laughs> I've sent you on a goose chase. I've told you where the kill kit would be. And now I don't have anything else. Yeah, okay, then just stop talking and get an attorney. I can't take much more of this. I'm, I'm at the point where I'm telling you everything I can. I'm willing to do anything I can. I didn't do this. I didn't kill her. I did not kill her. You played a role, Jeff. All I did was buy it. That's all I did. I bought it. I bought it. And for that, I'm looking at murder. You gave her the bottle. It was the bottle she wanted. She knew what it was. So I did didn't... you. You knew, Jesse. You knew what it was. But she knew it. what it was. It was her doing. So what did you, though? So what did you? <laughs> but that doesn't mean... Ladies and gentlemen, this is an exhibit of victim blaming to the max. It's all Lynn's fault. She did it. She wanted it. Like, come on. <laughs> Inna, 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 Malcolmson says, can you hurry and find my box of lies? I'm all out over here. You didn't find the magical box where I buried my bunny? Okay. Take it right! Nah, I'm both hands in the Unintended consequences, and you know when you came to the table, it was unintended because you knew that uh, Lynn had looked it up and said that it could kill you. It could kill her, and you knew that, and you knew she said that, and you knew that had six bottles in there, and you were worried about it. You thought that what could possibly could have happened. And you know I no keep laying back everything in my head, and you guys keep saying I staged it. I staged it. Why didn't I take that bottle? Why didn't I take that bottle? I would have taken that bottle. And if you guys would have taken it, you would have known I never opened the bottle. Was well, there no prints of me opening that bottle? Well, your prints be on it because you gave it. You gave it to her. I know, but they'd be on the bottle, not opening it. I've never touched the top of it. You say that though, Jesse. You say. If you, if you did this, if you did that, I know, but, because but it, you didn't tell them. It's one of those things, all you can do is go back and say, if I would have, if I would have. You can't, I can't change what happened. I can't go back. Trust me, if I could, I'd do a million things differently. A million. I wouldn't be sitting here right now at all. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, what more is there I can do? What more can I, can I show you or try or give you because I'm there. I'm so there. She says, what more can I do or show you or try? Literally out of games right now. I don't know how to lie anymore. <laughs> That's basically what she's saying. She's like, oh, man. She's doing the whiny voice. It's even worse than the other voice. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we are there. I mean, we're trying. I know. But every day, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday, we got different stories, Jesse. I talked to you on Thursday. I told you the importance of telling us the truth and how the perception of what you tell us, how it looks later on. And then Friday, you tell us all this other stuff that you didn't tell us before. I'm telling you right now, you, you right now, I, I don't know what to think. I want to know the truth. I want to know every detail. I do it with any possible way. I'm not doing it to try to round her. I'm doing it to try to save my own ass. Is there any way, like, I could go to the park or I can see video while you're at the park and help point you to something, anything? I'm trying to hear. I'm trying so hard. This is my last week yeah. saving grace. We might, be able to, we might be able to try and figure something out. You might be able to try and figure something out. But in the meantime... Ooh, you know who her voice reminds me of right now? Is, remember Quentin Simon? Remember that case? Uh, Quentin's mom? She was also doing the... That's when they cried, just like... 
through through their teeth. Literally, it's crying through their teeth while lying through their teeth. Remember that. Her voice sounds the same. I want to know every other detail that you think you've left out so far to us about this whole thing. From finances to credit cards to who's doing this and who's doing that. I want to know every single detail. Okay, it has what, to be. What, 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 do you, what do you think? What have, you, have you left out? What have you left out? You've been thinking about it. You've got no... I know, but I can't like think, think of what I left out. I can't like think like that. Like, What do you mean, what did I leave out? I... Ask me and I'll tell you, but I don't know what you're what you're we'll getting. Fill out the applications for loans in those last few months. For loans? Yeah. I'd fill them out with her next to me. Right next to me. Okay. Why did you do that? But there was denied? there was none towards the end that we did. The last of them that we did were, I want to say like three months before she died. Yeah, that's the last few months of her life. Well, I. I why 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 were they denied? denied? Um, because of her income, because of how much she had out there, um, as far as what she already had, like, debt-wise, and... How scary that now she's just talking normally again. It's like, <laughs> and now she's like, okay, well, about the finances. So those loan applications, I'm like, whoa, lady, that was hectic to call Dr. Lewis. <laughs> Dr. Lewis, can you help this lady out? <laughs> Barbara, thank you so much. You said officially a grizzly today again. Remember, and I really appreciate it. Just want to remind everyone that if you want to be an official grizzly, all you got to do is subscribe. You don't have to become a member. I appreciate every single member. But just subscribe, hit it again, set the notifications to all so you don't miss out when I upload a video for you or a YouTube short or we do a live stream or there's a community tab a post for you. I'm always doing something for you. And then I have a second channel too called Grizzly True Crime Shorts. A little bit difficult to find unless you filter for channels. So therefore, it's under my recommended channels and it's on my website on the homepage if you just scroll down a little bit. So yes, thank you so much, Barbara. Ameri America, Jessan, welcome to Grizzly Supporter. <laughs> Stefan says, Jesse's tear disappeared like the box, five feet under. Just like that, in an instant. Just like, ooh, we're talking finances now. Okay. The one for the house, I don't remember what they said on that one. I think it was income too, to be honest. Never anyone being denied because there were suspicious numbers or numbers used? Not that I know of. I know when me and her did like Wells Fargo, which was way before, um, they had something with the address, maybe? I don't remember. It was something, I don't want to say numbers, though, but it was something. They had said something. It was something. I mean, it was something, but it was also something. We heard your call to Wells Fargo, lady. Formerly Fossil says, true crime loser calls us a cry lie <laughs> when you're lying and crying at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And they called and talked to her. Did they think it was fraudulent activity? Um, I don't know if they thought it, I honestly don't know offhand, that one was a while ago and we did so many afterward, um, but they, they spoke to her directly, so I don't know. I think there may have been one or two that like questioned like who it was or so forth, but she always talked to anybody, always. Anytime there was an issue or they questioned something that I know of that she talked to them. When she got stuff in the mail, she'd call him back on it. I mean, because she did get stuff in the mail, too. These poor detectives. <laughs> I intentionally was not taking any money from her without her giving it. I didn't take out any loans in her name, nothing. I, I can honestly say I did not do that. What about the one check where she writes out a significant amount, thousands of dollars to you, and says it's for the IRS for you? A lot of the checks that she wrote me, most of them, well, I should say at the very beginning, were to pay off creditors. She always put something in the memo line, and her reasoning was is because if anybody came back on it, we could say there's something there. Um, a lot of them, she basically, um, three of them that she wrote, we went shopping with, both of us. And she always said if she wrote it in her own name, it would do something with her 
Um, she got money from the state and from Social Security and from her WIC. So she always, like, moved her money very carefully, like, especially from her money market to her checking and so forth. But I never took a dollar from her. I never wrote one check, I swear to God. She swears to God, okay? She never wrote one check. That's true. She wrote 28. <laughs> never wrote one check. I wrote many. <laughs> that would be the end of that sentence. Not one, swear to God. Just 28 of them. Stole not one dime from her. All her money. God, I never wrote one check. I can say that quite clearly. You never right? signed her name. No. I mean... So, so, a hand, so a handwritten wait, effort... On, on a credit card? Yes, obviously, because she gave me permission. Um, but on an actual check, did I ever send her name unless it was for a bill? No. Only for bills. And that was when I was right next to her in the hospital. She had me write out. Some of them we wrote and some we called. Um, but those were the only checks I ever wrote from her account. Ever. I can honest to God say she always wrote her checks. Uh honest to God. Ever. Did you see how she said ever? <laughs> ever. Like a real liar. <laughs> she said it with a lot of emphasis. Ever. Never ever did I ever. Swear to God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. How does she think she'll get through this? Because there's something called data that, that will prove otherwise. Up until literally when she was in the hospital, she had me write a few for bills. I didn't... As Shauna said, what kind of cop movies is she watching? What is she watching? She's like, oh, you know, like that true crime. Oh, no, no. What kind of true crime are you watching? Or are you watching old movies that are just super so much fiction or what what is going on because she's making up a lot of crap here right one to myself not one i can i can say that without a doubt in my mind because i know i didn't I've, I've never sold money from her ever i never had a reason to she always gave it to me never detective during this clip <clears throat> There's a discussion of Whitnell Park. Do you remember that piece? Yes. When you went there with investigators, what did you have to go off of in terms of where you were looking? Uh, the information that Ms. Krasetsky, Ms. Krasetsky was telling us regarding and then a map that we had utilized the interview before. I'm sorry, a what? A map. Okay. There, Ms. Krasetsky in this clip mentions wanting to be able to go there virtually by video, right? She makes a comment towards that, yes. Is that something that your department facilitated in this case? Yes, it is. Okay. Those are all the questions I have on this clip. All right, this will be a good opportunity to take our lunch break. Thank you, everyone. Did you see that? Pa, pa, teleport through that lunch break. Isn't that nice? <laughs> It's the beauty of the one-day delay. I love it. It's just like, okay, it's like those clappers for lights. And we're through the lunch break. Let's keep going, shall we? <laughs> and of course, there's also all the paper flapping and pauses taken out for you. Yes. Yurts and Things says, are the people at the courtroom giving any info on how the jury is responding? I don't have any info like that. Um, so I think that Anthony Poser is actually watching here with us sometimes. So, Anthony, if there's anything you'd like to share with us, please do. My email is grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com. And if anyone is in the courtroom, remember, we're on a day delay, so please don't share spoilers here now. But if you could tell us how did the jury react to what we're currently watching, which was yesterday's live trial day, um, please tell us. How is the jury responding to all of this? What are their faces doing? Are they buying it or what? <laughs> please be seated. Detective Poppy, do you acknowledge you remain under oath? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. Go ahead, you may continue. Thank you, Judge. Detective Happy, when we broke for lunch, uh, we had watched the first few slides of Exhibit 206, right? Yes. And <clears throat> what date was that interview? July 16th, 2019. Okay. 
the when we broke there was I had asked you whether the sheriff's department tried to facilitate a video communication at Whitnell Park remember yes and did that happen yes it did in the remaining slides of exhibit 206 um, in the interest of time can you summarize what's being done during that portion of the interview we had multiple detectives on scene at Whitnell Park I believe we had and it was at least one, possibly two metal detectors. So we were going through the area where Ms. Krzyzewski had uh, pointed to on a map and had best described the area where she had buried these items. Our detectives were combing through that area looking for any uh, freshly dug or disturbed dirt. Um, and then obviously utilizing the metal detectors, attempting to locate uh, the, uh, probably the gun pieces that we were specifically looking for. During this time, we had a live feed, uh, almost a FaceTime uh, feed over an iPad, where we, uh, being myself, uh, Detective Schwartz and Ms. Krzyzewski, were in the in, uh, conference room, and detectives on scene were kind of giving us an idea of where they were at, and we were trying to best have Ms. Krzyzewski explain uh, where this possibly could be. Was Ms. Krzyzewski giving live updates and information to those detectives at Whitnell Park? Yes, this was a live time feed, and uh, she was having access. It, she would have. She was. She had access to view what we were seeing on the iPad. Do you know how long detectives were at Whitnell Park that day? Hours. I couldn't tell you specifically, but it was uh, multiple hours. Was that the first time detectives went to Whitnell Park to look for these items? No, it was not. When did they go before that? I believe that was either the day of the 12th or over the week, or possibly Monday the 15th. It was prior to the 16th, though. The first time that detectives went to Whitnell Park, was there a live communication between those individuals and Ms. Krzyzewski? There was not. But on the second visit, there was? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Is a large portion of the remainder of the interview actually have the lights dimmed? The majority does, yes. Why? Uh, so we could have a better view uh, of what we were trying to see. Obviously, it, it was a, it's an older iPad, so it wasn't the best technology, um, but we were attempting to enhance the view a little bit so we could see what was going on. Did, were you able to see metal detectors being used during that search? I believe so, yes. Okay. In a clip that the jury saw already, you asked Ms. Krzyzewski whether the gun was metal. Do you remember that? I do. Um, do you remember what she said about that when you asked her? Um, initially or later on in the interview? Initially. Initially that it was, uh, she believed it was an all, all metal pieces. Did that change in the remainder of the interview? Yes, it did. How? When our detectives were out there with the metal detector, um, and at that, some point we did say that, you know, we obviously had not found anything and we were having no success, uh, Ms. Krzyzewski stated that uh, she now believed that parts of it was plastic. Oh, man. Shame. And he looks just so disappointed in all of this. Like, oh, man. The, the goose chase that Jesse sent them on, going out to that park more than once, eventually on an iPad and with like a video call showing Jesse where now, where? You know, a little more left, a little more right. We read this uh, in that probable cause affidavit, so if you missed that video, go check it out if you're not too familiar with this case. Thank you so much, Sharon Matter. As you say, it's like just like the movie Sixth Sense uh, where the mom poisoned the little boy. Yeah, that's scary. I forgot about that scene. Thank you so much for your sticker. Yeah, <laughs> look, at, look at his face. Shame. And then when they can't find anything, she's like, oh, I think it was plastic. Just changes her story the whole time. We had three hours and three minutes out of five hours and three minutes. But remember, we're not going to watch all of the cross-examination. It's just too unbearable. Do the metal detectors have any success in locating metal buried near that area in Whitnell Park? There were metal objects that were located, yes. Okay. Anything relevant to this case? No. Throughout the remaining about 40 minutes of that interview, is there any um, new information or different information that the jury has not already heard uh, in one of the previous interviews? No, I do not believe so. Okay. 
I'm going to move on then. Um, Detective, I want to ask you a few questions about handwriting. That's a scary thought, right? Crime Time Crochet says, okay, hear me out. What if she held Lynn at gunpoint and forced her to drink? That's why she hid the stuff, if she hid it at all. That's a scary thought. Oh, my word. Now we're going to go through some letters and then text messages and mapping. We might teleport a bit forward through that mapping because we can't see it all too well and it's that cell phone mapping, you know what I mean? But remember, the full version of this Deep Life trial day will be pinned in the comments for you if you want to see those uh, moments. During your investigation, did your department receive any correspondence from Ms. Kraszewski? Yes. Um, just one time or more than that? Multiple. Do you Did you become aware that Ms. Kraszewski was writing to many different people? Yes, we were aware. Did that include the district attorney's office? Yes. The medical examiner's office? Yes. State government entities? Yes. Do you know whether that also included the media? Yes. Did it? Yes, it did. Okay. <clears throat> At any point in time throughout that letter writing campaign, did you reach out to um, the facility where Ms. Kraszewski was? Yes, I did. And was that in April of 2020? Yes. Why did you reach out to them? There was information received that Ms. Krasuski had documents in her possession which would be valuable for the investigation. Has the jury already seen some of those documents? I believe so. Okay. Um, detective, and I guess we can publish at this point, I'll be publishing Exhibit 56. Uh, do you recall these letters being shown to the jury already in this case? Yes. And these were actually entered into evidence by the defense. Is that true? Yes. Switching to exhibit. These letters were most likely, in my opinion, written by Jesse. And yes, she's pretending that Lynn wrote all these letters. We looked at some of them before where she said, I worry about my cats. What will come of them? Please put them down. Scatter them with my ashes and parents. I got both of them when I got out of prison. There's where she says from the human society instead of humane society. And she said the same on Facebook, which is also quite a tell that Jesse wrote these letters. And unbelievably, the judge, we'll see some of that uh, tomorrow actually. The judge points out to the defense, do not in front of the jury bring up a letter that says that, that Lynn wrote that says that she poisoned her own mother with Visine. I mean, I just, I can't even believe that. So this, these are, just so for your understanding, I want to make sure it's clear that Jesse probably wrote these. Okay, MKO says, I PayPal. Thank you so much. Oh my word. That's the number one way to support the work that I do because it's direct to me. So thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. I will reply to your messages uh, there on PayPal. I always do. Thank you. 222, please, which is also already in evidence. Detective, what's the difference that you can see in page one between Exhibit 56 and 222? Going back to 56? Going back to 56, please. And then 222? Obviously, this uh, one has been filed. Okay. Is that the same probate case that the jury's already heard about? Yes. Okay. Do you know whether these letters were sent to individuals other than the probate case by Ms. Kraszewski? No, they were not. Okay. Going to Exhibit 56. Did you receive these letters during your investigation? Yes, we did. Where did you get them from? They were made at the, at the request that we, that we made at the facility. Okay. Were they found in a location that was being used by Ms. Kraszewski only? Yes. <clears throat> what did these letters purport to be? Uh, allegedly suicide letters um, written out to multiple different individuals. 
or goodbye letters per se? Your Honor, to his interpretation of what the letters are, they speak for themselves. There's 27 pages. Well, then he can read from portions of them. <laughs> I really like this judge. Well, then he can read from portions of them. Letters written by Jesse, pretending to be Lynn. Detective, why don't you take a look at page one and um, point out some information from it that you think would help the jury understand what the topics of these letters are. Based on this information, this, again, sounds like a goodbye letter. What does it say that makes you think that? Besides that, I worry about my cats, what will come of them. Please put them down and scatter them with my ashes. Going down to line five, I want to poison them with me, but I don't know if I will be able to, if they are still alive when you find me, or I couldn't do it. And where did you get this letter? Uh, from the lo location where Miss Grzeski was at the time. And she was residing there? Yes. Okay. I'd like to have Ms. DeVolcanier slowly scroll through the pages of Exhibit 56. On page 19 of Exhibit 56, Detective, if we can scroll to the bottom, what is the date next to the signature? September 15th, 2018. Where was Lynn Hernan on September 15th of 2018? In Waukesha Memorial Hospital. September 16th, 2018. Where was Lynn Hernan on that day? Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Do you recall Detective... Um, Anthony Poza testifying during this trial about some letters that the defendant gave him? Yes, Mr. Poza testified. Okay. Do you know if these are the same letters that he saw? I do not believe so. Okay. And you received these in what month and year? I believe those were April, April of 2020. Okay. And then if we go back to Exhibit 222, can you please indicate what date that exhibit was filed on Exhibit 222? June 17th, 2020, 2020. I believe the last piece of our timeline in Exhibit 228 involves April. Can you please put the year uh, next to it and just indicate that you received these letters in that time frame, please? Detective, the last piece of uh, information I'd like to chat with you about is more having to do with the downloads. So again, um, you, were you able to review Exhibit 168 in this case, which is Ms. Kraszewski's phone download? Yes. Were you also able to review Mr. Craig's phone download in Exhibit 170? Yes. Did you also get to look at the AT&T records that were obtained in Exhibit 172? Yes. Uh, I'd like to show the witness only, please, several exhibits, and I can list them off. Exhibit 168. 174, 175, 176, 177, 178, and 179. Starting with 174, Detective, do you recognize 174? Yes, I do. And if we can scroll to the bottom of the page, do you know what this is? Yes, I do. What is it? It's uh, part of the, I believe this is going to be the, the timeline from the cell phone download, download from Ms. Uh, Krasowski. Does it look like a fair and accurate copy of that portion of the timeline? Yes, it does. Moving to 175. Detective, do you recognize this? Yes, I do. What is it? Uh, going to, it looks like it's going to be another uh, expert from the timeline belong, of the cell phone download belonging to uh, Mr. Craig. Okay. Is this exhibit multiple pages? Yes. Have you seen it before? I have. Does it look like a fair and accurate copy of the portion of the timeline for Mr. Craig's phone? Yes, it does. Going to exhibit 176, please. Detective, what are we looking at here? These are uh, the down, I'm sorry, these are the cell phone records we obtained from AT&T in regards to uh, the cell phone records for Miss Krzyzewski. How many? I'm just going to go a little bit faster. Eight pages is Exhibit 176. Uh, Eleven. Now, in this case, was AT&T able to give you some information about SMS messages? Yes, they were. Were they able to give you the content of the messages? No, they were not. What were they able to give you? 
uh, obviously time, date, and uh, location data of the text message. Is Exhibit 176 an accurate copy of a portion of those records for the defendant's phone in Exhibit 172? Yes, it is. Detective, do you recognize 178? Yes, I do. What is it? I believe these are going to be uh, the call records uh, for Ms. Krzyzewski's uh, cell phone. Do they appear to be a fair and accurate copy of a portion of those records? Yes, they do. In terms of exhibits 174 through, I'm sorry, in terms of exhibit 174, 175, 176, and 178, are all these exhibits focused around a certain period of time? Yes, they are. What time frame, date or time frame is that? Uh, basically the date of October 3rd, 2018. I would move exhibits 174, 175, 176, and 178 <clears throat> into evidence. No objection. Exhibits 174, 175, 176, and 178 are all received. No. Detective, were you able to compare those different sources of information um, in this case? Yes, we were. And based on all of those different pieces of information, were you able to determine whether uh, there were things missing from Ms. Krzyzewski's download? Yes, we were. Was there? Yes, there were. I'd like to show you Exhibit 177 and ask if you recognize what that is. That is the demonstrative exhibit of the download and cell phone, uh, the cell phone download and or the time excerpt timeline along with some of the records that we received. Have you seen that exhibit before? I have. I move it into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 177 is received, permission to publish granted. Detective, is it fair to say that this is uh, some snippets of those other exhibits that we just talked about? Correct. Moving to slide two, please. Could you remind the jury what exhibit 168 is again? Uh, the forensic uh, download belonging to Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone. Okay. There's two line items highlighted on, on slide two. Could you tell the jury why? Um, those were uh, pertinent as far as the time frame goes. Now, if you are looking at a timeline on a phone download, does it only show messaging? No, it does not. What does the timeline show? Timeline will show, usually show you everything from uh, call history, uh, internet usage possibly, and then a uh, text message or uh, some downloads will even pick up uh, social media usage. This is from the day that Lynn died. That's why they highlighted it. 10-3-2018, 2.44.51 p.m., 2.45.33 p.m. Because she had been at Lynn's house in the morning and then left to go shopping, run errands, but open accounts in Lynn's name and go shopping. So, <laughs> Other than what's being shown right now, was there any more data on Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone from October 3rd of 2018 on the timeline? No, there's not. Okay. Any messages in the t this timeline portion between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig? Not on this download, no. Okay. If we can go to slide three, please. Detective, can you explain to the jury what they're looking at here? This is a portion of the cell phone records obtained from AT&T, and specifically this would be regarding SMS or text messages. <coughs> there are some words in red that have been put on slide three. Were those in the records? No, they were not. Okay, so why were those added on? Just for to make it a little more readable and understand uh, the originating and terminating and along with the time change. Okay. The two items that are highlighted, what's the date for those items? October 3rd, 2018, and the actual time in uh, Central Standard Time would have been 2.44 p.m. Now, page 2328 of this record that the jury is looking at, does that speak to calls and messages and voicemails, everything together? That's just strictly SMS. What is SMS? Text messaging. Okay. 
Is every entry on this page from October 3rd of 18? Yes, it is. And whose records are these? Ms. Krasowski's. Is, the, is this record consistent with slide two that we just looked at? No, it is not. Moving to slide four, please. Detective, what is the jury seeing here? This is a portion of the timeline taken from uh, the cell phone download of Mr. Craig's cell phone. From what day? October 3rd. Uh, for those that missed who that is, that would be Jesse's uh, ex-boyfriend. That was her boyfriend at the time, Scott Craig. He was on the stand as well on one of the days. So, yes. 2018. What? Who is the... Uh... Who's the other party involved in these messages? Ms. Krasowski. Did these messages appear on Ms. Krasowski's download timeline? No, they did not. Okay. You've reviewed a lot of phone downloads over time, is that true? Yes. Sometimes are you able to see deleted items? Yes. Are you always able to recover everything that's deleted? No. Specifically with Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone download, do you believe that all deleted items were recovered? No. Detective, when you reviewed Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone download, um, was this the only day that you recognized things missing from it? No, I do not believe so. Okay. In this case, was Jennifer Flowers' phone downloaded? Yes, it was. Were you able to review that? Yes. Was there material missing for large portions of time on that download? Yes. <clears throat> Were you able to review Scott Craig's phone download in this case? Yes. Did you see large portions of time that appeared to be missing from his download? No, we did not. Okay. I'd like to show just the witness exhibit 179, please. Detective, have you seen 179 before? I have. What is it? It is a demonstrative of uh, text communications uh, on October 3rd, 2018. Is this exhibit displaying multiple sources of data? Yes, it is. Does that include the phone download from Ms. Krzyzewski? Yes. Does it include the phone download of Mr. Craig? Yes. Does it include the call and message data from AT&T? Yes. Do you believe this is a fair and accurate representation of the communications that occurred on October 3rd, 2018 in this case? Yes, I do. I move exhibit 179 into evidence, ask for permission to publish. No objection. Exhibit 179 is received, permission to publish granted. She looks so finished off, I look at her. Sure. Again, Detective, is slide one giving some information for the jury about this exhibit? Yes. Moving to slide two. Actually, I can click it with this handy thing here. What, um, why are these three numbers included on the second slide? Uh, this shows you, along with uh, the color of who's... Uh... It's like presentation time. <laughs> so, Jesse, Jennifer, her mom, and Scott Craig. Jesse, pink. Her mom, green, Scott, blue. Uh, number and information we're looking at in the upcoming frames. How did you know what was? Through records and obviously uh, in our interviews. Okay. <laughs> Moving to the next slide. Um, Detective, I see on this slide that there's one box that's not filled in at the top. What yeah. does that mean? That means that the message was deleted and uh, or that we don't have the content of that message. So how do you know that there was a message at that time? Through the records received from AT&T. Okay. It's just 
Pause there for a second. Jesse to Jennifer. Jesse to Scott. So that's deleted. How's it going? Scott. Okay, busy. Jesse to Scott. Okay. What kind of fruit do you? Jesse to Jennifer, her mom. Eight second duration. I think that means deleted, right? That's what I'm reading from it. Jesse to Jennifer. And then another three second call. What is going on here? Look at the time as well. What are they doing? There's three boxes for the bottom that have white in them. Um, what? Where is that information from? Uh, the, again, the AT&T cell records. The boxes shaded in pink or blue. Where is that information coming from? From the download. Okay. So if you could please walk through this, it's not a very long exhibit. If anyone's feeling a little bit exhausted from the day, as much as we made it very concise, don't worry, we're almost done with this day of the trial. And we will call it a day because we need to save our energy for tomorrow when the defense <laughs> examines their first witness. I think it's going to be very hectic. If it's too painful, we'll just uh, teleport through it, you know, rapid speed. We can just <laughs> increase that speed once it's all defluffed, okay? So we're almost done here. And, and describe for the jury what they're looking at. What does this mean? On October 3rd of 2018, um, we obviously have an unknown content uh, text message from <laughs> Ms. Krzyzewski to uh, Ms. Flower. And then uh, there's no data until 11.52 when Ms. Krzyzewski sends Mr. Craig a message stating, how's it going? Uh, Mr. Craig replies. We obviously uh, have a short reply. Uh, and then a question from Ms. Krzyzewski, Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig, which we have that information. And then um, a call uh, at 12.06 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts eight seconds. Um, at that point, we have uh, another unknown text message at 12.06 p.m from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, along with uh, two additional phone calls at 12.07 p.m. and 12.10 p.m., the first lasting three seconds and the second lasting six seconds. Is the text message content on this slide something that you were able to find in Ms. Krzyzewski's phone? No. Where did you get that from? Mr. Craig's. Okay. Moving to the next slide, we're on the same date. If you could walk through this slide, please. Again, another text message at 12.13 p.m. Uh, from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower with uh, known content. We have uh, exchange of messages, uh, which we've seen before from 1237 through 107 uh, between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig. And then at 109 p.m., uh, there's another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig, which lasts 18 seconds. Okay. What about slide five? Uh, begins with a text message at 119 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig. And then at 1.37 p.m., there is an incoming message to Ms. Krzyzewski's cell phone from Ms. Flowers, again, with no content. A reply seconds after from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. And then less than two minutes later at 1.39 p.m., Ms. Flower responds to Ms. Krzyzewski. And at one, a few seconds later, Ms. Krzyzewski replies to Ms. Flower. Again, there will be no content on those four text messages. And then there's a giant red flag. Why is she deleting all these messages to her mom? What did she say? What's going on there in the communication on the day Lynn died between her mom and her? Sure. Did you also notice on the earlier text messages um, between Jesse and Scott that Scott was feeling really nauseous that day? He didn't know why, and he said he's feeling kind of fluish. I worry about that too. I worry about that too. <laughs> Angie says, I like your haircut, G. Thank you. I did it myself. <laughs> Cut my own hair. <laughs> Thank you so much. Further exchanges between 2.16 p.m. and 2.17 p.m. between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig. Slide six. At 2.17 p.m., there is an outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Mr. Craig, which lasts 20 seconds. And then seconds later, uh, there is a text message uh, exchange that begins at 2.17 p.m. Uh, between Ms. Krzyzewski and Mr. Craig, with the last uh, being sent from Mr. Craig to Ms. Krzyzewski at 3.01 p.m content is there and then we have uh, at 10 i'm sorry 3:03 p.m and there's back-to-back -back calls from miss krzyzewski to miss flower first lasting four seconds and the second call lasting 27 seconds detective do you know when in this case the 911 call was made yes i do when was that 4 55 p.m okay moving to slide seven <coughs> could you please walk through this please 
4.51 p.m., Ms. Krzyzewski, it's an outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, last five seconds. 4.52 p.m., there is a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, again, with no content available. There are two uh, calls, one placed at 4.53 and 4.58 from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, both lasting three seconds. There are then three text messages sent at 4.59 p.m., from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, again, with no content available. At 5 p.m., there is another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts five seconds. And then uh, shortly thereafter at 5 p.m. again, or after the call, there is an, a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, with once again, no content. Continuing. 5.09 p.m., there is a outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts seven seconds in duration. At 5.15 p.m., Mr. Craig uh, sends a message to Ms. Krzyzewski stating, call me. Uh, at 5.19 p.m., Ms. Krzyzewski replies to Mr. Scott stating, Lynn died. I can't talk. Mr. Craig then sends uh, four messages from 5.19 to 5.20. At 5.43 p.m., there is a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, again with unknown content. And at 6 p.m., there is another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, lasting six seconds in duration. Slide nine. 6 p.m., there's an outgoing text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. At 6.04 p.m., there is an outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts three seconds in duration. 6.04 p.m. Can you believe all this deleted stuff? I wonder what is going on there. There's another text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. At 6.04 p.m., 6.06 p.m., and 6.11 p.m. and 6.15 p.m., there are four calls placed uh, by Ms. Krzyzewski, the first two at 6.04 and 6.06 being to Ms. Flower. First one lasting three seconds, second one had no duration. The third call that was placed at 6.11 p.m. was to Mr. Uh, Mr. Craig, which lasted 42 seconds in duration. And the last call, again, placed to Ms. Flower, lasting five seconds in duration. 6.23 p.m., there was another outgoing call from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower, which lasts four seconds. And then at 6.27 p.m., there is an incoming call from Ms. Flower to Ms. Krzyzewski lasting seven minutes and 14 seconds. At 6.44 p.m., there's a text message from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower. And then there are a series of phone calls, uh, the first being at 7.20 from Ms. Krzyzewski, I'm sorry, Ms. Flower, from Ms. Flower to Ms. Krzyzewski lasting two minutes and three seconds. And then from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower lasting two seconds, which at 8.28 p.m., the next again at 8.28 p.m. from Ms. Flower to Ms. Krzyzewski lasting 44 seconds. Another one at 8.40 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower lasting 11 minutes and 57 seconds. And another call at 8, which would have been at 8.12 p.m. from Ms. Krzyzewski to Ms. Flower lasting 10 minutes and 51 seconds. Detective, with the information that has been reviewed in this exhibit, did you ask Detective Schrader to create an animation in this case? Yes, I did. Why? Again, I wanted to see the exact location uh, for Ms. Krzyzewski during the afternoon, morning and afternoon, along with evening of October 3rd, 2018. If I could please publish Exhibit 174, slide 13. Now she's starting Sorry, 173. Forward. Look at her, she's like, well, well, what do we have here? <laughs> we have no evidence. Detective, slide 13 was discussed with the jury by Detective Schrader. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Can you please remind them um, what it is that we're looking at in slide 13? Uh, this is going to be an animation of uh, the cell phone location for Ms. Krzyzewski on the day of October 3rd, 2018. What's the time frame? 7.06 a.m. until 11.40 p.m. Along the right side of the exhibit, there's a column. Do you know what that is for? Yes, I do. What is it? That's um, just a time tracker. It basically shows uh, the time uh, as it goes all the way from starting at 7.06 to 11.40. So as the animation is playing, if it was paused, would you <clears throat> be able to see where we are on the timeline of the animation? Yes. Okay. There's a few pins on the map. Could you explain those, please? 
Yes. Uh, one is, it says, uh, Jesse K's residence, which would have been the residence uh, shared by Ms. Krasewski and Mr. Craig at the time. And then uh, directly below that is the residence, uh, it says Flower's residence, which would be the residence to uh, Ms. Krasewski's mother, Jennifer Flower. And then in the upper left, you'll see Lynn's address along with, uh, it says death location, which was obviously the home address of Lynn Hernan. Is there already one call or message being mapped on the still image? Yes, there is. Could you circle that for the jury just to orient them? And what time is that transaction at? 7.06 a.m. In terms of um, geographic location, where is that transaction occurring or what tower is that transaction using? It's in close proximity to Ms. Krasewski's residence. Now, this animation wasn't shown to the jury with Detective Schrader, but Detective Hoppy, have you seen it before? I have. Um, does the phone activity move locations during this animation? Yes, it does. Okay. Is it always going to use that red shaded area for Ms. Krzyzewski's uh, device location? Yes. Okay. We can clear the screen, please. And um, at this time, I would ask to play the animation through. Detective, have you seen that many times before? I have. Uh, the... First activity that the jury saw is near what residence? Uh, Ms. Krasowski's residence. Okay. At around 7.52, does, is the phone using towers near someone else's residence? It's near Ms. Hernan's residence. Okay. Does that location change around 12 noon? Yes, it does. And ultimately, what towers are being utilized around 12 noon? Uh, it begins heading uh, southeast. Okay. Ultimately... Um, does the phone activity pick up at Ms. Hernan's residence? Uh, much later in the afternoon, yes. Like what time? I believe the first one I saw was roughly around 4.35, maybe a few minutes, give or take. Okay. And the 911 call in this case was when? 4.55 p.m. Okay. At a point in time, does the map suggest that the device has moved away from Ms. Hernan's residence in the early evening? Joke to leaving. Over Yes, it does. Okay. And does Ms. Krzyzewski's device ever use towers near Ms. Hernan's residence again the night of October 3rd? Yes, it does. Around what time is that? I believe, if I recall, it was like somewhere around 8 o'clock, maybe, again, give or take. It might have been a little bit earlier. Judge, at this time, I would move Exhibit 228 into evidence, which is the timeline on the court board. Exhibit 228 is received. And I would also move exhibits 188A and B into evidence. I believe that those were annotations that I never actually moved into evidence. That's true. They were seen by the jury, so they're received. That's all I have. Thank you. Well, let me see. And what do we have now? <laughs> Cross-examination, which I'm only going to show you an example of. She wrote down a timestamp for a really good moment of example of how this went. The attorneys at sidebar for a moment, please. <laughs> oh, lunch break. But it was sidebar. So you testified earlier that uh, you were tracing or tracking. That little slide I put in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. There wasn't lunch break. There was sidebar time. We had the lunch break earlier, right? We skipped it. We teleported right through that. So here we go. <laughs> you can actually just see. They're like, oh boy, everybody. Buckle up, buckle up. So, again, when I teleport through this stuff, it's because it would be, one, my second time seeing it, and I want to spare you the pain. Two, um, if I look at where it was happening live and see how many people said it was so painful, this cross-examination, why would I put you through that? I defluff for a reason, to spare you some of these hours of your life, okay? This is your life, after all. Do you really want to see this for the next... If you want to, it will be available for you. But for the next 90 minutes, cross-examination just picks apart every single thing. Of course, that's their job. I get it. And by teleporting forward, it's no disrespect to the case. I know you want us to hear both sides, but man, this was painful. We <laughs> In Hound's Tooth, yeah, it's so good. It's... It's unbearable at times. So let's just have a, a little listen because some of the questions are ridiculous. They go nowhere and they continue to find a way to victim blame. I don't like that. It's just horrible. So let's not spend our lives watching that. 
That's the strategy that the defense seems to have throughout this case, is victim blame. Either impeach a witness or victim blame. That's it. That's what they got. Through Cellhawk, uh, the department was tracking Ms. Krzyzewski's location at different times, right? It was mapped, yes. It was mapped. And we have exhibit... Um, 173. 173 on the screen. You were talking about that one earlier. Is that right? Yes. And you see over on the right side of the screen, it shows the time, a particular time, in this case, uh, 631 and 43 p.m. Do you see that? Correct. And we heard earlier that when we see these these uh, marks that look like... Um... <laughs> these marks? I'm going to go forward now to you. 3.59 is where I wanted to go to show you the frustration on this man's face. Look at him. He's like, what? <laughs> it's 3.54. Let's just go forward a little bit. Okay. I mean, the judge did have to step in at some point as well and be like, oh, my word, stop it. No victim blaming. No reading those letters and saying that it was Lynn that wrote them. None of that. Okay. So... What we do over here with this day delay, it's almost like, you know, when you're in school or college or wherever, and they say, you can go home early today. Yes, we have the ability to do that. Even though this is part of the curriculum, we can go home early today and not put ourselves through this. But if you want to do homework and watch it yourself, it will be available to you in the pinned comments, okay? See uh, two bottles of uh, owned medications, patient-owned medications sent to pharmacy for storage? Yes. And that happened on 9-22-18. Do you see that? Yes. And then do you see that they were returned? If you go down a little further, please, Attorney Galvez, uh, that we see them returned to the patient on the day she was discharged. Correct. So you stand corrected on indicating last week that no medications were ever, of the patients were ever um, there at the hospital. True? I don't stand corrected. I don't believe this falls under the same circumstances that was described in the interview. Well... Jesse told you that she brought medications to Lynn, you can take it down, uh, to the hospital, and you were asked if there was any indication in the record that, that the, farm, that the uh, hospital had taken those medications from her. You said there was none. I showed it to you, right? Is that I, true? That portion is true, yes. Renee says, can I skip homework, please? Yes, you can. <laughs> When you talked earlier about all the searches that were done on Jesse's phone back in the uh, time frame while Lynn was alive, you'd agree with me that all of these searches that you showed or talked about to the jury, there were no searches for Visine, true? True. There were no searches for tetrahydrosoline, true? True. And having searches, and there were a lot of searches that had... Uh, suggestions of suicide on them. Remember that? The files, yes. And that's consistent with what Jesse told you, that Lynn would use her phone to do searches. I'm going to have to put a muzzle on at this point. I'm like, <laughs> the things I could say. Oh, listen a little more. And that, that Lynn would use her phone to do searches. That's what Ms. Krzyzewski, Ms. Krzyzewski said, yes. And you saw on the searches that there were, as I count, at least three that had the word that were related to suicide. The files, yes. And it was well known that Lynn didn't have internet. Correct. But not only did Jesse do some searches for Lynn, you'd agree with me, wouldn't you, that her neighbor, Jean Tanel, also helped her look up things on the computer. I never spoke with Ms. Tunnell. But you said that you're familiar with the whole record in this case. You, you're the lead detective, so you've testified to things in the last four days that other people have done. Yes, but I say I'm familiar with every single record that came in this case. As you know, I, I, I think it would be kind of difficult. You do know that Jean Tunnell would help Lynn look up things on her computer, don't you? Again, I know Ms. Tunnell would assist Ms. Hernan. I don't know specifically about internet usage. Taking the over the computer, mine seems to be working again. 
I'm going to show the witness only what is marked as Exhibit 614. Can you see the document that's in front of you? Yes, I can. And this was a document that was in discovery in this case. And do you see that this is a, appears to be a, a PayPal account of some sort? I can honestly say I've, I've never seen this document before. I don't recall. Okay, well, I'll have you take a look at it then. Can we go down? Um, I'll go down. Sorry, I thought I've got control again. Have you just take a look at this? You see the Exhibit 614 sticker on it? Yes, I do. And we're already at 1.2 speed, okay? That's a great way to say it, because it is like that TV cat says, you mean the defense didn't make any headway? Shocking. Like, obviously we want to usually see both sides. We want to see what, how they're going to defend the client, what's going to happen. Of course, Jesse's still innocent till proven guilty. We'll have to see what the jury comes back with and all of that. But my goodness, this defense gets absolutely nowhere. And they ask all the wrong questions to the wrong witnesses. It's terrible. <laughs> really really not great so why would we sit here putting ourselves through that some of you have even watched yesterday's one before you're here for round two because you're just so nice thank you so much for being here <laughs> i think i've shown you here. i'm showing you uh it looks to be page three this is a four page exhibit page three whose email is being used for this particular PayPal account. Uh, again, I'm not familiar with the PayPal records, so I have no question to, about the validity of that it's a PayPal account, but the email account on this receipt or invoice uh, or record is tanel, T-A-N-E-L, 1263 at wi.rr.com. And if I show you page, the, the page above that, page three, who's the principal's name on here? Lynn Hernan with a P.O. box in Franklin, is that right? Correct. And that's uh, a P.O. box that Jesse would uh, would use. Where's the, What's the phone number associated with this account? 262-565-8959. That's not any of the numbers that you've been talking about, is it? No. I'm going to move for admission of Exhibit 614 has to publish. Let's go forward a little bit more, hey. <laughs> Look at his face. Shame as the day deteriorated. <laughs> if they receive that information one-on-one -on -one from another party, so you're trying to confirm where they would be, if there was any contact, if they'd have contact through programs or any other means. So how does, how does that affect your decision on whether or not you're going to utilize them? Well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot more that goes into it. It's the information that was uh, stated, the information, again, what we could verify. It's not, it's a case by case basis. There's not any, it's, it's not just totally black and white. You got cameras in the jail, right? Jail has cameras, yes. And you can look to see whether or not uh, individuals are talking to one another. Yes. Or whether they're, do people share cells at uh, the jail? I know, boy, it's been a long time since I've been there uh, in our new facility and then using the older portion of the jail. No, there really shouldn't be, but. I do know that some cells are opened up when there is overcrowding. So, but basically, no, I don't. I don't believe there's two ever two persons to a cell. And when they're opened up because of overcrowding, then people can really look at what other people have laying around. True. No, that's only uh, at night. It's utilized for uh, bathroom purposes, and it's usually monitored by the correction staff. Do they have teeth? And we're going forward some more. A date? Yes. Okay. It's, it's hard to read. So that can come down. Thank you. Uh, I don't need anything published right now. So that's fair to say that a face-to-face -face application with the right bank balance on it shows that Lynn knew how much was in her bank account. Objection to what this witness knew about what Lynn knew. Sustained. <clears throat> Just so... Uh, Another unrelated sort of matter, but I want to clarify. Isn't it true that when you pick up something at FedEx that they require you to show a photo ID? I'm not 100% positive on FedEx policy. Okay. You said you went over there and you investigated FedEx and you were talking to them about this transaction. You didn't ask them. 
if they require a photo ID? Based on my first question I asked them, it was kind of irrelevant. It was irrelevant because they didn't have any uh, video any longer? And they had no information on the, on the shipment itself. But why would it be irrelevant to know whether or not they require a photo ID so that you can then, with, if a photo ID is required, it would have to be Lynn Hernan coming to pick up uh, her item, right? I could have asked that. Assumes facts, not an evidence. Sustained. Please rephrase. As an investigator in this matter, let me address Danielle never said. You say it's one thing to state your opinion, but to not even let people hear the other side. Literally, they can hear the other side. We're a day delayed. You can watch it anywhere else. This is my channel. We've defluffed it all. And the full version is available that I worked on all day in the pinned comments. I've said that a million times, so I hope that makes sense. And trying to determine whether or not somebody picked up a package from Brunel at FedEx. That was part of your job, right? Yes. And you wanted to know, you went there because you were wanting to know whether or not Lynn, Jesse, or someone else picked up the Brownell package. Correct. Is that fair? Yes. And if you ask the simple question of whether or not the person who the package is addressed to needs to show a photo ID, you would have an answer to that, whether Lynn came or not, true? I would have an answer to my question. I heard you say last week when we were watching some videos on Exhibit 203, um, I think it was slide four if I recall correctly, that Jesse was told that the Sheriff's Department had IRS forensic accountants look, in, look at this case. Remember that? Yes. There were no forensic, IRS forensic accountants that looked at this case. Detective Cole did speak with somebody from the IRS. Uh, how far, there was no, for, as far as I'm aware, there was no deep analysis. I feel like we need to if go there was, a little if bit the IRS faster. forensic accountant looked at any, a little bit quicker. anything in this case, then there would be um, information in the discovery record about that, right? Of course. And there's none in there that you've seen, right? Correct. Okay. So that wasn't true. Correct. And when, during. Reminder, I'm not the courtroom. I'm a South African living in the Netherlands, showing you a DFLAF version of the trial. <laughs> I don't, I'm not the only one showing the trial. I'm not the courtroom. I'm a YouTuber. We're looking at this trial together. Welcome, Grizzlies. <laughs> that same interview you told Jesse, I think it was uh, also Exhibit 203, Slide 6, that there were let you told her that as to the pills that were in Lynn, that they were less than the therapeutic levels. Remember that? Did I specifically say they're Detective Cole? Well, maybe Detective Cole. It was the two of you conducting the interview. Shame. That's where he's like, did I say that? Or who said that? No, the other guy. But anyway, you're going to answer the questions now. Right? Yes. One of you told him that, heard that, right? Yes, I do yeah. recall. That wasn't true. <clears throat> the specific levels, yes, correct. Because you were here for testimony where you know there's things in Lynn that weren't supposed to even be there because she wasn't take, supposed to be taking them anymore, to, anymore like baclofen. Cyclobenzapine, right? True? Correct. You saw where we pointed out levels that, that were toxic. No, I would, I would disagree with that statement, but... I didn't say deadly, I said toxic. I was here for your discussion with levels, yes. With regard to these applications on Jesse's phone that you've also discussed, uh, and we've talked about the hidden menu one, and I want to talk about a couple other things. You've got on exhibit, I think it was 181, you uh, pointed out, for example, text free, burner free phone number. Remember those two, for example? Yes. Isn't it true that those applications allow someone to make calls and send texts over Wi Fi? Yes. And if someone's phone service is disconnected, for example, say your your bill is you're paying your bill late, um, these apps allow a person to be able to still make calls and send texts from their phones over Wi-Fi for free. Isn't that true? Correct. And then those are not going to show on their actual cell number, right? That's correct. I 
do wonder, Maggie, you say, does this attorney think that if she distracts the jury from the relevant evidence and they'll ignore the clear indications of Jesse's guilt? Because they keep going back to the pills that Lynn had in her possession or the pills she took for her back pain, but that isn't what killed her. She died by homicide from tetrahydrosoline eye drops. So, <laughs> you know, there's a million ways you can ask the same question and still get absolutely nowhere. Also, do you guys remember when we powered through, as in teleported forward through every single receipt that the prosecution presented? We also skipped that for the person, the, the person in the room trying to tell me what my standard should be. I could literally make YouTube shorts out of a trial all day long if I wanted to not cover the whole thing because it's my channel. And we're here watching it together. And you can watch the full thing anywhere else. And in the pinned comments below, if you want to check out the pinned comment afterwards, because what I got to do is upload this beast of a file <laughs> and I will be uploading it for you. Then it'll be an un unlisted link. It'll be in the pinned comments. You can watch this full video that I've made for you of the full day with the entire cross-examination. If you want to watch it without tea breaks, without lunch breaks, without paper flapping and fluff. Okay. So yes, being responsible. Right. We're almost there. This is four hours, 38 out of 503. I just wanted to show you how this goes. They literally go in circles. And every time now, this witness will be like, I don't know. You're like, are you asking me or the other guy that did this? And she's like, no, 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 you now. I mean, and so those particular communications wouldn't be reflected on at t certified records, true? Correct. <clears throat> and they wouldn't necessarily be in Jesse's phone text messages when it was forensically downloaded, true? Again, type of phone, but it's possible they would not be recovered, true. When you interviewed Jesse for the first time in July, I think it was July, well, not the first time, but the first July interview in July 9th of 2019, you remember that? Yes. You wanted to pin her down to the exact time that she was at Lynn's house, right? Yes. And you were suggesting in court through the showing of her testimony and then showing where her phone is at different times that that when she told you initially she was there a couple hours that, that this is a lie. I said it doesn't seem like an accurate statement. But you're expecting somebody to remember back, I don't know, 10 months earlier, right? Nine months, 10 months? Nine months earlier, yes, I'm, I'm asking someone that question. And so it's perfectly reasonable that someone would say, well, I was there, wherever there is, for a few hours, but not be able to remember the precise exact time that they left somebody's home. Yes. And probably when you come back and you see, and you're shocked to find somebody dead, you probably remember that time more accurately than what happened in the morning. That's fair. And when you were interviewing her on July 9th, she was under arrest. She had cuffs on. Correct. That's the day that you did the search of, uh, of Scott Craig's home that she was sharing with Scott, right? Correct. And you heard him testify how it was very stressful to him. Correct. And that he described it as very chaotic and um, left a big mess at the house. His, in his words, yes. And you, to be fair, you were looking through everything, trying to find anything you could, right? Yes. So, of course, if a person has just been at home the police have come in to execute a search warrant. She gets arrested. She's not going to be in the best state of mind to remember every detail the way you would like it. Am I right? Look at his face. Watching the interview, I thought her state of mind was fairly well, actually. Well, some people, when they're nervous or under, uh, under stress, do what we call a nervous laugh. <clears throat> okay. And she told you during that interview, well, I think I was there for a couple hours. I, I believe so. I don't remember exactly. She said those kinds of statements to you detectives over and over again. She's doing her best to remember. Objection, what this witness knows about. Uh, sustained us to the last part of that. Um, you can ask a question. She was um, telling you things, such statements as, I believe I was there a couple hours, right? Yes, she was. 
And is it fair to say, as we watched that, that interview, you, you, you two were really hounding her, really hounding her to try to narrow things down and remember exact details and answer this and answer that, right? Objection, compound question. Sustained as to the form of the question. Do you agree that you, were, that you officers, detectives, were really hounding her? I would disagree, especially with the verbiage. You'd agree that you're trying to get her to uh, narrow things down? Yes, that I would agree with. And, and one of the things that Jesse told you during that interview was that Lynn did have a problem with taking her prescriptions. She would take the wrong prescriptions. Yes. And you heard that from other people. Objection. Move to strike. That's the same as in the form of the question. Did you learn that that was true? Ms. Krasowski is the only individual that we talked to about that. Or that we very hectic, huh? And I see you guys all saying, why would anyone drink Visine for a high? You wouldn't. It's very toxic and just makes you feel really sick from everything they've said here. And even when Jessie said that she took it for the fun of it to feel what it felt like, she said she felt like absolute crap. I don't know if that story is true either, but... You got that information from? But you're familiar with, for example, the medical records. I remember the state bringing some medical records up and showing them to you. So you have some knowledge of the medical records, right? Yes. And you heard testimony in court about it. Yes. And you remember, don't you, that Lynn's primary care physician dropped her for having the wrong, uh, having drugs in her system that she wasn't supposed to have. Objection, cumulative relevance. Um, overruled the state, elicited testimony about this. This witness can answer. Yes. So you did have other information about that besides just Jesse. Bay. Overall. At the time of the interview, we have had that information from Ms. Krasowski. I'm not sure about the, when we got the medical records, but we eventually learned that information, yes. And during that July 9th... It looks like Jesse thinks her attorney's, you know, making some progress for her. She's always like, mm, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But I don't think she's really getting anywhere, do you? Interview... You detectives told Jesse that you thought this was an assisted suicide. Do you remember that? Detective Cole made that statement, yes. And you'd agree on October 3rd, 2018, when you went to the scene and others went to the scene, that that was, you did think that it was a suicide? That was the information we had, yes. Well, that was your impression. I was there a very short time, but the information that I received when I got on scene was that this was more likely a suicide, yes. Yes, because if you thought it was something other than... Snorky levels going up in the witness. The snork tank is filling up because we're back to the same questions. You thought it was a suicide, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes, they did, until the autopsy was performed and then it was proven to be a homicide via tetrahydrosoline poisoning. So what is the point of saying you thought... It was a suicide. And a suicide, you would have you would have closed your uh, you would have opened an investigation. Well, obviously, there was other information learned at the time. Yes, we would have done something different. Would have opened an investigation. If we had known information, hindsight being twenty twenty. When you arrived, were the EMS folks already there putting the leads on Lynn? No, I think they had already left when I when I arrived. Did you see the different leads that were on her on the photographs? On the photographs, yes. I don't. I didn't recall seeing them on the scene. And you heard the deputy medical examiner testify in court that she gathered all of the prescriptions that were at the house. Yes. You heard Anthony Poza testify in court that when he went there two days later, he saw prescription bottles. Yes. It doesn't jive, does it? It doesn't match. Do you think that? Anthony Poza is maybe remembering prior visits, and he's confused about uh, the couple of days after Lynn's death. I don't know. I, I have no understanding of why that is. And throughout these early interviews, when you're talking to Jesse, she was repeatedly saying to you, you the whoever was interviewing her, that she didn't remember exact time frames, that she couldn't be precise about things because it had happened so long ago. True? True. That she was doing her best to help. Yes.
when you went to the scene, did you see a lot of handwritten papers laying around? No, but I wasn't looking for them either. But you've seen in court the pictures that, we've, that have been shown by both sides that show handwritten papers, right? Yes. So you know that that is accurate? That there are some found on scene, yes. And you also heard the testimony that there appeared to be some papers under the couch? I heard that testimony. There might have been some items under the couch, yes. And you or no, none of your detectives ever bothered to pull those papers out to look at them, true? I wasn't aware of them when I was there. I'm just saying, as you know the case, yes. nobody from your department ever pulled those papers out from under the couch. Judge, this is not evidence. Overruled. Not that I'm aware of, no. <coughs> and when you talked to Jessie, uh, she told you that, that, Lynn, that the papers that she had found, uh, were on, some of the papers were under a couch, true? That's what she said, yes. And that's actually true because we heard testimony in court that papers were seen shoved under a couch. Right. What does that have to do with anything? Do you see what I mean? Man, and I left all the long pauses, paper flapping and, br and breaks, and it's still like, whoa. And we're on 1.2 speed, I think. I don't recall that testimony specifically. I remember there's there talk about stuff under the couch, but papers specifically? Yes. You don't remember that? I don't recall offhand, but if there if there was, I have no reason to question you or doubt you. I'm just saying that I don't... It assumes facts, not in evidence. He's already answered, so his answer may stand. His answer is he didn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't remember. And do you remember also saying in response to the district attorney's question about whether or not... Strike that. There was testimony in, in this case about... Mm -hmm. About... Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find an exhibit about um, whether or not the checks that were written to Jesse for a walker. Do you remember that yes. uh, testimony? Yes. And I'm going to show you uh, photo uh, exhibit 608. Did you say 608? 608. Thank you. And remember the testimony that, that there wasn't a sign of any walker at the home. Do you remember that? Don't recall specifically about there not being a walker at the home. I remember this uh, testimony about the check, but not specifically about it not being at the house. All right. Well, we can rely upon our memories for that. I'm showing you 608. Papers under the couch. Where was the walker? Within a few minutes, it'll be, but Lynn likes to take pills, right? She liked that, right? <laughs> Jesse said she liked Visine in the vodka, didn't she? Didn't she? I mean, what? Is this already in, uh, been admitted? Let me see what I can do. By not being at the house. All right. Well, we can rely upon our memories for that. I'm showing you 608. Is this already in? So I'm actually, actually having trouble recalling specifically what you're referring to, but I have no information saying Lynn was with them. <laughs> Other than uh, some period of time, September 15th through September 28th, where you know Lynn was in a hospital, is it fair to say that you don't have any uh, chart or anything prepared that shows where Lynn was on particular days? Correct. Other than that time period when she's at Waukesha Memorial. Correct. Isn't it true that on October 3rd, 2018, when deputies, including yourself, were at Lynn Hernan's home, that Jesse was standing outside of the residence visibly upset? I don't recall her demeanor. She was already speaking with deputies, I believe, when I arrived. She was also wearing scrubs and she had quit her job months before to full-time caretake for Lynn while spending all her money. <laughs> Shauna said, I still don't understand why the defense thinks asking the same questions over and over. Word it differently is a good tactic, but they're the perfect lawyers for Jesse. She thinks they're nailing it, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, we're, we're almost there, we're almost there. I teleported forward as you saw. Uh, quite a bit, and now we've got just a few minutes left. Or I just completed, I don't recall seeing her demeanor. Do you recall on a different topic, switching subjects? Your department was interested in, in the many checks 
that Lynn Kernan wrote to Jesse. Fair? Yes. Because there were many checks written to Jesse. Yes. For small amounts and large amounts. Yes. And Jesse told you that Lynn gave her that money. She, she was aware of the everything she did, yes. And I heard some questioning when we've listened to these hours and hours of interviews of uh, suggesting to Jesse that that she might have written these. We asked her, yes. Isn't it true that the defense... Wants I'm just loving you. <laughs> just tell his snark tank is... It's really filling up. He's like, yeah, we asked her. But it's like through all these little interviews. They, they are so self-incriminating, those interviews. The lies that Jesse told. Whoa. But it's just like, oh, just hours and hours of all these interviews. It's better than hours and hours of the exact same questions asked the same the same questions really i can't even say in a different way it's like the same questions over and over and basically just going for suicide right though no homicide autopsy said homicide by tetra hydrosoline sure you know anyway okay continuing and to have the checks analyzed at, at a lab to see who wrote them do you remember that no i do not you know that happened i know of what you're discussing, but I had no role in that. I knew nothing of what was being requested by the defense, nor of the expert. Okay. Let me ask you this. You're aware that, in the end, the only agency that could evaluate the checks for handwriting was the FBI? That's who we asked, yes. And you asked the FBI to evaluate them, true? I did not. Again, I had no role in the FBI's handwriting analysis. I heard you say we. That's what we did. Did you mean your department? Our department, yes. Okay. So you're trying to separate yourself from the department? Objection. You see what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm so glad we're watching this at 1.2 speed. <laughs> you're part of the department? Yes. You're the lead, lead investigator? At the time, I was not actively working the investigation. You're aware that ultimately, checks and other documents were submitted to the FBI for analysis? I am aware that documents were sent. I have no specific knowledge on what documents were sent. Okay, that's fair. I'm not going to ask you. But you know that ultimately documents were submitted Yes. to the FBI and an, and an analysis was done. Correct. And you, you've seen the analysis, right? I have not. It hasn't been shared with you. It's not that it hasn't been shared with me. I just had no role in that, so I did not read the report. You're not curious as to what the results of the handwriting analysis are on all these checks that were written to Jesse? I knew it was being handled by Detective Planis. By who? Detective Planis, I believe, and then was uh, part of that. And so in all this time and all these years that have gone by, you haven't looked at that at all? The handwriting analysis report? That's right. I don't think it's been years since we've had the report. I think it's been more like months. Okay, or a year maybe. Or a year. Uh, no, I have not I have not once looked at the report. And so you don't know what the results are? I do not, actually. It, does, it doesn't matter to you? I don't believe it doesn't matter to me. I know that the people that have the report are the ones who, or the people that need the report have the report. That's what matters to me. All right. And I guess when uh, the FBI comes in, you'll get to hear what the results are. Objection will strike. Sustained. Jerry will disregard the last statement. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marley says, some of her snarky is not like the grizzly snarky. No. <laughs> it's a little bit different, hey. <laughs> it leaves one feeling just slightly different. Like, what is going on here? Sure. It's like, oh, you had no interest in it. As if, I mean, putting this detective, you know, he's on the stand and being like, oh, so you don't care, huh? You don't care about the investigation. You didn't pick up the papers under the couch. You weren't even the lead investigator at the time. You didn't look at the handwriting analysis. Like, wow. So it's all just breaking the person on the stand down. I don't know. That doesn't seem like a smart strategy. I know that Jessie said in one of those interviews, but she changed her story so many times. But in one of them, she said that she put the visine in the water, right? In the water bottle. And maybe the defense has obstacles in this strategy, but the obvious defense strategy that comes to mind for me is really making sure how can anyone prove that Jessie put the visine in whatever she put it in? How can she, how can they prove it? Of course, with the phone activity, that she was there, maybe some ring cam footage, but we haven't seen any of that. But this whole thing, the whole time of victim blaming, ooh, it's just, it makes me mad. 
I'm very protective of victims and their families. And <laughs> again, I'm still snarky about it. It's okay. When someone says I'm being irresponsible by not showing the other side a day later, where you can see it out there in the public. No, 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 no. I'm being responsible because I will not allow victim blaming here. I don't care if that's their only strategy. We're not going to sit for hours and watch them victim blame. It's horrible. It's disgusting. Their strategy throughout, they've had multiple warnings from the judge. I wouldn't be surprised if they get more and they do already get more tomorrow. We'll see. We'll be there together. They get more warnings again. They just don't listen. That's their only strategy. So it's just it's very hard to be like, oh, they're just doing their job. Just respect what they're doing. It's too low of a blow. It's gross. You know, I can't believe how they questioned Anthony Poser as well. So uh, if we're doing things on a day delay, why would we sit there for hours and watch it? No, let's see how this day finishes. We've got four minutes left. Just gonna um, want to sh show an exhibit in a minute. Get me a minute. You know, we took our break a little early. How's my jury doing? <clears throat> okay, good. I got some thumbs up, so we're good. Keep going. All right, thank the you. Jury's like. <laughs> I'm going to bring up exhibit 543, which is already in evidence. I'm going to show you slide two. I would like to actually show everybody it's already in evidence. If we could, I brought it up now, Madam Clerk, if we could share. You've seen this photo before? Yes, I have. And you can see the table to the right of Lynn, can you not? Yes. And you see her water bottle there? I see a water bottle, yes. Standing upright? Yes. Do you see on the table to her left a bottle that looks to be eye drops? I see the bottle. Um, that is not like the, the other ones and the ones that we've already discussed here. Yes. Well, there's only one eye drop bottle that's been discovered in the photos since you've been sitting in court, right? I don't think we've ever confirmed for 100% accuracy that that's an eye drop bottle. Don't you remember Dr. B, uh, the, my showing Dr. B uh, a bottle of eye drops and she identifying that? Dr. B, the medical examiner, Dr. Bedritsky. She's like calling her Dr. B after absolutely grilling her on the stand as well and <laughs> showing no respect. That is the bottle of eye drops that's at Lynn's home. Objection that mistakes the testimony. It's the same. In any event, you see a bottle there. That's true? That's true. And you then you see a water bottle to her right standing standing upright. True. True? True. All right. Now, I would like to show you uh, in that in photos. Let me bring up. Now, I should just state on that page. Slide seven. Slide seven. Do you see slide seven? I do now, yes. Do you see now that? Yes, Marilise is a... The one Jesse said she knew had six bottles of Visine in it. Mm. I drop bottle. I see the same bottle we were just discussing. Now I am bringing up slide 11. There we go. Do you see the, the, now that the water bottle is tipped over? Or it's tipping? Yes, I do. Where it was standing up right before? Correct. It seems that things are changing positions a little bit while photographs are being taken. Would you agree? I would agree. Because there's 10. There's photo 10. Is that the same spot as we're seeing photo 11? That's your question. Do you see the bottle standing up right now? You see it slanted now? You see that bottle there? Yeah. Can we get to the autopsy? Homicide. <laughs> with tetrahydrosoline and your client said she put six bottles of visine in that water bottle so I don't know where this is going either <laughs> yeah <laughs> Katrina says OMG the water bottle is tipped okay but is it and was it photographed hmm the bottle is now tipped over yes thank you that can come down I don't know where you're at in your questioning, but uh, whenever you think it's a good point to stop, whether it's now or if you want to go for a little bit longer, I'm just not anticipating you'll be done 
uh, today, just given the length of his direct. I love that. I'm not anticipating that you'll be done. And then the judge is very nice to say, given the length of his direct. That was very nice to say, instead of <laughs> given the length that you usually go on, asking the same questions. Um, this wouldn't be a bad time because I'm moving to a different topic. All right. Then let's, uh, we'll break a little early today. I think we... And that's it. That's what we have. Oh, man. Sure. That was a lot. <laughs> I saw a lot of people suffering in the live chat yesterday, as in yesterday, where it was happening live. Ooh, that chat was just like, please save me. <laughs> save me from this. I, I'm like, I will never put my Grizzlies through this. Sure. So, I mean, we saw a majority of it just at 1.3 speed. You you get where they're going with it. Absolutely no way. And tomorrow there's more cross-examination. Then, of course, the state rested their case today in real time. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at more cross-examination from the attorney Kuchle. We're going to see that the state rests their case and then the defense will start their questioning, their direct examination with their first witnesses. Um, that would be day 11 of the trial which will be happening tomorrow for us. We one day delay so that I can uh, take out all the unnecessary breaks and things for you. Defluff it, as we say. <laughs> and so let me just quickly make sure because this stream should lead you to that one. I just want to make triple sure before we play the outro. Um, yes, okay. This stream will lead you to that one tomorrow. We're starting at around the same time as we did today, which is normally between 5 and 6 p.m. my time. And that would be because time zone is to my advantage <laughs> in that way, because I work all day on making sure to take out all of this fluff and, you know, put the witness names and everything for you. And then we sit together and we watch it. And I hope I save you a bunch of time and energy. And thank you for watching it with me. Um, also, if you missed it at the beginning of the stream, there are some grizzlies that are in the courtroom, which is so nice. You know, I really appreciate that. And... They've actually spoken to Anthony Poser, who's also in the courtroom. If you don't know who Anthony is, it's Lynn's best friend, Corrine's son. And Lynn treated Anthony like a son. Similarly to how she thought of Jesse as a daughter. Of course, Jesse, by the sounds of it, took full advantage of her, stole all her money, and is accused of murdering her. So that's why she's on trial. Anthony is the total opposite. He was on the stand before. He is so nice. And I see there's a lot of love in chat a lot of support uh, to anthony so thank you so much everyone for showing that he did say he's um, aware of us and thanks us and says hi to us so i think that's really cool so leave a comment below send some kind wishes to uh, anthony and then also at the beginning of today's stream i read out an email which was from one of lynn's family members so we hadn't heard from them before it's from someone who knew lynn um, when she was younger so if you missed that, don't worry. Everything will be time stamped for you because I'm going to do that for you now, as I always do. So thank you uh, so much, everyone. <laughs> Danny Dawn says, ooh, I want to hear from insiders. Do you do tell? They are in the chat here. Um, I, wanna, I would love to hear how is the jury reacting to all of this, especially when it is the cross-examination before the state rested their case, when the state presented their case. Ooh, those questions, man. They can really, they can be a bit much. Even the judge is like, stop it. You're not going to ask that again. Or that exhibit won't be part of it. We'll see some of that tomorrow as well as we start off with a roast. <laughs> that would be the second or third day. The day is started off with a roast from the judge to tell the defense, stop slandering the victim. Stop blaming the victim. No, that's not happening. So yeah, the judge is amazing. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed the stream with me. If you did, please like and share. You can use the hashtag justice for Lynn Hernan. Uh, if you want to know how to spell anything, it's all in the description box for you. You can also say hashtag Jesse Kershevsky trial if you like, because it is also being categorized like that, or I dropped murder trial on social media too. Grizzly True Crime would help as well. Um, so, yeah, no box for it, says Janet. I really appreciate your time here with me. Thank you for all the support that you've shown uh, to the channel. To everyone that sent PayPal's, it's the number one way to support the work I do. And everyone that's going over to Patreon, thank you. I really appreciate it. And then all the other ways. If you want to know how to support the channel, just go to my website, grizzlytruecrime.com. And there's a page called support if you want to just see the variety of ways. Really, really appreciate it, which includes spoiling the cats. <laughs> thank you so much. 
Oh, Renee said, I just got my Grizzly merch too. Was that from what you ordered from the store or Patreon? Because on Patreon you get loyalty merch. And there's a lot of patrons receiving their loyalty merch now, which is really cool as well. Okay, everyone. I will see you again tomorrow. I'll keep you posted on any other updates. Please make sure you check out my community tab and my YouTube shorts and my second channel, which is also a shorts channel because I update you on lots of cases and lots of things there. Yesterday was a deep dive into the Delphi case again, so check that out if you missed it. And I also shared on the community tab yesterday, um, remember Kevin Clark from the Letitia Staff Trial, the crime intelligence analyst that I also interviewed? He went and took a photo of this mural that they've made for Gannon Stauch. So you're standing in front of it before, and then he also showed us a picture after. So that was so nice to receive that from him. And I asked him, can I please show the Grizzlies? He said, yes, of course. So that's on my community tab if you've missed that. And lastly, today's community tab post is about my interview on True Crime Daily's Sidebar podcast. So you can go check that out as well. Leave some comments there too. I would recommend... <laughs> Skipping to 15 minutes, where I talk about cases that we've deep dived together, Delphi and Caitlin Armstrong. So, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, mods. Really, really appreciate it, and I never like going, but we gotta go, guys. We gotta recharge, and I'll see you again tomorrow for another trial day. Bye.